13. O'clock. Hey, everybody. It's Friday. Hooray. Yeah. Friday. Tomorrow we're going to go out. Yeah, mm. we'll see. <laughs> I hear DJ Maniac and y'all bitches in there fucking plotting to get me sidetracked by talking about grits early on in the show. No one so, has to plot to sidetrack you. You can do that very well you, on your own. See how you motherfuckers are. And then, <laughs> and then Maniac said, well, now we get him to talk about working out. And then it'll be like three hours right there. <laughs> you can never sidetrack it's me true. about talking about grits. My dog... I think they kind of did right there, didn't it? That's what I was going to say. Like, Man, fuck yeah. you, bitch. <laughs> it's so okay. easy. It's okay. so easy. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a show about Santa Muerte and um, Edgar Allan Poe. I'm not sure how they're related. I think they're... Well, they're not. Well, okay. because what happened, just like in the Amelia Earhart and uh, the and the Anne Hill cult, kid yeah. cult episode that we did, mm -hmm. it was just that the Patreon thing was a tie. And I was kind of like, well, those are both cool topics, though. Maybe we could talk about both of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're both kind of death related, right? Yeah. Sort of. Got Santa Muerte. That's a Mexican classic. Yeah. Yeah. And Mexican-Americans, too. Uh, you know, and the goddamn narco terrorism. Well, actually, narco armies. Well, that's the thing, yeah. though. I think the first time I heard about Santa Muerte, yeah. of, of all the weird places, was on that, um, was it an episode of A Haunting or Paranormal Witness or something like that? Mm -hmm. It was something like that. And there was a show about that, like where somebody had invoked Santa Muerte or whatever, and then like all this creepy shit happened. So, and I think that there's kind of a perception, which is actually kind of a misperception, that Santa Muerte is kind of like um, the deity of uh, criminals, which it yeah. is like to a small extent, but that's just like a tiny, tiny portion yeah. of like, so I kind of went down. It's like a fascinating rabbit hole to go down because it's almost kind of like you're seeing a new religion starting, like a folk religion kind Dave, of starting. David June is asking if Poe ate grits. <laughs> Where was Poe from? Well, he was born in Boston, and he yeah. lived in Baltimore as well. No, he didn't have grits. Probably not. Probably not. I'm pretty sure that was a Southern thing back then. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. he lived in Virginia, I think, too. So it's possible, I guess. Uh, maybe. Served by his wife slash cousin. Right. Maybe. Who was 12. They only, ate <laughs> they only ate grits where there was a lot of cattle feed, you know, corn. You know, places where you were feeding cattle, and they knew how to turn it into hominy. Once yeah. you got hominy, you can make grits. That's right. Yeah. It's just like popcorn. So it's what grits is. It's popcorn. But it's popped chemically in a vat of fucking water and lye. Yeah. You would think you couldn't eat that, but hell yeah, you could. Yeah, you can. I don't yeah. know what's doing to your insides. You make hominy. It's wet popcorn. <laughs> it's real good. It's real good. If you know what to do with it. Yeah. yeah. DJ Maniac said, Tom, I'm going to try and send your heavy metal mags out tomorrow. There's six in the box. Oh, They're great. a bit worn out, but readable, and I threw in some fun stuff for you, too. As well. Okay, cool. Sex Thank toys. you. That's Thank awesome. You <laughs> He's sending me that flashlight. He's sending me a flashlight. I'm surprised no one sent you one. Shit better be clean. <laughs> well, you can like, you have to run it through the auto play. <laughs> or run it through the dishwasher first before you use it. <laughs> You're the one that's going to use it. I'm just going to lay back. I'm just going to lay back. <laughs> No, I'm just fucking around. But um, yeah, I was gonna say I'm not doing all the work. Yeah. Come on now. Everybody, all the all the heavy hitters are here. Tila's in there too. Uh, can Michael's in there? Michael Schaefer. Jenny can read some of them off. But Tila mentioned something last night. I was thinking about it. It's kind of a good idea. Was to have some of our top patrons and guests, some of the funniest, funniest you motherfuckers, because you guys are fucking funny. To have you guys co-host a show with us, just off the cuff. Online during a live stream, just got to figure out how to do it. What what programs we need? Yeah, you, I mean, hopefully that might really crash my laptop. It might. But we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it doesn't work. You don't have to study anything or know anything. It'd just be a little picture of you there reacting and you fucking saying crazy shit and we talk about it a little bit. It'd be easy. Michael Schaefer says, yeah. "Is it gay if you use a flashlight that another guy had used in the past?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is. Sure. Well, we got to add Zach. Where's the, where's the rule book on that? Yeah, we got to add Zach. My, my, uh, my, my heterosexual instincts are going to say that, yeah, that kind of is. <laughs> that is. It's either gay or just super fucking desperate. I don't know. It's yeah. not, though, because it's almost kind of like two guys banging the same chick, right? Kind of. Yeah, that's, maybe that's right. Maybe you're right. I yeah. don't know. But it's I'm little, always right. 
It's a little. I don't know. <laughs> you're trying to get. You're trying to justify it. <laughs> Jenny probably has some kind of perverse fucking uh, fantasy of, of maybe seeing that happen, because uh, Jenny likes gay stuff, man. She she's one of these. Gay a lot porn of women. Like, a yeah, lot of women like. They gay watch porn. gay porn and stuff. A lot of women like gay yeah, porn. Yeah, they like it. But we have to consult Zach whether or not that's gay. I, although I can, I can. He's not in the stream. I don't see him. Zach's the token gay. He's <laughs> my token gay. But. <laughs> I kind of know what Zach would say. He goes, no, it's not gay. That's hot. Side quest here hot. says, only you if you look them in the eye while you use it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a distinction. Especially, especially if, you saw, if it hasn't been washed, man. Ew. But fucking, Zach Wash would just Zach say, toys, Jack, Zach would try to convince me that it wasn't gay. He would go, no, it's not gay. That's hot. <laughs> that's really hot. Take pictures. You know, he's going to say shit like that. Yeah, and then send them to him. Yeah. DJ cool. Maniac says, if Jenny goes on vacation, I want to co-host at some point. Actually, that's a good segue because yeah. I did actually book a short vacation yeah. for myself. Yeah, on the 6th, right? Yeah, which mm -hmm. is a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'll just be gone from the Sunday to the Friday. Like, we'll still, I'll be back yeah. like if like early afternoon Friday. So we'll still still do a live stream on Friday night. Um, but we'll probably just do a topic instead of having like the patrons vote on it like usual. We'll probably just do a topic that doesn't really need any research. Um, so I don't have to spend the whole week researching it. And what we were going to do since we don't, since we aren't going to do live streams or, you know, you can do live streams if you want to. I don't care. But yeah, I'm going to take time off. Look, we've been doing this fucking show nearly three years straight without true. a break. I mean, you know what I mean? We we don't even have an off season. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it really, we should just pre-record some stuff. And that's what, that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to record something. We're going to record yeah. some movie reviews and stuff like that. So there'll yeah. be still be something going up every day. It just won't be. But it'll just be, like I said, it'll just be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, the live and then. And Thursday, and then Friday, I'll be back. Live streaming is better for me. It's more fun, but it cuts into my fucking motorcycle ride. I mean, because <laughs> you know, I like to just kind of spontaneously go out and ride for a couple hours, but the show kind of makes me try to plan around that. But then I got podcasters I got to fucking watch, and I have fucking well, you don't got it maintenance. Do it's just part of my routine, you know. I need some time off too, man. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, need some Tila. Tila fucking comes in with some crazy shit. And this, she goes, we need some more gay in the chat. <laughs> we need more gays in the chat. <laughs> I think, no, I think she just said more gay. No, she said gays. The I gays? see gays? Oh, yeah. my glasses on. More gays in the chat? So, yeah, I was right again. Tila, Tila's gonna, <laughs> gonna, she's going to gay gay up the place. Yeah. yeah. It needs some gay up. It needs some gay um, <laughs> Yeah, Tila People asked are me. Fucking hilarious. Jenny, uh, Jenny St. Augustine. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do, I got like an Airbnb. And um, it's only a couple blocks from the historic district, which is nice. So I can just park my car in front of the house and then I can just walk down there and I'll have to drive any place. Yeah. And I'm going to do that. Well, I'll probably have to drive to the alligator farm because that's yeah. like that's like a mile away or yeah. two miles. Try not to work. All right. No, I'm not going to. All right. I mean, probably the only thing I'll do, I'll take my laptop with me just in case. Yeah. But um. The only thing I'll do is I'll probably have to upload the audio versions of oh. the videos. I can upload the videos and stuff um, and the Patreon stuff like ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Like and you can, you know, uh, you can schedule when it's going to come out and like schedule when it's going to go public. So I can do all that ahead of time. But the audio versions, I probably have to do it. But that only takes like a couple of minutes. So that's like not that big a deal. I'll just like take it on my laptop. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do Alligator Farm and I'm going to go to the Pirate Museum and I might go to Ripley's as well. What's that? Ripley's Ripley Believe or It or Not okay. Museum. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been to that since I was a kid. And there's a bunch of other museums I want to go to. And like, they do ghost tours and shit too. I might do one of those. I'm not sure. I'm going to go for a ride. Okay. I'm going to go for a ride. Yeah. Still got to take care of the cats though. Yeah, so, don't don't right. uh don't let anything happen oh, no. to Pookie. You know how they are. They ask for shit when they're hungry. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I <laughs> no, I'm good about I'm good about feeding them. Well, yeah. yeah, and like I said, they're I mean, Pookie is in particular is actually pretty vocal about. Yeah. You know, hey, she tells you what you want. What you my want. treats are gonna. She'll go over to the treat box and she'll knock it over really loudly. Like, hey. <laughs> yeah she knocks a treat box over and runs to the plate even though there's food in the plate it's because she likes to have a bunch she's planning ahead yeah she's like i will eat that later yeah. i'm not gonna eat yeah. it right now she knows how much she eats at night so when i'm bedding down she'll go over there boom hit the fucking box and i look up ah, it's not enough yeah and like, yeah like, not, and she'll be standing right there pointing at it yeah with her little nose yeah she's not like, enough put, put more please yeah she like, knows 
Because she knows you won't get up in the middle of the night. She knows if I'm nice. sleeping that the shit, you know, <laughs> she runs out. She's fucked. She's fucked, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, I think that sometimes, I think, you know, when she gets up on my chest in the middle of the night and looks me in the face, I think a lot of it has to do with the wet food. It might, the yeah. the wet food's out. I mean, she yeah. usually, she usually, I give her wet food usually in the morning when I get up to get, to make the coffee at like 7.30 or whatever. Yeah. Um, But she'll only eat a little bit of it. Yeah. And then sometimes she'll come back and kind of pick at it later on, but I don't know. Listen later, dude. Yeah. Yeah, everybody needs a break once in a while. Jenny and I have been fucking together 10 years, 24 hours a day fucking... Well, pretty oh, and and damn, honestly, in the and in, in the last five years, I mean, before that, like yeah. I, you know, I worked. You went to work yeah. elsewhere, but the last five years since we started the show and everything like yeah. that, and I've been working at home like for the past four or five years. Yeah, it's just so. A, yeah, yeah, so we've been working together too, yeah. like for all of that time. Yeah, man. <laughs> I know. Kidding. I'm sick I of your ass. Yeah, I'm sick of <laughs> no, it's just, just uh, it's just kind of a deal. It's all right. Well, it, yeah, like I said, it'd be kind of cool. I'll be able yeah. to like run around and yeah, fucking yeah. Go all, and, get and, all the pirates and shit. Yeah, Angel's coming over for about five weeks. <laughs> five said, weeks, about five days. <laughs> it's all right. I won't be alone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, Angel's a friend of ours, so I can shoot. <laughs> if you understood her, you fucking would know why that was funny. That yeah yeah, yeah that would be that is actually yeah. kind of funny. But yeah, that's <clears> yeah, <throat> yeah that sounds like some shit you would do though. <laughs> no. But yeah, you'll get a chance to like ride around, you can do, what you, you can yeah. do whatever you want. You can watch whatever you want. You don't have to like watch stupid like horror movies, like you know. No, yeah. <laughs> I just need I need to fucking go for a ride. Yeah. So you know. I might I might do I'm I might do a fucking twelve hours, thirteen hours or something. Damn. Yeah. All right. I haven't I haven't been for a ride in a while. I know you haven't. I mean, you've done like shorter ones, but yeah, no, I need to do something kind of long. Yeah, so I think that like the longest one you've done lately is just riding up to that like Mexican store to get some yeah. hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, no, I need to. I need to do a couple hundred miles, maybe. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. just be careful. That's all. Yeah, if I could ride to my dad's place and back, but that would probably wear me out. But yeah, that's pretty far. Yeah. How long would that take? About nine hours each way. Yeah, that's right. Maybe eight. Depending on how fast I was going. Because it's not, is it quite as far as New Orleans? It's not as far as New Orleans. No, it's not that far. Okay, well, yeah, it's, it's about that. It's about that far. So it's probably about eight hours. About then. eight hours. I think yeah. it's eight hours. It's about like going to New Orleans. Which isn't you're... terrible. I mean, I haven't done it on a motorcycle, but I've done way longer drives than that. You hit you hit Gulfport and then you start heading north. Yeah. And it's about another hour, hour and a half. So yeah, about the same. Also, like, there's no speed limits in Mississippi on some of those roads. So, you know, you can do 120, no problem. I mean, there's speed limits, but there's, there aren't any cops. Yeah. You know. So there might as well be. There might as well be. No <laughs> most people are going about 90. So. Although most people do that on I-4, too, yeah. and there's cops everywhere. You yeah. just try not to get caught. The cops don't care. Not really. No. Not, un care. not unless you're like Reckless. being really egregious yeah. about it. Michael Schaefer said, I had to get away from you since you started taking testosterone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Wearing that shit out, man. <laughs> I know. I just like need to get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. Guys, fucking bringing me on that situation. I went down yesterday and got picked up my supplies. The doctor's like, "Man, you're looking good, man." So, and I said, "Yeah." Some of my friends are saying that too. And he goes, "Why don't you write me a review?" Yeah, he just wants me to write him a review. Like, yeah, well, you gotta go. You know what I did? You know what happened though? What's I didn't that? tell you this. Uh oh. Got that bottle of testosterone and it's got a fucking top on it. You're supposed to just kind of break it off. Mm -hmm. And then there's a. a a rubber valve that you can inject from. I, I went to just break it off, and the whole fucking neck just fell off huh. of the fucking bottle. So I just ended up with a damn bottle. That's it. With yeah. the top broken. But luckily, I had the old bottle. Right. So I took a, a syringe and drew it all out of the new bottle and injected it into damn. the old bottle. So I was able to save it. That's crazy. Without having to go back down there. Because they'd have to reorder. Yeah, and it, take, and it takes like two days yeah. for it to come in. Yeah, so there was something wrong with it. It was cracked at the at the neck. Of the bottle. I guess shit happens every just, Yeah, there was just no force at all that just came. I'm not that strong where I can just snap the neck you of a damn You should have totally off. said that that was what it was. I'm though. so fucking strong, I just fucking <laughs> snapped the end of that damn bottle off. I hope it that. had to have been cracked. Yeah, probably. It came off cleanly. It's weird. That is pretty weird. Yeah, it must have. They dropped it or something. <laughs> 
DJ Maniac says, idea for a show, Australian cryptids. I learned about the Yowie last night. I think we did a cryptid show, and I, I'm pretty sure we talked about the Yowie, because that sounds pretty familiar. I thought a Yowie just was what my fucking... When I was in the army, my fucking Torres, Pete Torres fucking... He was a dude from Hawaii, a Hawaiian boy. I think he, I think you called me a Yowie or something. So you saw, it was, it was like the Hawaiian version of Honky. Okay. Fuck a yaoi. Is it a yaoi? You guys will, you guys will remember. <laughs> Howley. That's what it was. Uh, he goes, today's close. fucking how. He, yeah, he goes, to, he, he, Ross, today's fucking how, uh, howly day. And he goes, what the fuck is that? He says, that's hockey day. I'm whipping your ass. And I said, come on, bitch. <laughs> so we start fucking fighting and shit. Howley. That's what they called it. Not a yaoi. Howley. Why howley? I don't know. Because y'all howl all the time? I don't know. That's, the, that, that's the Islander word for fucking hockey. You are. And loud. on that day, they beat up white people. They beat up white people. Oh, that's 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 what he told me. Sounds fair. Sounds. Like, <laughs> it might be something they kind of made up in high school. I don't fucking know. Well, that sounds like a good thing to make up. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. By the way, Hallmark says today is beat up a whitey day. <laughs> yeah, it's beat up a whitey day. I told that. Told this is a brain off. <laughs> he was trying to steal a girl from me at that time. I remember it. Oh, not fuck, cool. It, yeah. Well, no, no, that's that's uh, fucking no. That's a prerequisite. You have to steal your buddy's girlfriend. Okay. When, when, when you're I in a it fucking was broke when, before hose. That was that was I was in first three two seven recon man. That's also <laughs> it, we were fucking recon scouts. That's Tiger Force. A little forty man scout unit, and fucking that's the tradition. If your boy's got a girlfriend, now if he's married to her, that's different. But if it's a girlfriend, you have to double down. You try to steal that. That's just part of the game. All right. But it's open. It's open. It's an open agreement that you're gonna to try to steal somebody else's girlfriend. You try. You gotta punk your fucking boy out. You gotta punk him out. You gotta make him just like cuck, cuck the fuck out. Cause it's pure competition. That's a, you know it's pure. Right. I'm gonna steal your fucking woman. Well, you know they were they were hard to get at that time. <laughs> yeah, they were hard to get when you're in the army. So you just had to pinch someone else's. You had to fucking steal somebody else's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fourth row down says Tom accidentally pours his testosterone into the water supply, and we have an '80s horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Toxic Avenger, but everyone's like roided out. Yeah. Straw Dog seventy eight. Yeah, he says it's a uh, Howley. H a o l e means no soul. Yeah. 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 yeah white people don't have a soul, man. Yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. That they is just that is one hundred percent true. Can't dance. They can't fucking jump. Got no soul. <laughs> Smell like baloney. <laughs> Taylor's your husband smell like baloney? You're married to a white man. She goes, yeah, I married you, baby, because you just smell like Oscar Mayer. Ew. Smell like a baloney. I don't think Born I would like slice. it. You smell it like baloney. Baloney. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like baloney. Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 I hope I don't smell like baloney. <laughs> You'd never make it in the army. <laughs> you would never make it in the army. <laughs> it's like you're funny. <laughs> There's no racism in the army because we would just openly fuck with each other. Well, I get about that. that kind of shit. Yeah. No, I'm just saying it, it was just fun. All I said you know? was, I hope I don't smell like baloney. Yeah. yeah. That's all I said. Yeah. All right, you baloney smelling bitches, get the fuck out here. Fucking... <laughs> that was back when you cuss and shit in the army. I think they're all fucking whisked whisk out now. Have a black NCO going to come in and fucking, all right, you baloney smelling fucking bitches, get the fuck out there and start fucking doing this and that. And you know what he's talking about. You just laugh, you know. Yeah. You don't take anything seriously. Well, yeah I, yeah, I get that. It was funny. I get that. Yeah. All right. So, um, so yeah, they, they did a pretty good job of like, uh, t putting you off on like tangents and stuff. Yeah. Although, yeah, like yeah. I said, you don't really need any excuse for doing that because mm -hmm. you just do that anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tila says he smells like marshmallow on white bread with sprinkled sugar on top. Is that white enough for you? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh my God. That's a fucking Best answer. That's a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's a good answer. one. That is a good that's one. A real good one. <laughs> oh, Did you shit. write that? <laughs> what? See, we got some funny yeah. ass people. There's just funny ass people in there. That's right. Just the us. military was equal opportunity haters. Yes. It <laughs> yeah. All right. So I had a couple shout outs. Okay. So like I said, I, I um. I already said, yeah, that I'm going to be gone from the 6th to the 11th. Mm -hmm. But we're still going to do the show on the 11th, which is Friday, because I'll be back like early afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we can still do the live stream. But just in the week, we're not going to do live streams, unless you feel like doing it, or you probably won't. 
but um we'll record a bunch of shit ahead of time for you guys to watch mm -hmm. also i said this on the wednesday show but i wanted to make sure to get it on this one as well i don't think he's here in the comments but i wanted to thank liam for sending me this blu-ray right here which yeah. is called legends about the cray twins that's gonna be good it's got tom hardy in it. i know yeah, I, I like tom hardy movies yeah i do too he plays I'm, a good criminal and i'm kind of fascinated by yeah. the craze always have been and look at this shit i got that i saw this on amazon and i just gonna it's like and i couldn't resist it it's like this is so fucking funny i just laughed and laughed when i thought wah, 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 wah. It's like, Mothman. It's Mothman. <laughs> yeah. It's a little, it's a little squishy Yeah, it's furry Mothman. and everything. He's a little squishy yeah. Mothman. I'm going to hang it from the ceiling. Yeah, you can kind of hang him on. He's got like a little thing to hang him from. Yeah. But it's, yeah. And the back is flat. I think about hanging back there and be over there next to the fucking um, Spock or something. He's got little red eyes. Like, so it's yeah. really kind of glow. See? Ah. I was just, I don't know. I was like, I was scrolling through like Amazon for something and it's like, I'm like, oh my God, I have to have that. And it's weird because I ordered them a while back and then like they said it was delayed and I was like, okay, whatever. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then Tom brings me a, he's going, hey, you got a package. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like it felt really like soft and squishy. I'm like, I don't remember ordering soft and squishy thing. Then I opened it and I was like, oh, Bob, man, I forgot all about him. <laughs> I, made, I made some of that lemonade and I poured that cake vodka in there from Pinnacle and it tastes like lemon cake. It's fucking good. Well, man. yeah, lemon plus cake equals mm. lemon cake. Lemon cake. You're a lemon cake. We got a super chat. We did. Yes, we did. Two dollar super chat. Thank you. From, <laughs> from a bowl, a bowl of, of grits. grits. It's grit season. The grit trees are a blooming. <laughs> yes. He remembered. He remembered. <laughs> Grit tree, gr those grit trees come in bloom and when the when the grits are in season you got to run around collect them as they fall <laughs> yeah man tomorrow morning you should make some grits you want grits wait do we have any yeah or, or pancakes i got we haven't had pancakes I got that too. in a long time well i can't have grits and pancakes that's too no. much food i can do grits i can do yeah. grits i got um i got sausage too frozen Big old long Jimmy. I got a big old long sausage. <laughs> big old, it's a of big course, old long Jimmy Dean do. fucking breakfast sausage. I got that frozen in there. Man, we got us. I got, got there's, bacon. There's so much food in there. I don't even know what the hell's in yeah. there. Yeah, got some hickory smoked bacon, thick cut. You like? You know you like it thick. <laughs> like that pork thick. <laughs> Slab See, dick this pork. is the real reason that he likes to talk about food, so he can yeah. just make like all these dick innuendos. Yeah, right. <laughs> big old thick fucking. <laughs> He's the cut. <laughs> you say it the right way, man. It gets turned on. <laughs> really? Who? People? <laughs> Me or yeah, people? He, 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 she knows how to flip the shit around. She knows how to flip that shit around. Oh, man. She knows how to flip that shit around. Man. Michael Schaefer said, has anybody had the Johnsonville sausage that is cut like bacon yet? Oh, I have not. Hmm. Huh. No. I, didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. <clears throat> I didn't even know that was a thing. Lemon simple, uh, lem lem lemon simple sugar lemon. syrup on what? On, on the damn, you must be talking about on, um, on pancakes. Lemon syrup might be good on pancakes. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I some icing that. sugar and lemon. Ooh, when I was looking up, when I was looking up places around St. Augustine, there's a place, I guess it's still there, but, um, it's like a crepe restaurant. I was like, yeah. ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. I yeah. fucking love crepes and I haven't had any in a long time. I used to make them every now and then, but I haven't done it for years and years. Maybe it's nicer if somebody else makes them. <laughs> so I don't have to do it. Pancakes or alcoholic drinks. Sure. Yeah. I'll combine the two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll make a I'll cocktail and grits with roll it. up a pancake yeah. and stick it in there and use it for a straw. Yeah. Sure, why not? Tea's in there teaching people how to make grits. Cheese grits, yeah. Yeah, and then serve them with damn Cajun shrimp. That was mm, good, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Hexagon Project says, also, first time on the live stream, but I've been listening. Well, welcome. I've been listening to y'all going back to when you did a haunting reviews and commentary. Oh, shit. That's yeah. been a long time. That's a long time ago. What is, I keep forgetting. We should probably, I mean, I think we've done most of the best episodes of we, a haunting. Yeah. We but could, we could probably do. We could, we could work a couple of those in there. Yeah. I can't remember, like, which ones... 
We did, uh, obviously, Man Said I Could. Yeah. Demon Child. Demon Child. Uh, we did Haunting in Florida. Yeah. We did... Uh, we didn't do Monster in the Apartment. That's true. Yeah. Did we do... I think we did that one... Did we do that one that was in Thailand or wherever? With the yeah, spiders? I think we did that one. I thought we did that one. It was too. called Hungry... It was Hungry Ghost? Hungry Ghosts, yeah. I think we did that. That was one Hungry. of the better ones, actually. Yeah, that one was actually pretty good. Yeah. And we did the Haunting in Georgia, the Mr. Gordy one. I yeah. think we did that one. Fuck, man. Now I can't remember all the ones we did. It wasn't a shit ton, but we did most of it. And we did uh, Bobby Mackey's, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did Bobby Mackey's. And we did Haunting of Summerwind, obviously, because that's your favorite episode. Yeah. We did that. When you see the actual Summerwind, though, it kind of it make it kind of explains a lot of what they told you in the program. Yeah. That place was a dump. It was, it was yeah, a, totally. It I don't even know like why it. anybody would have like tried to live in it because yeah. it didn't even look like there was anything left. That was the reason why they were like, ah, oh, no, nah, we don't we don't do anything like that. There was no money there. Yeah. Yeah. JS says, oh my god, they played the man episode of A Haunting the other day. <laughs> yeah. Demon Child. Yeah. I love that one. Yeah. That kid tried to sit on the cat. Yeah. Little fucker. Yeah. The haunting episode about the girl living in a house where the guy burnt to death in Texas fucked me up when I was a kid. I don't remember that. I kind of remember that one. We've seen most of them. I don't know if it's still on anymore, but we have like a box set. I think we did Haunting of Florida. That had Ed Dunham. He's a friend yeah, of mine now. That. Yeah, yeah, I said that. Haunting in Florida. Because that was, because I said, well, we got to do that one because that's only like a few miles yeah. from here, that house. Daytona or Deltona. 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 Yeah, which is kind of like in between right. Daytona and the land area. Not that far from where I grew up. The haunting episode where they find the pentagram under the rug was a good episode. Which one is that? Because there was a whole bunch of them. But <laughs> that, was, that was the one where they moved into a house and, and they thought there were t that there were some teenagers living in there performing satanic rituals Damn another satanic good teams. one that, another good one that we haven't done from that series oh we've got a super chat Go thank ahead, you Rick. hexagon projects in memory of a haunting plus i've been a mooch listening to your shows long enough plus i made myself a drink and i'm tipsy already that's right all right thank you for breaking us off that two dollars <laughs> five dollars yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you he doesn't have his glasses on i have my glasses on i can't really see um the one that had the damn well in the back of the house with the devil, devil oh, was coming out. Oh, you know what? Of... We did a show about that too because that was... was the Arnie Cheyenne Johnson case that had yeah. Ed and Lorraine Warner. That was yeah. like the only, I think that was the only like case in American jurisprudence where the guy like tried to say, oh, I was possessed by a devil and that's why yeah. I killed that dude. Yeah. They really didn't go into that like on the show. No. They kind of ended it before that happened. But yeah, later on that dude stabbed a dude. And... What well, was an interesting story that was told on that series though? Yeah. I'd have to see, I'd have to see if you can get, I, I have everything that was available on DVD all the way up until what? Maybe season four? I season no, four, because five. I think I got you. Well, I got you the box set that had one, two, three, and four. And okay, then I think right. I got you five, six, and maybe seven. Five, six, and seven. Like yeah. separately, because they don't do them in box sets anymore. Or they didn't, but maybe they have them now. Because they I think they were, they were streaming them. Yeah. They were streaming them. You could probably get them on DVD. Well, yeah, right? I'm sure. Well, I, I, if I you don't want to own them. Yeah, right. yeah, it's like it, you could probably stream them, I imagine, like some like Amazon Prime or some shit like that. The quality of them, they, they started to decline. Really, the first four seasons was the best seasons. Yeah, yeah those yeah. are the ones we revisit. It seemed yeah. like, the, like the later ones just kind of, they got more and more implausible. Yeah. Paranormal Witness was pretty good for a while. Yeah, the first two or three seasons yeah. were good. But then that also got implausible. That, that kind of got... Then they were just kind of like, the house was surrounded by werewolves. I'm like... Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> werewolves were everywhere. I said, I'm going to stop watching. No, fucking, uh, stop watching the, the, I think the one that pissed me off the most was like the one about all the witches. Yeah. Do you remember that one? Yeah. I was like, that's just stop. That's one was the parrot, was the uh, Poltergeist uh, show about cat. The cat. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I talked to her and she... That chick... Okay, look, people. Paranormal Witness. There's a there, in one of the episodes was cut into two pieces, and one of the one of the stories in that episode was called Cat. And his story was about a poltergeist event that was kind of a lot like mine, except it was a little bit shorter and it was more intense in terms of moving objects. And the one of the girls who witnessed it, I ended up contacting and talking to her. And I actually traded messages with her. Some of it was, a lot of it was voice messages. And I was convinced by that case um, that, that, it, that it was a true case. And one of the weird things was is that she sent me, 
an audio file of a audio message that went to her old cell phone back then that was spooky as fuck that she believed was from the fucking poltergeist. And it was a weird kind of sound, like a mechanical buzz. And inside of it, you could hear the, you could hear like a whisper going, kitty, 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 kitty. And it sounded like kitty, 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 kitty. It was going, kitty, 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 kitty. And it was only about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. And she sent that to me. It was fucking creepy. That was she so had, creepy. You she said she had never been released. She asked me not to release it. Yeah. But I have it. It was just a creepy fucking... It was very creepy. It was, it was a voicemail. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. It was a voicemail. Fucking poltergeist call. Fucking like poltergeist voice. Because it was sending text messages to her. Yeah. But it would just say things like kitty kitty and cat over and over again. Cat. Cat, cat, cat. And that kind of... That's one of the things that kind of convinced me that that case was real. Because from what I saw personally, a poltergeist really couldn't do much do any kind of complicated sentence structure, just single words. And it was just like obsessive stuff, you know, obsessive moving fucking hand towels over and over and over again, just kind of nonsensical shit. And that one just fucking repeated cat. Yeah. Well, cats are awesome. Cat. Yeah. Yeah. It TV wrote cat and it wrote cat everywhere. And it fucking did things about cat repeated cat. TB Drigger says, looks like a haunting is only available up to season seven on physical media still. Okay. That's what I thought, okay. because I think I got you the five, six, and seven, right. and then I didn't know if they made any more because I couldn't find any of the newer ones. Right. Um, David June, I think, said they were streaming on Discovery+. Plus. It's a shame. I like physical medium. Cause, yeah. Because it doesn't require internet activity, and they can't go back and do any edits. Uh, they can't go back and re-edit anything. You get the original damn episode the way you remembered it. You know, that's the way I like it. That's the way. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, I like it. It. Is it <laughs> what is it? Is there something on my skin or is that on the... I don't know. Or is that on the screen? I guess it's on my skin, but I don't know what it is. I can't really see. I don't know. Um, Maybe it was a kitty that liked hand towels and learned what it was called in English. Yeah, maybe. Um, are you ready to start talking about Santa Morte or no? Uh, go ahead. I'm ready. <laughs> are you paying attention? Yeah. Are you paying attention? I know you know, about do you really? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I, yeah, I'm pretty informed about Santa Morte. Okay. That's good. Well, you see, it's, that belief system is very, very sim similar to, uh, Macumba and Candomblé. It's, 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 it's just, the, it's just, it's just it's in Santa Maria. It's just a Northern version of it. Um, and they all have their own saints and minor deities in them, you know. I understand the basic framework. It's it's modified Catholicism. Although the Catholic Church ain't having it. Well, it's it, it's expanded universe. Yeah, that's you essentially know? what it is. And a lot of it is like in you know copyright violation and <laughs> fanfic. They don't like that <laughs> fan fiction. Well, you know? I think from my understanding is that they don't like uh, Santa Muerte in particular. No. Because, you know, uh, Catholic saints are usually, you know, people that did something awesome and then they died and then they were venerated later on. Whereas Santa Muerte was never a person that was alive. It's kind of like the She's, Grim Reaper. It's, it's a woman. It's a woman? Okay. Yeah. It's like the Grim Reaper, isn't it? Sort of. Um, They think that's maybe where some of the uh, iconography of it came from. Yeah. But there's uh evidence that... um that it came from like a, a lo like a longer ago tradition, like even go okay. back to the Aztecs and shit like that. Yeah. But it's like, it's really interesting. Like how the, how it kind of uh, came about pagan Catholicism. Yeah. It's uh that's essentially what it is. And like I said, that's, it's very similar to the way that, uh, you know, uh, you know, voodoo traditions and stuff like that took some things from Catholicism and, you know, merged it with other things. So yeah. So Santa Muerte, as far as I know, I think it originally, I'm not sure when it originally came about, but it was, uh, at first it was male, but now it's all, it's pretty much universally like a female figure. Almost always, um, uh-oh, it's hat time. Hat coming on. <laughs> Show is starting, hat comes on. <laughs> Jenny got to announce that a hat goes on. Well, you That's know. That's fucking funny. 
I just, you know, yeah. it's it's distracting when the oh. <laughs> gets over there when I'm like trying to read my note that I just see had over there. <laughs> Voodoo case at Tampa funeral home. Check it out. I'll have to write that down because otherwise I won't remember. Voodoo Tampa funeral. I started doing this now because sometimes I don't remember afterward. Like when somebody tells me something in the chat. I try to remember, but I can't remember everything. So the interesting thing, though, about the Santa Muerte cult, if you want to call it that, it's, a, you know, sect, whatever it is. It's a folk religion. Is that it is easily the fastest growing belief system in the Americas and one of the fastest growing belief systems in the world. They think that maybe it has 10 to 20 million followers. And a lot of those people are nominally Catholics as well. But some people have just completely like said, fuck off, fuck all that Catholic stuff. And are just doing straight up Santa Muerte worship. And it's like, now you even get shrines and stuff dedicated to her where people come and she's got like her own feast day and everything. But like I said, the Catholic church, they wouldn't like that. They don't. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they, so they've had a lot of trouble with, and, and it's really only since the nineties or actually the early 2000s that Santa Muerte worship has gone more public, more mainstream. So they don't actually know how long people have been doing it because it was not really allowed. So, is it technically worship of Santa Muerte or is it just more like uh I would remembrance s- of? Or no, no, no. I would say, I mean, she is... They're giving offerings too. Yeah, and they're asking for things. Okay. Yeah, then I guess that is worship. Yeah. All right. And they have, like, I was watching this... um CNN did like a documentary about it a few, a couple years back. And, um, they had a guy that was down there like participating in all the stuff and like talking to some of the people that had done, like, you know, started the shrines and everything. And he even went, he's like on one, one day, like right around the day of the dead, um, everybody, they, they have like a, a Santa Muerte like festival and you go and you get your little Santa Muerte, um, you know, icon or whatever like this little lady and she's in her little coffin and she's got her little scythe and her a globe and an owl and stuff like that and you take it you have to and it was funny because they had all of them and he was buying one because he's like well if you go to the festival you have to have your own your own little effigy or whatever so he bought her and she's you know they're wrapped in plastic or whatever and um then the lady says to him he's like well you have to activate it so he had to like take the plastic off and then they have to like blow cigar smoke on it, like sprinkle it with tequila or whatever. Um, so you, cause you have to like infuse it with the spirit. Right. And uh, then, so then he took it to the festival, like carrying her around or whatever. And then people would come by and like, we're throwing tequila on her and all this other kind of stuff. Cause that's just something that they do. So they make offerings to her and she is supposed to grant wishes to you. Something else that I thought was really funny and I'll kind of get into this maybe a little bit more like later on. But Santa Muerte is actually, like I said, you know, I, I think that they kind of associate her with you know, the criminal underworld or whatever. But she's actually really popular in a lot of working class communities, like a lot of people that are really poor, a lot of people that are sort of marginalized or are kind of, you know, in that sort of like, you know, moral graves, like a lot of sex workers and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of them like to worship her like for protection and uh she's especially very popular with the um with the lbgtq community and the trans community and so when they did this documentary like this guy was talking to these um to these three trans women and they were talking about how important like the worship of santa muerte was to them and everything like that and something that they brought up that i thought was very funny was that apparently if you ask santa muerte for something and she doesn't do it you're supposed to like punish her what? And which I th- and then I was like reading the Wikipedia page and apparently there's some precedent for that because it was like you would have like your Santa Muerte icon and be like, hey, you know, give me a husband or whatever. And she didn't do it. And then like you're supposed to like hit her. So like one of the one of the women says she's like, yeah, when when Santa Muerte doesn't do what I ask, I put her in the toilet tank. <laughs> and I just like laughed and laughed at how fucking funny that was. Somebody was said, yeah, they yeah. turn her upside down or they like, you know, put her. But she's like, yeah, I yeah. put her in the toilet tank when she didn't do what I wanted. So she responds to punishment. <laughs> Which I thought was really, you would think, because I just thought that was really funny because when I was watching 
you know, the festivals and stuff, they seemed like to, to venerate, you know, the saint and everything. And you would think that that would be disrespectful. Be like, man, fuck you, bitch. You didn't give me what I asked for. But it's like, yeah. apparently that's okay. Like, they well, can do like that. It's like a BDSM fucking relationship. <laughs> it's, po- it's a power trading relationship. Yeah, I guess so. She will lose respect for you if you don't get bad. Yeah, when I thought about yeah. it more, that's kind of more of the right. what I came to. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get mad? And fuck you. I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's If but, I was a saint, a, a god, a deity, that's how I would be. Yeah. That yeah. seems like a good way to be. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, I could do it. And then dude doesn't get mad. I'm like, hey, he's fucking, he's fucking pussy. You know? You got mad. Then I go, okay, all right, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Well, the more I looked into the shit, because as I said, you know, the my initial, um, you know, introduction to the concept of Santa Muerte was from that uh, paranormal witness or haunting episode or whatever, yeah. where it was kind of portrayed as it's portrayed a lot, like in the U.S. and Mexican press, as you know, oh, it's the criminals saint, you know, it's like the patron saint of criminals or whatever, which it's not, you know, it's true to an extent, but it's not. That's not all it is. So you know, me having that perception of it a little bit. And then like the more I looked into it and the more I could understand the appeal of it because Santa Muerte, I think that Santa Muerte, um, you know, worship has become so prevalent and is still growing because as a deity, she's not um, judgmental. I think that a lot of people, they said, well, they... A lot of the thing, particularly in Mexico, where, you know, where the uh, worship is the most uh, widespread, is that they, a lot of them kind of are disillusioned with the Catholic Church um, for not, you know, helping them with their poverty or, you know, having other, um, you know, points of view that they don't agree with, that they, you know, that they don't really uh, think are cool. And the appeal of Santa Muerte, not only do they believe that she will do what you ask if you give her an offering, but also that she's not judging what you're doing. If you're doing illegal shit, if you're doing, it's like she protects everybody equally. And I think that that kind of goes back to something that's really common in Central and South American, a lot of Central and South American belief systems is the idea of death as an equalizer. Yeah. Um, and that's essentially how they're seeing Santa Muerte, like everybody, like rich, poor, young, old, whatever. And it's like, you know, everybody has that looming over them and they don't really want to be afraid of it. So they would rather venerate it or make a friend of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can understand their disillusionment with the, with the Catholic church though, because, uh, you know, having grown up in Brazil, the Catholic Church in Central and South America is very passive, and uh, there's a lot of problems at the governmental and social levels in, in that part of the world. And the passivity of the of the Catholic Church, sometimes people started to blame their passivity with, with like, or in other words, blame the problems of society on the fact that the church is very passive, kind of do nothing. You know what I mean? Over tolerant. That that's kind of how they were seen, you know what I mean? Like you're not helping to fix the, the problem; you're just praying about it, you know. Yeah. Prayer can't do anything, you know. And it, in a way, Buddhism is kind of like that. The tenets of fucking Buddhism is that life is suffering. You suffer because you desire things. These things that you desire will eventually disappoint you or leave you unfulfilled. So the secret to life is not to desire anything and just kind of have enlightened indifference. Well, that kind of means do nothing. Just sit there, put up with shit. Catholicism kind of has that. You can kind of do whatever you want. You don't have to fix any problems. Just show up, pray, confess, give some money to the church, pat on the ass, and you're good. So um, the largest growing religion in South America, you know, not Central America, but South America, is um, Protestant forms of Christianity, which were active. It's about fixing problems, confronting problems. And, uh, you know, that's what's going on in Brazil now with the new, uh, like, uh, p- political movements of Bolsonaro and all, all that. What they're not telling you here in the American press is that Bolsonaro is a fucking Protestant. 
And when I lived in Brazil, Brazil, there was no such thing as Protestants. They were all Catholics. They were either Catholics or they were um, atheists. Well, Brazil so, is the most Catholic country. Yeah. On the Mexico's second, as yeah. far as I know, but Brazil is the most. And the, their interpretation of Protestantism is is healthy. You know, they're saying, hey, we can't just pray about these problems. We have to fucking fix them. And and it's a very different mentality. Yeah. Started with Martin, Martin Luther and all that, you know, in Germany. You know, we yeah. got to fix these problems. You can't just pay the church and pray them away. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dermot. I stayed in rural Dominican Republic and could hear the voodoo drums yeah. in the forest each night. Scary yet fascinating to hear. That's the thing about it. It's that... This reminds me very much, like I said, of your sort of crossover religions, um, you know, that you had like with all the with the slave trade and then, you know, that you had like the, the European conquests and things like that, where you got this, you know, the syncretism between folk religions, quote unquote, and the Catholic Church. So you have all these really interesting uh, combinations. And I think this is kind of like that, because honestly, it's sort of like. I feel like like back in the old days, even back to the Aztec days, and as I said, this is something that I, I you know people in the United States we don't really have a much of a tradition of this, but Central and South America, as far as I know, like you know they know that they've had like a death goddess or a death god, um, you know since recorded history pretty much, and as I mentioned, it's not so much that it's like oh a scary it's not exactly the same thing as the Grim Reaper, although Santa Muerte, there is some, you know, visual, uh, you know, influence uh, from, you know, when the Europeans brought the concept of the Grim Reaper over here. But the death god or the death goddess wasn't necessarily seen as a bad thing. Um, you know what I mean? Tila was asking about if um, Santa Muerte was, uh, was one of the uh, Day of the Dead icons. It's not... It's sort of in the same vein, but she's not. She's kind of her own thing. She's in that same motif, though. She, yeah. She's painted up like something out of the Day of the Dead. Well, she's usually, if you see um, just the little icons of her, she basically, she looks like a Grim Reaper, kind of. With makeup on. But, yeah. not no, not always. She, okay. It's usually just a skeleton. Okay. Um, and they have different colored robes on her, depending, or dresses, depending on what you want from her you know what i mean okay I, a lot of the paintings i've seen and pictures i've seen like i said it's a skull dressed up in colorful robes yeah but a lot of times from what i've seen it and even that goth girl dressed up like it it had the skull was kind of painted well it that's geometric stuff like you yeah saw. well that's like the sugar skull thing that's yeah, like the day yeah. of the dead thing like Fan the day of the dead, phantom right. muerte is more just like a grim reaper looking like okay. a skeleton okay um but she just has different colored robes okay. on and jewelry and stuff like and that. And that skull in that Grim Reaper is not painted. Not usually. Okay. Not usually. The paintings that stuck out in my mind. It usually was. the ones that I saw that, you know, pictures I've seen of them and like, you know, shrines okay. uh that are in Mexico City and stuff like that. It mostly just looks like a Grim Reaper, but with different yeah. colored robes on. It you know, Mexican stuff has a cool is a very is very cool. It has a cool motif. And uh Mexicans are kind of working and honing their skills on how to fucking make their shit look badass in the same way that fucking the goth subculture kind of made made their cultural icons from, you know, from Europe and stuff. And it's even now with, like, Tila can say she would check out goths of color. I mean, there there are black expressions of fucking of the gothic uh, subculture that look cool, too. The Mexicans are doing the same thing. And uh, you can see it in Day of the Dead, and you can see it in Santa Muerte. It they, they're stylizing in a in a modern way. It looks really cool, but it still looks very Mexican. I like it. I do too. I've it always I've always always loved the Day of the yeah. Dead iconography, and um and you can see it's really kind of gained a lot in the U.S. Yeah. Before you know now nowadays, and now that's the Santa Muerte thing, which I said it's kind of related, but it's not usually like that painted. Because like I said, that was the Day of the Dead. That's that's when you go and you like, it's essentially like, it's not like ancestor worship, but you're like remembering all of your friends and family that have died. So you go to the cemetery and you give them offerings and everybody has, 
so it's like a celebration of death, but also a remembrance of people that have died. And they have like the little candies and stuff like that that are look like skulls. And that's where that uh, yeah. look comes from. Yeah. It's like a pimped out skull. But every most of the ones of Santa Muerte that I've seen just looked a lot like a Grim Reaper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Art is art is almost like uh, a cultural advertisement. Yeah. And uh, it's almost kind of like propaganda. And Mexico, Mexico recently, I'm getting kind of drunk, so I'm fucking losing my, tra my train of thought. Mexico's uh, recently in the past few decades has really like upped their game in terms of like their visual marketing. They're making Mexico cool again. That's what they're <laughs> doing. It looks cool. A lot of the shit they're doing. And um, now Santa Muerte, some Mexicans are going to tell you, yeah, I don't like that. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it's associated with the cartels and the cartels are fucking very dangerous to an extent it is yeah and it's just some of them see this is, is a lot of people see it as negative um i understand it you know cartels are running around killing people um but still that artistic motif looks fucking very cool it does yeah i think the reason too that it got associated with criminality particularly yeah. like in the wider um press and stuff yeah is because the mainstream uh you know culture wasn't really aware of it all that much until like this one guy like a cartel member like gang member he got caught and they found like a santa muerte shrine in his house and the more they kind of looked into it, the more they realized that it it was kind of like really popular in prisons because, like I said, Santa Muerte is seen as like um, an equal opportunity saint. She doesn't care if you're in a drug cartel. She doesn't care if you're gay. She doesn't care if you're a sex worker. She doesn't care if you're doing something illegal or you're not supposed to be doing. She doesn't care about that. If you give her something, she will do something for you. So anybody can venerate her. So it's very inclusive. So criminals kind of latched onto that. I was, it was yeah. funny because I was watching this documentary about it earlier and they said, you know, for a long time, um, criminals in Mexican prisons would always get like a tattoo of the Virgin of Guadalupe on their backs because they thought, well, no one, cause it's a very Catholic country and it's like, well, not another criminal wouldn't stab you in the back in the middle of the Virgin. But it's like after a while, like the Virgin of Guadalupe started to lose its like cachet a little bit. So now a lot of people do uh, Santa Muerte instead. So the Santa Muerte thing is very, very popular, like in prisons. Yeah. Um, because it's because she's seen as a protector of the downtrodden. Uh, yeah. So also the criminal underworld, Teasing, seeing her as a protector. Teasing they're saying that uh, she said um, th that normally she didn't really wouldn't think about going to Mexico. But lately she's been seeing Day of the Dead stuff like on Pixar. And uh, she's thinking about putting Mexico on her visit visitation list. You know what I mean? To go down and see it. I'd love to go to fucking Mexico. If I went, I'd actually like to see some of those D uh, Day of the Dead ceremonies. I go, would as well. And I would go th and, and celebrate then. Yeah. I'd bring my fucking outfit and everything. Yeah, that's and, the uh, that's around the first of November. And Santa yeah, Muerte, I'd love to see that. Santa Muerte, they usually do the festivals for her around November first. Although some people do uh, uh, do it in mid August yeah. as well. Day of the Dead make, makes me want to say that Halloween has to up its game. Because Day of the Dead has a visual style. It has a motif. You you know something is associated with, with Dia de los Muertos when you see it. Even a b bottle of de tequila. A Day of the Dead issue tequila. You know, just the skulls, just the, the little lines, the little geometric shapes on the skulls. It's a cool motif. Yeah, really Halloween is. stuff doesn't necessarily have have a motif there's orange and purple and black but there's no little design not really no, motif because it's just so widespread it's so this. widespread yeah. it could be anything it makes you want to think that halloween needs to be codified you know what i'm talking about <laughs> like it's those colors but then there's also has to be some geometric like a shape, logo, <laughs> like a logo or, or icon well we already yeah. have icons you know jack-o-lanterns and things yeah but they're the jack-o-lanterns not drawn in a style that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's it, kind of all over the place. It's all over the place. Yeah. It doesn't, have a co it doesn't have a cohesive motif. Yeah, like I said, as soon as you see that skull with like the petals and the stuff petals around and it, and the, yeah. you know, and, and the just, flowers and stuff. And the you proportions know that, that they like to use, you go, you, that's Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's I don't know. It's it's just hard though because the U.S. everyone's from somewhere else, so it's not like we right. have any kind of like. Well, I, I don't think I think Halloween is now pretty much American. Uh, I don't think anywhere else really has it, do they? Uh, you know what? Halloween actually, it's weird because I feel like even even as recently as the '80s or '90s, um, they had Halloween like in the U.K. for example. But it wasn't like a big deal. Like, no. it, you know what I mean? It's like there, there'd be like a couple of masks and some candy and shit in the stores. But it's like it wasn't like here where it was like parties and everyone's trick or treating and shit like that. But over the past um, couple of decades, it's gotten really much, much, much bigger. In, in Europe? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, particularly in the UK, that's what I heard. Yeah. That it's like because when and, you know, my ex-husband's from there and he said when we were growing up. It's like it was like nothing. It's like there would be to be a couple things in the shops and that'd be it. Right. Um. So when he came over here, he was like, holy crap. It's like Halloween is it's massive. It's like it's just right behind yeah. Christmas. It's like a big, huge deal. Yeah, I studied all this. What's funny is that America would have all these, I guess, day these like days of celebration that kind of had European origins. But they were much bigger here than they were in Europe. And it's because you have a fucking gigantic, cohesive market to sell to. You had corporations that wanted to sell products yeah on certain seasons so they would actually kind of fabricate these uh th th these seasonal holy days <laughs> they were a real holy day but the whole motif was kind of fabricated around some kind of corporation to help them sell products during that time like here's an, he, 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 here's an example christmas existed for a long time but people really didn't celebrate christmas up until pretty much recently. And a lot of it evidently had to do with icons like Santa Claus and uh, reindeer and things like that. And that's kind of traced back to really Coca-Cola Company. Well, I mean, the I mean, it was idea... around, but they yeah, promoted the it. The idea of Santa Claus comes from was, a much older tradition. Right. But all your stuff about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, that song and the whole idea of like the reindeer with the sleigh and everything, yeah. that was like a pretty recent. It's invention. pretty recent. And who really brought those ideas to the mainstream and brought them to the world was American corporations like, like Coca-Cola. It's funny because like that's very popular in, in countries that aren't even Christian. Like Japan loves Christmas. They go through the whole fucking Christmas thing. They don't really even understand Christmas. They'll have... They'll have fucking... Jesus on a cross... In front of the manger... With the three wise men... And Santa Claus watching. And then in the next nativity scene... Santa Claus is on the goddamn cross. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They just like the... They just like the, the, the celebration of this jolly fat man and this naked dude with the beard who got killed and it's all going to be good. Honestly, they, they don't really understand it. Honestly, they have it. I'm kind of of the idea that it's like, if you um, like the traditions of something, just do it. Then just do it. Yeah. No one's telling you you have to do it a particular way. They if were you like anyway. Christmas, if you like Christmas, it doesn't matter. Like I'm an atheist and I fucking love Christmas, yeah. man. So you're like, don't tell me I can't celebrate that shit. Fuck you. I'll do what I want. <laughs> well, Dr. Price, who's basically like one of the modern fathers of myth uh, of mythicism. We've had him on the show. Like to have Dr. Price back on again. He he was a priest, or not priest, he's a preacher, and um did all kinds of studies, knows everything about the Old and the New Testament, knows everything about all uh, reads in the original Greek, written tons of books on the subject. Christianity really wasn't about the Bible. It was more about going to these churches and looking at stained glass windows and looking at images and singing. It was about memes. That's all it was. Only the Bible, the Bible and these, uh, these advanced ideas was only, were only for the priests. Um, it's the same way with these holy days. It's more like going through memes and kind of like a party. And it, it, it's yeah. like theater. It's I not kind of feel like, I mean, people's, uh, you know, throughout most of history... You know, the majority of people lived kind of hard, miserable lives. Yeah. 
And so if there if there was something to look forward to, like once a year or however many times a year, you'd have this big feast right. and like you could put up all the lights and the you know what I mean? And it'd be really cool. And if that made you happy, yep. then who the fuck cares where it came from? Dr. Price, no, now that he understands everything about these religions, doesn't believe a word of it. But he goes to church and sings and prays. He loves it. It's just part of the experience. And it was the experience. That is the meaning of the religion. Not whether or not it's true or not. Doesn't yeah, it's just the it. meaning that you give to it. Well, yeah. and like I said, that's the, the same thing with yeah. any holidays. That's why I get kind right. of annoyed by people that are like, oh, I don't want to celebrate Christmas. It's too, um, you know, commercialized or whatever. Right. I'm just like, you know, it's just a fun day to look forward to. You can make some cookies and have some fucking hot chocolate. You're hanging out with everybody. And hanging out with that. your friends. And you have like yeah. a pretty tree with lights right. on it and stuff. Don't be such a grouch. Right. <laughs> It's you a, don't got to believe in Jesus or not. I don't believe in any of that shit, but it's like, it's a cool, it's, it's a, just a fun thing to look forward to. It's a all is good and everything's going to be all right ritual. That's yeah. what they are. It's just, you know, for, for a day or two, everybody's happy. It's kind of yeah. cold outside unless yeah. you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> in which case, that's kind of weird. But yeah, like so, I said, it's that's it's super fun. I like to sit around watching the, my MST Christmas episodes, looking at right. the tree and drinking hot chocolate. So when, you ta- when you're talking about Santa Muerte... It's going to, the veneration of Santa Muerte is going to be something like that. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. It just matters about how it makes you feel. And that's really all these religions are about anyway. And the thing about Santa Muerte is something that really struck me when I was listening to people that were, uh, you know, worshipers of hers is this is something, I think they have a name for it. I think it's called, um, shit, man, it's called like a religion of crisis or something like that. Because they said that most of the adherents are working class or are very poor um, or are otherwise marginalized. So, and, you know, they've done a lot of studies that people whose lives are more precarious are much more apt to believe in these kinds of things because to them, um, they're not getting any help from any other quarter, um, you know, and their lives are difficult so it makes them feel better to have this lady, Santa Muerte, who you give her some cigarettes or some tequila or some candy or something like that and ask her for something and, you know, she will do it for you. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much all it is. Um, you know what I mean? So so in that sense, I don't think it's it's very understandable. Like how, I mean, not only is the iconography cool and everything like that, but... You can understand why this happened. They don't want to go through the Catholic Church kind of stuff because, you know, in, in a lot of ways, the Catholic Church has kind of failed them. Um, you know, it's too much. It's too complicated. Um, some of them, you know, like I said, are criminals or, you know, belong to a lifestyle that the church doesn't approve of. So they kind of like that they have their own thing now. And the, and like I said, it's now people are even putting up shrines uh, on their own that are only to santa muerte there's one and i can't remember exactly where it's from but this um this guy built it it's really big it's like this really tall it's like this big kind of square um this essentially looks like a big huge grim reaper and he uh started building it and then he got murdered and then so his mom like took it over. So now his mom is kind of like one of the big like priestesses of what or whatever, even though it's really it's not organized. It's not an organized religion by any stretch of the imagination. It's very, very um, grassroots in the sense that there's ra- there's not even really any codified like, quote unquote, belief system. Basically, they were talking to this one woman um, on the documentary who was one of the first people to kind of come out and make it um, make the worship of Santa Muerte public. Because like I said, up until the early 2000s, um, people worshiped Santa Muerte, but they just did it in their own houses. You know what I mean? They had shrines and stuff. Nobody really had the balls to come out and do it in public because it was still seen as, you know, oh, uh, that's what the criminals do. Or it was seen as like a cult or something like that. So, you know, people were kind of careful about it. But this one woman came out in 2001 and the story that I heard was that somebody, her son, I think, had given her uh, like an effigy of Santa Muerte, but it was too big to go in her house. So she kind of put it like out in this 
you know, outside area, like in a wind, like a store window or something like that. And everybody was like, oh my God. Like, cause a lot of people were worshiping Santa Muerte, but they you know, were keeping it on the down low. So the fact that she came out and was like, had it in public. And now that place is kind of like a big, uh, public shrine now like a lot of people come there and like leave offerings and her and her whole family like run a run a whole shit there now t's asking um where you got your necklace um i got this at oh gosh a long time ago in daytona beach where i grew up there was a wiccan store want another one yeah why don't you belt that one down well hold on I can't belt all that. Just kind of fill it and put some ice in okay. it. There was a Wiccan store, and I can't remember. This was like, shit, man. Back in the early to mid-90s. And uh, I can't remember what the hell was it. What the hell was it called? It was run by, a, by a, a woman and her husband. Shit. And I used to go in there and hang out with them all the time. But now I can't remember the name of it. I probably still have a bag or something from it somewhere because I keep a lot of that kind of stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah, so let's see. Where was I? All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about where this uh, deity might have come from. There's a, No one's entirely sure um, because, like I said, worship of Santa Muerte didn't really get really popular and well-known until like the 90s or the early 2000s when it kind of like took off but so she so she has a lot of names the they call her by a bunch of different names uh the skinny lady uh, i've seen that one a lot uh the white girl the bony lady um it's funny because they she's all white lady and or black lady so you know whatever um but like i said she wears like a different little robe like depending on what you want for her for her. but i think the most common one other than santa muerte is uh the skinny woman they usually call her that because she's a skeleton say but uh yeah so there's that so so like i said when the spanish um conquered the aztec empire um you know there was a death i don't want to call it a death cult because that sounds bad but it's like they they did actually kind of have death deities and it wasn't and i think the spanish kind of thought that that was my check poops hold on kind of like fucked up or satanic or whatever but i don't really i don't really think that was the intent and also that's really kind of not the intent of santa muerte either they're not saying oh awesome you know let's kill people they're just acknowledging that death is uh, a fact of life and they are like i said they're trying to overcome fear of death by essentially befriending death is what they're doing or making it making her into a figure that um that maybe you can relate to i guess is what i'm trying to get at so i guess so what ended up happening there's even back to like the 18th century um and even earlier than that there were references to similar deities to santa muerte some of which were male um but there was in the 18th century I th or i can't i don't remember if it was 18th century or it might have been spanish inquisition but there were some written records of uh indigenous people in mexico and they had uh, a skeletal figure like a deity that they called santa muerte and they asked it for favors like to grant wishes or to like do miracles or whatever if it didn't do it they would whip the skeleton so like i said they didn't have toilet tanks back then to put it to put her in but it was the same kind of thing like they're like do miracles or else it was just that kind of thing and that's going way 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 back um so so like i said you know day of the dead goes back a really long way too and this is kind of like related but not exactly the same thing it's it's a little bit of its own thing now, so as I mentioned, the worship of uh, Santa Muerte was pretty much, I think it was mentioned a few times by um, like anthropologists, maybe in the 1940s, 1950s, like a couple of them made reference to it, but it was still like pretty, pretty secret because, you know, it, it, I think that it still, it had this kind of occult veneer 
even though it had a lot of Catholic trappings and people didn't really want it getting around that they were worshiping this, you know, it's essentially like a Grim Reaper. And, you know, like I said, I think the a lot of the Grim Reaper iconography did actually, the, you know, the robe and the scythe and everything, because Santa Muerte does usually have a scythe and also a globe, usually. Um, so I do think that that particular thing came from Europe, like, you know, from, from the European conquest, but it was kind of folded in with death deities that were already present. You know what I'm saying? It almost kind of reminds me too, because a little bit of um, like uh, like voodoo and stuff like that, they have like Baron Samity and stuff like that, who's kind of uh, skeleton looking. And you, he's kind of another one that you kind of ask for favors and stuff. But yeah. So, um, so basically, so you, so you had like this decades and decades of people worshiping Santa Muerte in secret. A few times, you know, they would build, sh if they kind of dared to, you know, uh, build like a shrine out in public, um, then they would get, uh, torn down. Like the government didn't like it. Like other people would tear them down, whatever. And then it's almost kind of like, for a little while, there was this artist named Jose Guadalupe Posada. And uh, this was like early 20th century. And he started painting, um, not Santa Muerte necessarily, but he started pa doing these paintings of a skeleton with um, kind of like fancy dress on. And these paintings were like really popular. Um, and they were supposed to, he would do these paintings of like skeletons with fancy clothes on, like doing regular shit. And he, cause he was trying to show, as I mentioned before, that death is a great equalizer. Like, so it doesn't matter if you're like this big fancy lady or whatever, you're still going to die. Everyone is. So that was kind of like the message he was sending with it. But the, his paintings were like really popular and really influential. And I think that some of the look of Santa Muerte came from that as well. Came, like came from that early 20th century artwork. Because if you see the paintings and you see it, it was like it's very, very similar. So basically, um, you know, as I mentioned, I think like some uh, anthropologists in the 1940s um, saw some Santa Muerte worship going on even back then, uh, particularly in a place called uh, a neighborhood in Mexico City called Tepito, which I think is still where a lot of the shrines and stuff are. Now... I think I mentioned this earlier, but I didn't have like all the details in front of my face. But so the reason why the cult of Santa Muerte often gets associated with the criminal underworld is because it first kind of came to public prominence when they busted this guy. He was a gangster, Daniel Arizmendi Ares Lopez. And that was in August of 1998. And they found a Santa Muerte shrine in his house. And this was reported a lot because everybody's like, Ooh, it's like satanic or whatever. So I think that a lot of people sort of associated all of those things with crime. You know what I mean? Because that yeah. was kind of the first time that a lot of people had seen that. And you can imagine like if somebody, if they arrest like this scary gangster dude and then they go in his house and he has like this big shrine with like a skeleton lady in there. Yeah. Everyone's going to comment on that, but that's kind of, you know, I'm not surprised by any of this. I'm not either, actually. If you look at the Maya and the fucking Aztecs, they they believed in a religious pantheon very similar to kind of like Greco-Roman gods. And when the Spaniards came in, the Dominic, Dominican monks and friars studied their religion. They wrote a, bu a bunch of stuff down in books. They sent it back to the Vatican. <clears throat> In that book that was left unread for about a century because the Vatican didn't bother to even fucking read it. All right, it said that pretty much all of the, all of the traditions of of the Mesoamericans and their and their deities had a Catholic analog, and that most of their even a lot of their 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 um rituals had like a Catholic analog. Their religion wasn't that different than Catholicism. So when they instituted new religions, and it was and it's complicated how that happened, the surrounding city states around 
the, uh, the Aztec capital city had been captured by the Aztecs. They were forced to pay the blood debt. Cortez and his men, when they overthrew the Aztec Empire, they didn't do it on their own. This is something people have fucking dreamed up. It was They led a dead combined allied force of all these Indian states, city-states, against uh, the, the capital city. There weren't enough Spaniards to do this. Once, once the Aztecs were taken out of power, you got to consider them, they were like a political party. Okay, and they were pretty ruthless. They were they. It was a totalitarian theocracy. Once they were out of power, the Spaniards and the Indians themselves tore all those statues down because a lot of them were Aztec gods that the surrounding cities were forced to uh, to to worship. Because you know each city kind of made up their own gods sometimes. To, you know, and then captive city states were forced to to worship them. So bringing Catholicism to Mexico was pretty easy. Because most of the Indians were trying to get rid of the Aztec stuff because it was forced on them. And there was kind of analogs to what the Indians had already believed in. So really, Mexican Catholicism is heavily Indian influenced from day one. It was kind of a, a merger of them in a way. Now, not everybody went along with this. Some people, some Indians fought against it and, and, uh, and Catholics or, you know, uh, the Spanish mercenaries fought them. But things like Santa Muerte existed in the Indian days, too. They had certain yeah. gods of the underworld. Yep. So all this stuff, actually, it's totally normal for me. This all fits into Mesoamerican culture. Aztecs and Mayans. All right. They, this is what they, they believed in these kind of things to begin with. So a deity like Santa Muerte, that would just fit right in with the Mexican personality. That, that's, yeah, it that, didn't that, seem all that weird to me. No, like, no. you know what I mean. But by the same token, neither uh, neither does the Virgin Mary and Jesus and things like that, th th because the Aztec religions had things like that. They just called them rain goddesses, and you know, sons of God, and you know, Quetzalcoatl, and they just had different expressions of these same ideas, like the. Like guys that were whose mom was a mortal, but then the dad was the chief god. That motif goes way, way back. The ancient Sumerians and the, the ancient Greeks believed in all that shit with Perseus and Hercules, and where yeah, my mom's just a mortal, but she got knocked up by by God, the father of the gods. You know, that's me. <laughs> Jesus, same thing. Yeah, it's, much. it's interesting how little difference there is. Very I little. mean, it seems like there's a lot of difference like on the surface. It's just but if you dig different. like right down, it's just very, yeah. very similar stories yeah. all around the world. It's very, very similar. Stories. Yeah. So well, because people are kind of the same. I mean, yeah, Catholicism was kind of forced on them. But Catholicism was was pretty much the same thing that they had believed. They just changed the names. They changed the way of the, the worship. They got rid of the human sacrifice, and the child sacrifice. They they got rid of the they got rid of the idea of the blood debt, where you had to pay back your debt to God to keep the sun rotating around the earth. You didn't you didn't have to do that kind of stuff anymore, and that was the heart of a totalitarian theocracy. You will do what I say, or I sacrifice you to pay the debt. You know that's a lot of leverage to have over somebody. Yeah. So at least Catholicism didn't have that. So I think it was an improvement. But, you know, I'm going to say, you know, stuff like Santa Muerte and stuff, that's just totally, that totally falls in line with Mexican culture. That's why it exists. That's why they're doing that. Well, and that's why it's so popular. Yeah. They think now that it might be um, up to 5% of the population. Yeah. Um, and like I said, some of them are not just, a oh, word Santa Muerte worshippers. Some of them are still nominally Catholics as well. Yeah. But because the Catholic Church... Uh, you know, in Mexico, you know, definitively came out and said, this is devil worship and, you know, you shouldn't be doing it. Mm. Um, some people did actually kind of renounce the Catholic church and just go full on Santa Muerte, mm. which, like I said, I can see that because it just seems like you don't really need like a lot of intercessory. It's not even, I mean, I didn't get the impression of all the um, people that they interviewed, and I even watched a couple of YouTube videos of people that were Santa Muerte worshipers, and they were kind of talking about it and like how you do it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I never got the impression that 
Because you know how in Catholicism, you're basically asking a saint, like St. Jude or whatever, to intercede to God on your behalf. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. hey, I'm going on a trip, so I need, you know, St. whoever, like St. Christopher. He's a traveler saint, right? Um, they, yeah, they have like thousands and thousands of saints. I can't keep track. So I have a sore throat. It's, it's called St. Blaise. Uh, you know what I mean? They have like a patron saint of dentistry. They have a patron saint for fucking everything. So, I mean, I just assumed that that's what that was. You were just asking that saint to say like, hey, put in a good word to God for me. I need this, that, and the other thing. But I never got the impression that people that ask Santa Muerte for things or ask her for miracles are saying, hey, ask God to do this, that, and the other. They're basically asking her to do it. And the way they were talking, it, ma it made it sound like they expected her to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because like this, this one woman, uh, the mother of the, the guy that built like that really big shrine that got murdered. She said she started worshiping Santa Morte like after that, because she said after he got murdered, I, I said to her that if she would bring me the killers of my son, then I would, you know, venerate her and all this other kind of stuff. And she's like, so then like the, one of the guys that killed her son, like got murdered. And so she took that as, oh, well, you know, Santa Mort is saying, hey, I got you. So then she kind of like started building the shrine out. So I don't really think it's not the same thing as like the right. So I can see why the Catholic Church are kind of pissy about it. Although, you know, um, <laughs> not, I'm not going to go into that. But but because it's not exactly the same thing. You're not asking a saint to intercede to God on your behalf. You're just asking Santa Muerte to do something for you. Like, hey, here's here's some cigarettes and some tequila give me some money. You know what I mean? It's kind of that type of thing. So I don't know. So I, so I guess that's kind of like different in a way, but, uh, but as I said, as of the late, uh, two thousands, Santa Muerte is actually Mexico's second most popular saint. St. Jude yeah. is still the first, uh, but she's actually taken over uh, old version of Guadalupe okay. as being more popular. Camp guys at asking, why are they so brutal in the cartels chopping people up and stuff? And my answer to you is uh, because it works. That's why it works. Go see uh, Apocalypse Now. Understand what Kur Colonel Kurtz was saying. The horror. You can have all the conventional armies and all the policemen you want and all the legal systems you want. All the terrorists that you want. Horrorists are even more effective. It's when you have some, when you have groups of guys that'll crawl into your window and get you and your wife and your children and make you do bad things to your own family to save your wife and then get it all on video and fucking pour your cooked bones out in front of the fucking courthouse steps. It's a lot of power. And you're an elected official. You're a fucking judge and they do you, do this to you. It's very effective. That's why. Uh, and the reason why they're doing it is because when you have a system where legitimacy, government legitimacy is 100% collapsed. Nobody believes really in the in the legitimacy of that government because it's corrupt. Then it just goes down to force, pure force and horror. Whoever can corner the market on that is in charge. Those same cartels have backers and financiers who are elected officials. If you're an elected official, why would you worry about a court system? Why would you worry about police when you can just have your own narco army do all that? At your whim. It goes right back to like, you know, Genghis Khan. You know, Tilla the Hun. That type of stuff. It's just a more direct route to power. It's very effective. Their their Overton window of acceptability is much expanded versus, say, Western civilization. Um, so I think that might answer your question why they do it. Um... They're badasses. Also, it's kind of... If you look at drawings of pre-Spanish conquest Mexico, it's the kind of thing that Mexicans did in, on, in a ritual sense. A lot of human sacrifice, um, ritual torture of enemies, cutting their fingertips and stuff. It's all... It's, all, it's a very much of a machismo warrior culture. You will submit to me type mentality it's your it's not about fair that's a european concept 
It's about dominating your opponent and making them beg and then demonstrating to others what you can do to them by your power. And that's why. Uh, it's a super chat. But I know. Okay. <laughs> Let's wait okay. for you to stop talking. Thank you, Brad. Love this channel and our little community. Cheers to all of us one day having a planned trip. All is welcome. Just got to figure a spot. Well, thank you. Okay. That's really awesome. Uh, yeah, somebody asked earlier, I was trying to uh, answer it, but um, uh, that there had been some human sacrifices to Santa Muerte. There was actually, um, I'm sure there was more than this, but there was actually one famous case of a woman, uh, what was her name? Sylvia something, it started with an M. And uh, she did actually, I believe her and her followers like sacrificed three children or two children and an adult or something like that and drained their blood and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. Um, that's the thing. I guess you can kind of, because normally when you see people giving offerings to Santa Muerte, it's usually stuff like tequila or other alcohol, um, cigarettes, marijuana, um, coffee, candy, flowers, uh, votive candles, stuff like that. Just like your regular kind of offering type stuff. But yeah, I mean, just like anything else, some, you know, a few people are going to take it uh several steps farther than that and are gonna say hey if i want something a lot maybe if i sacrifice some people to her she'll do something for me so i can totally see it going in that direction and it has gone in that direction like i said i'm not entirely sure how widespread that is but i know for a fact that there was one very widely publicized case where that did happen where this woman uh actually did sacrifice three people to santa muerte but uh yeah so so like I said, the, when you see icons of her, she usually has a, a globe and a scythe, uh, both of which the scythe, like I said, comes from the European concept of uh, Grim Reaper, kind of like uh, harvesting or cutting negative uh, influences. Also the globe representing death's dominion over the earth. Uh, you also see her sometimes with uh, hourglass or scales or owls or oil lamp. I like the iconography of the hourglass because that the symbolism of that is that, you know, your time is running out, obviously, but it also means that death isn't the end because you can just turn it over and then the saying goes back down. So that's the symbolism behind that as well. Our, our friend Saad, all the way from Saudi Arabia, has just showed up in the chat. Well, hey there. How you doing, Saad? Hey there, hey there. Camp guy. I would hope I would go into shock pretty fast if someone started cutting on me, right? I just, yeah, I do actually kind of think about that. Sometimes. The message that they're sending is do not disobey. That's the message. This is what happens when you disobey. If you don't have a legal functioning legal system, if you don't have a bunch of other shit, it's an effective way of getting what you want. That's why they do it. Don't go down there and fucking, don't go down there fucking around. That's my advice. Yeah, well, that's good advice yeah. for uh, any for anyone. Don't go down there. <laughs> just, around. just don't go anywhere. Go down there, be friendly, show respect, <laughs> and get respect. Don't go fucking with those dudes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, so like I said, the um, worship has gotten uh, really, really popular since the early two thousands, um, particularly with marginalized people. A lot of people um, that work at night or work in dangerous professions. Uh, like I said, you know, people are Ill doing illegal activities, but also people that you know, work in bars or drive taxis or something like that. Um, they think that they, that uh, Santa Muerte can protect them. And as I mentioned, you usually see her, um, they put her in like bridal clothes a lot. Um, but that's usually if they're like, you're like asking for a husband or something like that. But you can see her in like a bunch of different colors and the color robe that she has on has to do with what, you are asking her for so sometimes you go in like a shrine and they showed some like on this documentary and they're really cool looking and they just have like a whole line of santa muertes and she's in all of her different robes and whatever it is that you want that's the one you go over to and put your offering you know give her your cigarettes or whatever um so basically you got uh your most common one is white and that's usually like purity um or you're cleansing some negative influences uh you also got red robes which is anything to do with uh you know love or lust or whatever um or anger the i've seen it uh associated with that as well the she also has gold robes 
That's usually for prosperity, economic power, things of that nature. Uh, if she's wearing green, that's who you ask uh, in legal matters. Like if you want to get somebody out of jail or you're going to court or something like that, uh, you would go to the green one. Uh, yeah, amber, dark yellow, brown, or sometimes purple, that's uh, health matters. So, you know, if you want her to cure sickness or something like that, those are the ones that you go to. And actually a lot of... Um, they say like drug rehab centers and stuff like that will have like a Santa Muerte with one of those color robes on because it's supposed to be like a healing uh, type of thing. Also, she has on a black robe. That doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Uh, the black robe is usually protection from evil forces. Um, although it can also mean revenge, uh, you know, if you want to take revenge on somebody or, or if you're trying to uh, protect yourself from like black magic or sorcery or something like that. Got a super chat from David G. Thank you, David. Wish I could donate more, but things are tight. Oh, don't worry about we it. We understand. David. We appreciate every single thing. It's also thing. getting towards the end of the month. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized that. Y'all need to watch your ass inside the honky apocalypse that's happening now. The honky apocalypse. The honky apocalypse. Okay. Man, look at, at oh boy, <laughs> fucking showed me some of that white exploitation movies. I want to see that shit. He sent it to me on Tom Shitty Movies called what, White Trash was one of them. Scum of the Earth was another one. It was a white exploitation, hillbilly exploitation. Yeah, you told me about it. I gotta see that shit. I'm gonna get back into it. I keep um, I meant to, I think I meant to mention it on the show, but I probably yep. didn't get to. Um, there was this one movie that they kept uh, they kept getting for Mystery Science Theater. And it's like, I guess, like, whoever was, like, helping them pick out the movies kept sending it to them. And they were just like, no, we don't want to do it. It's called Child Bride. Okay, yeah. And I think, I, I haven't seen it, but I think it was along those similar along lines. Those lines. I think that was one of them. I think that's, I think that's, I yeah. think he actually showed that. Because I remember in the that. in the book, like, Kevin Murphy, who played uh, yeah. Tom Servo for a long time, he was just kind of like, no, we're not doing Child Bride. Stop sending it to us. Yeah, it's like, that'd be ew, awesome. Ew. <laughs> that'd be awesome now yeah they will well honestly they might do it now like for rip tracks because yeah. they don't have you know they're not on it uh so they might have a rip tracks of that for all i know they have one I, of everything else i gotta hunt that shit down <laughs> i gotta hunt that shit down that i'm sure that it's, i'm sure you'll probably like need a bleach shower after that shit maybe it's not as bad as it sounds they never are because it's like yeah. a lot of times when you see the poster and you hear you read the synopsis you're like oh my god it's gonna be the grossest shit ever yeah. but then you see it and you're just like no. you're laughing at it yeah well you know yeah. it's kind of like i you they need to build the movie on the back of the posters well yeah they didn't yeah. even write this like we didn't write this shit down just like i yeah. don't know do whatever yeah. but um you should probably see uh hg lewis's 2000 maniacs okay that's kind of like a rednecky. Yeah. Well, it's just I was just reminded of it because I did a review of his other movie, Color Me Blood Red. Yeah. And then I was kind of like, oh man, Two Thousand Maniacs. Tom would probably like that. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time, but it's like it was pretty funny. Hey T, did you see the People of Time Forgot yet? <laughs> I like that one. That was good. Land of Time Forgot was good too, but People of Time Forgot was a little bit better. Yeah, that's weird. I think the second one was the slightly was better. better. Yeah. Another one I want to see is I want to go back and see the old War of the Worlds again. I haven't seen that in a while. We were kind of like going through last because yeah. Amazon Prime has like a bunch of yeah, those kind of like old adventure movies and yeah. stuff. And then we ended up watching The Daytime Ended. Oh, shit was bad. Well, even though like we started watching it, and I'm like, hey, I've seen this. It was yeah. on the new MST, like the one that was on yeah. Netflix. I was like, yeah. oh, I knew I'd, that sounded kind of familiar. And it was a it was a it was a Close Encounters of the Third Kind ripoff. Yeah, big time. And watching that, I says, man, I want to see Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So I got on my fucking tablet, and I got I got it in 4K coming. It shipped out today. I want to see Close Encounters again. I fucking love Close Encounters. Yeah, that was a good place. It, was just, it had a great tone. If you guys haven't seen Close Encounters of the, the Fifth Kind, you guys need to see that. that that's, a, that's a classic fucking movie. I thought it was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Third Kind, yeah. I'm Cause... fucking drunk. Oh, shit. I know what it is. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Gotta put the new one. Gotta put. I had to. Wait, I one. thought you already had that hat on. No, no. Oh, you had the other hat. No, on. no, no. It's Gotta not. It's Ranger not, Patrol. Camp. It's not time for the sexual tyrannosaur. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not a sexual tyrannosaur yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. In a bit. In a bit. Was yeah, because we're still on the first topic, bit. so don't get to. Although we're right. only an hour and forty minutes in, so it's not. Fucking sod. Fucking look, sod's in this fucking. He's in the. He's in the in the comment sections right now. This bitch sent me a link to an article by CNN saying drinking alcohol does damage your brain. And I said, what the fuck's this all about? Well, you know, you forget things. 
forget people's <laughs> names. And I said, no, He's dude. He's always forgot people. No, things. dude. That's that's head injury. Well, he yeah, he that's, had had a head injury yeah, before. Head. I have I've had multiple head injuries, but the main one was a motorcycle wreck that put me in a coma for about a week and a half. When I came out, I was paralyzed, and I after that I had problems with people remembering people's names and remembering sequences of numbers. But everything else, uh, you know. But I'm terrible with names. Tell them, Jenny. Terrible. I know, and it's a it's I can see it. I it's can embarrassing see, too, because yeah. sometimes it's like people we've known for people a long know time, forever. and then he'll be like, like uh, 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 who, who, uh, what's yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the names. I'm like, oh my god, we've known them for like, and eight it's years. only like the first time, and it's only like the first time <laughs> of the night, I'll forget the name, and then from the rest of the night, I'll remember it. I could, but I'll remember everything we talked about. Every, I'll remember everything about that person except the name. Yeah, it's it's weird because. Yeah. You seem to remember a lot of things, like one particular type of thing. Yeah. But then other specific things, you oh, so you can't remember people's names. Yeah. You can't remember like birthdays or no. or what day it is. Or what I don't even know what day it is now. No, you like don't. I couldn't tell you what date it was. And um, I have well, because every time like when we're doing the show, I have to like keep reminding him, like, hey, it's this time. Hey, it's yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah. It's like, or and I have to go in there and get him. Hey, it's yeah. almost like twenty minutes or whatever, and I have to do that. He never yeah. remembers uh what day the garbage goes out. No. So I usually end up doing it. Yeah, I can't remember like what day. I should need to write that shit down. <laughs> I don't need. So I have no. So I need to write that shit down. <laughs> so I have a map. Yeah, but if you wrote it down, you would just lose. I the wouldn't thing know what day you, I was in. You would lose. You would lose the thing that yeah. you wrote it down on. <laughs> I do that sometimes too, but I'm not that bad. Because <laughs> usually I only write things down because I have a notebook like right here, and I just like try to write everything. Now sometimes it's like I'll write something on a scrap of paper, and then the scrap of paper gets thrown away. I exist in a state of qualia, qualia. You yeah, know? it's it's where I'm in the here and now, experiencing things, kind of like an animal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have advanced skills. I have memory, but no, it's not normal. I, that head, those that it was one head injury that 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 really did most of that. But I had multiple head injuries, a lot of fist fights, um, concussions, um, explosions. Probably had something to do with it too. A lot of bang war torpedoes and shit went off. Yeah, uh, artillery rounds and stuff. It that might have had something to do with it. I think it was mostly fist fights and motorcycle wrecks. I think that was most of it. Yeah, because you've been fucking shit up your whole fucking life. Fucking shit up and, and your, fucked your up. Your brain is all like whole, yeah. bruised and stuff yeah. in there. I don't care. I don't care. I know you don't. It's the same kind of shit a fucking pro football player went through. True. And actually, not as much. A lot of those guys were much worse. It was yeah. enough to kill them. Yeah. I'm talking about the old football players. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and didn't we, like, we were talking about, remember we saw that documentary about that one guy that was, like, a football player, and they were trying to argue, because he, like, killed his wife or whatever. Yeah. And they were trying to argue that maybe, like, he had some, like, fucking hands. I'm sure he did. Cause, well, because his, like, behavior had changed and shit like that. He was a wrestler, wasn't he? No, he's a football player. Okay. I just said that. I thought there was, I thought there was another one that was a wrestler that kept getting hit in the head with damn chairs. Yeah, I think that, that yeah, that, I think he that was He killed his family, too. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around, isn't but there? I, <laughs> but I think he was, uh, a lot of it had also to do with steroids. Yeah, he he's roided, probably, ready. like, roided out. Like, yeah. He was, like, a fucking Hulk or whatever. Yeah. Scary. Gotta watch, man. These fucking dudes are running around like fucking animals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With head injuries yeah. and testosterone and shit. They're like, ah, we're gonna kill everybody. Michael Schaefer got me. Hey, Tom, what day is the 4th of July? <laughs> 4th of July is the 4th of July, man. It's Independence Day, bro. <laughs> <sighs> that's like three days after your birthday and then she okay t says uh not yet tom we still need to see video drum drum that's next one yeah okay. you're gonna like video drum video, video, video drum is fucking Ooh, awesome sorry. i don't know why i just like it, it, yeah video drum is up there i think video drum might be better than the brood but i fucking really love the brood too there's something about the brood yeah the brood is just has a creepiness to it i mean all those like evil little kids in their feet yeah. pajamas Okay, I kind of love that. Yeah. <laughs> that makes them scarier. Now they're all talking about War of the Worlds. Yeah, the War of Worlds. The War of the Worlds movie was really good. So was the album, the Thin Lizzy album, with fucking, what's his name, Richard Burton doing the doing the narration, to to prog rock, fucking story of War of the Worlds. I fucking loved that. I had it had it as a kid. It was a double album. 
You can get it on YouTube on YouTube or not? Yeah, you can get it on YouTube. Now. Yeah, we listened to it once. They actually, we're doing like live productions with fucking full size Martian war machines and pretty. Yeah, neat. it was pretty rad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember us watching that on YouTube. TK I Close Encounter is amazing. Yeah. David June asked, "Can the sexual tyrannosaur eat grits?" <laughs> the sexual tyrannosaur <laughs> is primarily grit fuel. <laughs> Okay. And spam fuel. Spam and grits, man. You got it. See you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why you want to ruin grits by Samelia six one six is in Argentina, a kid, Ramon Ignacio you know, Gonzalez, was. was killed in a ritual to Santa Muerte, and a bunch of important people in the town were to blame. It happened in two thousand six. Oh, I don't doubt it. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Well, like I said, any kind of any kind of folk religion where the whole point of the thing is you have to make an offering to this deity to get something that you want. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some people are going to yeah. logically assume, hey, if I kill a person, then that means it's like more powerful. Michael Schaefer says Benoit had the brain. Is it Benoit? Is that his name? Or Benoit? Benoit. That sounds I mean, a lot, if you want to be that's a lot fucking classier. Benoit. Hold on. Back up. Back up. Back up. What? Benoit. <laughs> Benoit. Like Benoit balls? Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> See, that's how she's coming. She's going to come at me like that. I like that. What? Part. That's a thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Michael Shaver said, Benoit had the brain of an 83-year-old and he was only 40. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you keep, like, you, you get... You keep getting hit in the fucking get, head. You keep getting hit in your head. Yeah. This is... You need this in here. Yeah. This That skull is there to protect all of that. Okay. Now, Tammy asked Tila, have you seen Charles Bronson yet? She was talking about, talking about the movie Bronson. Yeah. Yeah. T, T, if you haven't seen Bronson yet, you got... <laughs> okay, I would recommend that you see... Uh, before you see Bronson, though, you want to make sure that you see A Clockwork Orange. Because the the way the Bronson movie is shot, it's kind of shot to where had you seen A Clockwork Orange first, you'll, you'll appreciate it a lot more. Because it kind of does some... It kind of does some callbacks to it in a way, tone tonally. I mean, you noticed it too, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's very much in the same. I mean, they're two completely different movies, but it's very much in the same vein. Right. Clockwork Orange is about some futuristic fucking criminals in a future that didn't happen, but it happened from the past. That's some weird shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're kind of showing Bronson as if he was something out of Clockwork Orange. It helps if you know what the Clockwork Orange was. Quite cool. I like that movie. David June said a Clockwork Orange is my favorite movie. It's, it's actually one of my. Movie. It's one of my favorite. It's a great movie. Too. It's easily in my top five. Kubrick fucking knocked it out of the park. I love that. The movie. Shining, Clockwork Orange, two thousand one, man. And it was pretty much any of Kubrick's movie. I yeah. could watch them like every day and yeah. not get bored of them. And then um, I got to go back. I want to go back. And I have a Full Metal ja a Full Metal Jacket. I haven't seen that. I want to see that one again. I need to see that again. And uh, another one that I liked was Eyes Wide Shut. Seeing it again, I thought it was kind of cool. But, I liked it better this time because you know yeah. what? It, when it came out, and I think I mentioned this when we reviewed it, I saw it in the theater when it came out, mm. and I didn't love it. I was kind of underwhelmed. Like I thought it was pretty good, but I was like, mm. it's better when you after a while. It aged pretty well. And honest, and Kubrick's movies, I feel like they, you know, uh, they benefit from watching them over and over again because yeah. you like pick up a lot of stuff that you missed like yeah. the first time. I think a lot of movies are like that. You kind of have to see them twice before you really realize. I mean, obviously not something like Ouija Shark, yeah. but um, <laughs> or something like that. But you know, ones that are kind of like a film. You know what I mean? I think most of the time you probably have to see them twice before. Straw you dogs telling fucking Tina, go ahead and see Bronson. You get to see a naked Tom Hardy in it. Yeah, you do. But yep, but I'm naked. just saying to T T if she hasn't seen a Clockwork Orange, she should see a Clockwork Orange first and then see Bronson. You'll appreciate Bronson much more. Yeah, because like you said, it does kind of inform. Yeah. But it but kind of helps to kind of know the story yeah. of of the real Bronson yeah. as well. Cause that dude is a lunatic. So T jumps in and goes, so I'm seeing video drum or Bronson next. See video drum. Then see a clockwork orange. Then see Bronson. Yeah. Well, like watch all the old, old yeah. shit first. Yeah. It's always better to kind of have like an established. Yeah. Story, you know what I mean? Um, you know, <laughs> instead of making everybody watch movies. 
if that's what we're doing. It's like we could actually, I mean, we could do, like I said, you know, when I'm on vacation and we could like record some movie reviews ahead of time, everybody want to do. We could do, we could do Full Metal Jacket if you want. We could do all kinds of shit. We'll see. Okay. I mean, you know. You know, we never did. We never did actually uh, review a Clockwork Orange. We never did review. Yeah, we did. Did we review Bronson? We did a matinee on it. Re- yes. Okay. All yeah. right. And we did a Clockwork Orange. Okay. We did. It's funny because we've done so many. Do we do the brood? Yes. Do we do video drum? Probably did. Yes. Huh? Okay. Pretty sure we. Yeah, we did those. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did a lot of Cronenberg. We did okay. Shivers. We did. Um, Dead Ringers. All right. We did the Dead Zone. Yeah, we've done like a ton of David Burnham. I'm pretty sure we did the Brood, right? I know we did Shivers, and I know we did Video Drum. So I have to go back and look. Go back and look and see. If I'm we pretty did sure we did the Brood because I think right. we watched it not too long ago. Okay. Um, that's the thing. Sometimes I have to check because remember, like you guys were saying the other day, like about Andromeda Strain. And yeah. then I was sitting there going, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to do that one. And then I was like, oh, wait, did we do that already? Because then I was like looking it up and I was like, oh, it's on Tubi for free. So I'll put it in the Patreon poll. And then I was kind of like, I'm reading the synopsis. and I'm like, wait, we just saw this like not too long ago. And then yeah. I was like, wait, did we review it? But then I did a search on our channel and I guess we didn't. Yeah. I can't remember what she said. She'd done. seen Clockwork Orange. But she did a thing on her, her movie appreciation. I think you said when she was in college, but she needs to see it again. Yeah. You kind of want to be fresh on a clockwork or know that movie real well. If you do, you'll understand some of the stuff that was done in Bronson. Bronson was a great movie. I want to see that bitch again. Yeah. It might be a masterpiece. I have to see see it again. Stardock 76, you didn't review Full Metal Jacket or Barry Lyndon. Still waiting, by the way. Yeah. So, well, we have Full Full Metal Jacket. We had Full Metal Jacket, so we'll definitely be doing that soon. Like I said, if it's the week that I'm gone or we'll do it on Sunday, I don't know. We'll do something like that. Close Encounters will be here probably tomorrow. The next day, we'll do that one too. And Dermot said, You did the brew. Did you do scanners? Ooh. Scanners. We didn't do scanners. We should probably do scanners. We definitely write that shit down. I saw that at the drive-in. We don't even have scanners. I got to order it. I don't have it. Well, like I said, we would, you can probably find it on like streaming services. Have you done the original Wicker Man? Yes, we've done the original Wicker Man. Uh, I, I definitely remember doing that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we did Phantasm. David June said that reminds me I need to send Jenny the money for 976 Evil. Yeah, it's like I remember seeing that back in the 80s, but I don't think I've seen it since then. I've never seen it. Um, it's, uh, you know, uh, Robert England, who played Freddy Krueger, uh, he directed it. And Stephen Jeffries from Fright Night is in it. And uh, Scott Gettman says The Boogans. You know what? I think uh, Brandon Tennell just did The Boogans. I think he just put it up yesterday, actually, and I haven't watched it yet. Basket case. Basket case, I keep putting it in the poll, and it never wins. <laughs> because that one is on Shutter, So I've been wanting to do that one for a while. But, you know. Gramther's Hammer. I think Tila might be asking us if we've done 2001 yet. We did. Yeah, that we did a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, we did 2001 in Space Odyssey. I definitely yeah, if you have it. any questions about 2001, I can tell you anything. I mean... I didn't understand it for a long time, but I see it now and understand. Like I said, Stanley Kubrick movies are ones you definitely need to like watch. You got to watch it a, a bunch, bunch of, time. of times. You have to understand. And reading the book helped a lot, and 2010 explains a lot of stuff. So if you've ever seen two, 2010, the sequel was good too. Roy Schreider, is his name. He was in it. Scheider. Scheider is that his name? Good movie. Uh, you know, it was a Kubrick movie, but it was still a good movie. Another one I want to from that same era I want to revisit was Outland. With Sean Connery. Oh, yeah, I remember He that. was a cop on the moon of Io. Remember that? And they were selling some kind of drug in there that was killing people. I remembered life in right. Io. I think I saw that. Called Outland. Hugo says, uh, have you ever considered doing a movie watch-along? That was an idea that I had been throwing around. It's like I'd have to figure out like the technicalities of doing it. I always wanted to do it because I feel like sometimes when we're like just sitting around in the bedroom like watching movies and it's like sometimes we'll say like some funny hilarious like MST level shit and I'm just yeah. like God damn it we should have like I'm, this is we're drinking <laughs> which we do sometimes yeah. so it's just kind of like God damn it we should have like recorded this shit yeah um but you know we might do that one of these days maybe we should do that like for an anniversary show or something we'll do like a movie watch along we'll have to pick a good movie to do though one that we've seen before. So we kind of know, know what it is. What's coming. 
Because sometimes if you're just like seeing something you've never seen before, I don't want to talk during it because I'm trying to pay attention. And it's that, probably it's probably better to do like kind of a crappy movie because those are more fun. That one we watched last night was it the, the the daytime stopped. The daytime the time ended. ended. Yeah. I really had a problem following that movie because the special effects are pretty fucking bad. I didn't know what it was trying to express a lot of the time. I don't and, think they knew. And it was to be honest with a you. lot of shit didn't quite make sense. And I wasn't that, high enough. That movie wasn't too good. I wasn't high enough. Because I, you know what I mean? It's it kind of like I kind of get it, but then I kind of it was a Charles Band movie, and if you know anything about bad movies, you know who that is. Um, so like the first half of it, I was kind of down. I was just kind of like, okay, it's like out in the desert, and then there's like aliens, and then there's like other aliens that are bad, and yeah. then they seem to be fighting each other, I guess, and like this one family is in the way. But then, like, it goes off in this fucking, I don't even, weird, this weird, new it, agey, I don't know what the fuck was going on. It got very on. convoluted. I didn't really know what was going yeah. on. I didn't get it. But, um, I mean, I kind of got it, but not really. I felt, like I said, I'm not high enough or yeah. to to really. Connor Boxblock <laughs> opened up a new channel and he was posting all of the fucking Planet of the Apes television series. And I was able to watch a little bit of the of the of, of episode two. Episode one wasn't up there. It's probably taken down by now. So, dude, they're gonna fucking ding you and take it down because I'm gonna make them private. But it maybe makes you want to get the, the the television series. It looked pretty good. I wouldn't mind having that on DVD. Yeah. Yeah, it looked just like the movies. Hmm. In terms of like special effects, it looked just like it. Sad asked, would be interested in doing Dead Silence. That was an okay movie. I didn't love it though. I mean, that was just kind of like I don't. I don't, I don't think one. you saw it. It was a James. It was a James Wan horror movie about a creepy uh, ventriloquist. Uh, David June says, "Do it." Red Letter Media does best of the worst. Yeah, I've seen some of those, and those are funny. It's like there's four of them, and they just sit around watching. Like they usually do, like two or three movies on one episode, and then they just edit it down to like the okay. funniest jokes that so they do. How do they not get dinged for copyright? They don't really show the movie okay. so much. All right. One thing that I noticed that some, because some YouTubers, I guess, are like kind of big or they have special permission because let me like Oliver Harper or somebody, he shows like large chunks of the, like not large chunks, but he shows like big scenes of the movies and he doesn't get dinged. But one thing I noticed that this one channel, I like Ryan Hollinger and he's a, he's an Irish guy and he reviews horror movies and it's not even reviews. He like discusses them. So he usually like picks like a random, like a, a horror movie that he likes and does like a deep dive and like really gets into, you know, the philosophical shit behind it and everything. And he shows a lot of clips from the movies, but I noticed that he flips them horizontally. Yeah. So I don't know if that keeps him from getting uh, copyright infringement because he never seems to. Yeah. Tila says, um, Train to Busan is really good. Tucks your heartstrings. I think we did a review. Of, we uh, did uh, actually. Uh, yeah. Okay. Man, I love Train to Busan. Um, that was the only, that is pretty much one of the only horror movies yeah. where I almost kind of cried at the end. <laughs> and then T says that uh, Halloween would be a good movie to group watch. It would, because a lot okay. of people are familiar with it. All right. Uh, a Boy and His Dog, we did that. And then Tammy Stumble. Bubba Hotep, we did says, that as well. Uh, do Bubba Hotep, we did it. Well, I mean, maybe um, for a watch along, though. T comes back and goes, Godfather 2 with Dreamy De Niro. Yeah. Maybe. We haven't, actually, we, we haven't, haven't done, we haven't done the first one. Right. District 9, yeah. I definitely want to do that one of these days because right. I really like that movie. Uh, Zach says, Jenny, girl, I hope someday you do a review or something of Hereditary. It's a, it's on my list for Flickers of Fear, even though I haven't done it yet because I have anxiety about watching it again because Scott, it stressed me out so much. Scott Getman says, one last suggestion. A boy is a good dog. I have it. We did that. Uh, do we, we do it? Uh, yeah. We did. I yeah, have we, it. I have it on Blu-ray, too. Yeah, we did that a while back. Um, that, one, that movie, for some reason or another, is in um, public domain. And there was somebody fucking doing Blu-ray re restoration fucking bootlegs, and I got one. It's a good movie, real good movie. Like, and you movie. can watch that. I think it's on. Uh, it's pro. I think it's on Tubi. Actually, if any of you guys you like, can watch it for free. If any of you guys like Mad Max, and are looking for a post-apocalyptic type movie, get a boy and his dog. And it had a young um, what's that motherfucker's name? The guy from Don Mi Johnson. Don Johnson from Miami Vice plays. A young aspiring rapist and his robot dog going through the the apocalyptic wasteland trying to find girls to rape. That's literally what it's about. That's how fucking Scott weird. says color out of space. Yep, we did that one. Did too. it already. <laughs>
We have that as well. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Unbreakable. Love that movie. Want... Yeah, we actually haven't done Unbreakable. I actually want. We to did get... Signs, but we haven't done. Unbreakable. I want to buy all three of those movies. I haven't done. Um, uh. Uh, I haven't done The Sixth Sense either. Jackie Brown. Haven't done it. We Ooh, should write yeah, it down. Yeah, we right? should definitely do Jackie Brown. Yeah, I haven't done The Sixth Sense either, and I was kind of thinking maybe I should do that one, because I think that's actually on Hulu. Mike says, what about the TV show Star Lost? Never heard of it. Never heard of that either, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, Boy and His Dog is on YouTube free. Yeah, I think you can, yeah. I think you can watch it, like, a, you know, you can watch it on YouTube, yeah. you can watch it on Tubi. You can he's it. telepathic, but he's also a robot, from what I remember, wasn't he? I think it's been a while. Yeah. When, when did we do a Boy and His Dog? It was, like, it was a while back, like a year or two ago. But, yeah. you know... Yeah, Tila said, ooh, Hereditary is great. I know, I love that fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, write that down. Let's buy that movie. What? Hereditary. I want to buy You didn't it. like it. I want to see it again. Have you done Let's Scare Jessica to Death? Yes, we have. Yeah. I definitely remember doing that one. Like I said, I want to do Hereditary on my uh, Flickers of Fear show, but I haven't done it yet because, like I said, I it stressed me out so much the first time that I'm like kind of I'm anxious about watching it again. Oh, let me go ahead and announce to some people. Yeah, Six Sense is on Hulu. I just saw it. If, um, I, boy, that's a good movie though. I haven't seen that in a long time. Six Sense. That's easily M Night's uh, yeah. best movie. Although his little superhero trilogy, I fucking yeah. liked it. I but liked, I mean, the Six Sense is still good. Although the Six Sense, and I, I said this on our Stir of Echoes review. I was so mad that like the Six Sense and Stir of Echoes came out the same year because even though Six Sense is a good movie, I think it suffers a little bit once you know what the twist is. Um, so it's not as rewatchable. Stir of Echoes is much more. Write down Brightburn. I want to buy Brightburn. Okay, I'm running out of room. And there was supposed to be another. They were going to make another one of those horror super. Sophie brighter. said that if you like that evil uh, superhero. superhero thing, then yeah. there's a series. It's on a. It's, it's on Hulu or Amazon. No, it's Amazon Prime called The Boys. Yeah, uh, and I yeah. think it's on the second season. And they said that's that's pretty much exactly what that is. Yeah, I remember seeing like a. You know, uh, commercials or trailers for that, like in the movie theater, actually. Oh, oh, oh scratch it, scratch it, scratch it, what? scratch it, scratch it. Lower, yeah. lower. Ah, ah. Tila says it ah. follows is an okay. instant classic right. too. Yes, it is. I love that movie. That's another one that I have to do actually, because like I said, I'm writing down some too because, you know, I. Yeah. You I like, a, I like a lot like wider kind of range of horror movies. Yeah. So I I like to be able to do ones that, because I you know I. I ones that you might not necessarily like and it follows is one that i wanted to do i did one i just recorded one earlier that's going up next week for um saint Maud, and man that movie was so good i had been i've been waiting two years to see that shit because <laughs> remember we saw a trailer for it like two years ago in the fucking movie theater yeah. and then it kept getting pushed back and then finally amazon prime got it and i was like god damn it finally i can watch this movie and it was man it was really really good mm. i liked it you know what time it is don't you Oh no! You know what time it is, don't you? <laughs> Goddamn sight, sexual tyrannosaur! Oh, and Dermot is saying the Company of Wolves. That's on my list. I'm gonna be yeah. doing that next month sometime. I had that's on my list for next month for my show because that's also on uh, it's on to be or something. And so because I, I go through all the all the things and write down the Hugo what? comes out with the good one. The others, remember them. God, I love that movie. That's a good movie. That was another. Yeah. I think that's on my list for my yeah. flickers of fear. The original. Movie. He's talking about the original, I would think, right? No, Seven. no, no. The the one from the two thousands. Okay, because there was the one from the seventies. It was good. Yeah, too. but no, that was just called the other. The other. Okay. And we did that one already. We did. It? All right. Yes. Good. And I read the book. All right. A long time ago. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that is actually a good movie. Yeah, the the movie is from nineteen seventy two. The others was the one with Nicole Kidman. About the kids in the creepy house. Return to Oz with uh, a young little Farouk Oh, yeah. that was good with was like good the movie. wheelers and the fucking yeah, heads yeah. and everything like that. Oh, that was fucking great. That I think I don't great. know if I told a story. We went. We were working a convention and getting some coffee, and standing right behind me was Farouk Bulk. I didn't even recognize her. Walk right by her. Yeah, the girl got skinny, man. She was so skinny, she's just unrecognizable. I don't know. I recognized her. I didn't when recognize she came her. Out. Yeah. Because I saw her coming, because we were up on the, uh, what do you call it, the balcony. And I looked down and saw her coming out of the thing, and I was like, yeah. oh, hey, that's Farooza Ball. And I recognize her even from far away. Yeah. 
But yeah, she was a little girl in that. Do you, did you see that, Return to Oz? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Oh, write down Sardos. I gotta buy Sardos. Oh, yeah, Sardos. Yeah, we forgot about that. We were talking, about that. About it. talking about that on Wednesday. I fucking like Sardos. I did too. I liked it. <laughs> like I said, yeah. super high. Haunted Honeymoon. Oh, man, that's one yeah. I haven't heard of in a long time. Gilda Radner was in that too, wasn't she? When they were, that was when they were married, yeah? I yeah. think that's what I remember. I remember that being funny. I've watched pretty much anything with Gene Wilder in it. He's like hilarious. We haven't reviewed Excalibur. Yes, we have. We did? Yep. Okay. Yep. Shows you how good my memory is. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, well, sometimes there's some that I get confused because we right. thought there's about it. We thought about it. We didn't do but it. But we never did it. Okay. But I I distinctly remember doing Excalibur You're because right. I remember making the, the Okay, now here's, an, here's another thing, man. Look, Jenny. What? I want to do a Conan redo. Okay. I want to do a Logan's Run redo. Because our Logan's Run video was very fucking popular. It had a really bad um, audio quality. We, we had like one of the number one Logan's Run uh, um, reviews. Did you know that? It yeah. was like 20 or 30 I mean, there's reviews. not a ton of reviews. There's only a of couple. It. I think that's why. I, we can, I, I want to watch that again. We can do a better job, I think, next time on Logan's Run. Okay. And, Tila uh, says Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, I definitely want to do yeah. that. Uh, Stradog78 says The Whip in the Body. I actually have that. That's on Shudder. And um, I actually have that on my list to do for my show. However, if you want to send me a copy, you can. But I think it's on Shudder, though. And that's definitely one that I wanted to do. I had a bunch of Giallo movies I wanted to do as well. Another one that took a long time to get to them. Another one that kind of T kind of inspired me about is we ought to do one of these days an overview of Blackula, Blackula one and two, and how that influenced Anne Rice and the Vampire. The, what you, G, T, what do you think? What do you think of a show like that, where we talk about how influential Spooky, on the slick? I'm writing that down. Fucking, you still writing it down anyway? No, I'm just. Of how, on the slick, that that vampire movie was very influential and much better than. I mean, those were great vampire movies, and they they influenced a lot of you know Anne Rice and a lot of the vampire culture. I don't know. I don't. Maybe we should got to do a show on that one of these days. Yeah. Of how the how, of, of vampire lore in in general. Well, I've been wanting to do a vampire lore show anyway, and we just never got around to it. Yeah. But we could like do that. one that was kind of more specific like that. Like that would, vampire that would be lore, right. and we just kind of go through it and show how how all that evolved. Maybe we can even talk a little bit about the Stragoi in that. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was thinking of. Right. Uh, Brian says, "What about Spookies? We haven't done that one yet, but I just wrote it down." Tila said, "Tucker and Dale versus Evil is so fucking good. If you if you guys haven't seen Tucker and Dale versus Evil, please see it. It's so awesome. If you like horror comedies, it's fucking hilarious. Tideland is also on my list yeah. uh, because that is also on Tubi at the moment. And I just did not too long ago. I reviewed the Reflecting Skin, which is kind of." Not not exactly like Tideland, but it's kind of in the same ballpark. Um, and that kind of reminded me of Tideland. So I was like, oh, I have to go back and do that one. So, uh, you know. So I think you guys would do an amazing job of uh, redoing Blackula and vampire lore in general. Yeah, I think that's that'd be a good idea, I think. You know. We'll, yeah, we'll she get said a thumbs it. up on that, yeah. Yeah. we got to do something about the kind of like a history of the damn lore in terms of cinema. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be like there... a really interesting show, I think. Yeah. That would have to be almost kind of like a sidetrack, something that would take several hours to talk about. Yeah, we could do it as a regular episode. We could do a sidetracks if you want. Not, yeah. Because yeah. like I said, a lot of the episodes, you know, we usually do like, uh, you know, people vote on the topics. So yeah. it's not, you don't know if it's going to win that week or whatever, because right. I usually just do whatever most people vote for. Yeah. See, I knew you didn't mean resisting. I knew it was something like that. Revisiting. Yeah. Right. Spell check's getting everybody. I don't understand what the fuck is wrong with you damn goddamn fucking tablets. Uh, the Orphanage, also awesome. Crimson Peak, I actually have it. So um, somebody sent it to me. So we'll probably do that one as well. I actually saw it in the theater, but I want to watch it again. So we'll probably do a matinee on that. But I definitely want to do The Orphanage too because that was an amazing movie. I wanted to announce something. I mean, maybe a lot of you guys may already be up on the game. 
But for those... Oh, who... and Fearless Vampire Killers. That's another one I want to do. That's Roman Polanski. A lot of you guys may already be up on the game, for those, but for those of you who are not, there's been a big reordering going on at Disney and Disney+. Plus. Um, they're trying to save Star Wars and The Mandalorian. Oh, and High Tension. That's another one that's on my list, actually. Okay. And um, they're, they're doing press releases. They're doing everything they can to try to fucking get the, the fuck-ups out of Disney and trying to get the good guys who were running fucking Mandalorian to get them in charge of all of Star Wars so we could have some badass fucking Star Wars. They're talking about some badass shows and you gotta have, what's his name, um, Favreau? You gotta have, and, and the other guy, you got Favreau and what's it, Fargy? What's that other guy's name? Life Force, we already did it. Did it? Yeah. You gotta get those guys. Repulsion, in, I wanna do that too. Gotta get those guys in charge of the Star Wars universe in, in, in Disney. And then it's gonna be cool. They wanted to do the fucking uh, the, the the female series with the acolyte. Is that what that's called? They were gonna do that. They were gonna do. Uh, remember that we were talking. To, they talked about it. I don't. I don't they know teased it. And then uh, what is it? The fucking um, the Boba Fett series. Rangers of the fucking Republic. All that shit. But they're doing a, they're doing a shake up. They're trying to get. The talent in, involved. What's this? What? What's this? What's this? Well, I'm just. Uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I needed to okay, go ahead, uh, go ahead, reply go ahead. to. Yeah. So Mrs. Evans' arty party said, "As above, so below." Yes, that was an awesome movie. Housebound from 2014, also excellent. That's also on my list to do. Tila said, "Did y'all do Rocky Horror Picture Show?" Amazingly, we did not. I haven't done Rocky Horror yet. That's another one that I need to do. I want to do like some more kind of musical shit. Like I said, I want to yeah. do Rocky Horror. You know, we can do Repo. Xanadu. Um, I don't know if I want to do Xanadu, you but I, do I Xanadu. wanted to, we could do Xanadu, I guess. But um, I wanted to do uh, Hedvig and the Angry Inch. Yeah. Um, and I definitely want to do Repulsion. That is definitely on my list because, like I said, we did Rosemary. Did we do Rosemary's Baby? We did The Tenant, but we haven't done Repulsion, which is the other, which is the third movie in his apartment trilogy. It's the first one. Um, but yeah, did we do, I, did we do Rosemary's Baby? I would be very surprised uh, if we didn't, so. but maybe we didn't. Maybe we just thought it was too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> we did do The Tenant, and I've been wanting to do Repulsion for a really long time. Tom will have to dress in drag for the Rocky Horror Picture Show review. Oh my <laughs> God, that would be good. Count Yorg Vampire is a vampire movie that scared the shit out of me when I was I remember kid. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. I remember that See, one. See, there's still so like we've done so many movies, but there's still so many that I want to yeah. get to. It's like I'm not gonna live long enough to like get to all these damn movies. Like as much as I want to. And the, you guys, I have a list of movies that I said, oh, these are movies that maybe I'll do for my Flickers of Fear show. And I originally just started writing down like Giallo movies and stuff. And then I was like, oh, I want to see this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And like now it has this like, massive fucking, I have like new movies over here and old movies over here. And it's just this huge fucking list. I said, oh my God, I have like fucking 10 years worth of stuff. I think you guys did Rosemary's Baby. See, I thought we'd done Rosemary's Baby. I'd be, to go back and check. I'd be very surprised if we didn't do Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. I mean, that seems like a really obvious one. I know we didn't do some else. Like it took us a really long time to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre just because I figured, oh, everyone's done Texas. Everybody's seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, Brad says spookies. Yeah, I said about that. I haven't done that yet, but I but I just wrote it down. Okay, you guys are crowding us. Get the fuck off of her booty. <laughs> now it's the second time of the show, the second part of the show we gotta do because we're finished with Santa Muerte. We pretty much covered Pretty it. much, yeah. We pretty much covered so, it. So um let's we talk need, about Edgar Allan Poe. We gotta talk about Edgar Allan Poe. And then once we get Edgar Allan Poe out of the way, we can hang out, we can talk some more. But we got to we got to continue hey, with the like, show. We don't put Edgar Allan Poe out of the way. Let's talk about Poe. Oh, you know what? You guys, you guys. I yeah. think I've shown this before. Yeah. I got all kind of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, you're gonna love this shit. I gotta add weight. He's kind of dusty. Yeah, he's been up there for a while. I haven't even like taken him out of the box because it's like I didn't want to like look, 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 look. The Edgar Allan Poe action figure. Yeah, he's action yeah. figure. <laughs> and I like how his little jacket is kind of ill fitting and stuff. That's awesome. Uh, the Edgar Allan Poe. Jacket. Also, look at this. Like I have that up there too, but it's like I didn't want to reach up too much to get it. But it's like I love this. I might have shown this on the show before. I'm like I love this so much that I don't even want to like use it. 
You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like I'm afraid. Like, look, it's got like Edgar Allan Poe on there. Yeah, Edgar Allan Poe. And it's got like all quotes and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I love that. I have to have that. See, I bought it originally because I was gonna be all fancy. And I was going to... He's actually... He's got his own action figure? Yeah. Of course he's got his own Everybody action figure. Does. I have my own He sits at a figure. desk and he writes. Yeah. <laughs> and drinks. And drinks. And falls down and in the snow and down. dies. Well... Yeah. Well, I got some theories about that. Yeah. But okay, you know what I mean? That's kind of one of the things I wanted to get into. Because I think one of the things about Edgar Allan Poe... Well, I think there's a lot of... Maybe misconception about... I'm not saying he wasn't a drunk. He was kind of a drunk. But... I think a lot of people think he was like a drug addict and stuff like that. Not really. And he wasn't like insane or nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, he had like some issues like He's, we all do. He was a regular working man of his time and place. Yeah. He was a creative guy. Yeah. And, and a lot of creative people are kind of yeah. messed up, you know. I'm messed up. Well, he had kind of a weird family situation. Uh-huh. But he was a, basically a pulp writer of his time in a way. It was pulp. But he was fucking great. And he worked. I don't even know if I'd say pulp because he um he was actually really well actually while he was alive he was probably more respected as a literary critic yeah. than a writer although he was known for his writing but he didn't get rich from it he was poor his whole life yeah he worked but, for newspapers I think mostly mostly and he was like an editor and stuff yeah. but um I mean he not only kind of codified the philosophy behind the short story particularly the short story of horror and suspense he also essentially invented the mystery detective story yeah there really hadn't been much of anything like that before What's, he wrote murders in the room Arc. much respect out to these dudes from this generation it was pre-internet pre-computer the media it was, it was newspaper um typewriter would have been the computer of the day i'm not even sure they had typewriters in his day yeah they had typewriters i think it's just um if he lived today he'd be a youtuber but there weren't many guys like him back then um he did have a following and he did make a living barely barely <laughs> of what he was doing and he died but his work lived on because he was at the right place at the right time he was a cutting edge dude in his time. Yeah, and I mean the dude. thing about it is that I mean I can't really think of that many other American writers yeah. that are as widely read now. Yeah. Um as his, you know, other than I think because he's he writes horror stories, um I think his shit is more widely read than maybe somebody that just wrote like literary fiction yeah. or whatever you want to call it nowadays. Cause you know, a lot of that stuff people like, read, Oh, we have to read it in high school, but then they don't read it for entertainment. Um, but Edgar Allan Poe's shit, people still read that cause it's still fucking good. Yeah. It's just kind of weird. If you were to arrive now and write better than Edgar Allan Poe, you wouldn't be noticed and you'd be forgotten. It was the time in which he appeared. He appeared in a time when the medium was newspaper and books. And back in those days, you had to fucking write and there was nobody else to really model yourself after too much. They were on their own. That's That, that was the technology. The technology was the imagination and the pen and how you worded things. The, narr the, the narrative. It was kind of flowery. Um, the story arc was part of the technology. He was fucking good. He was... He, well, nah, nah, he wasn't good. He was great. He was a great writer. You know what? It's weird because I find that his uh, writing, his stories, are a lot more modern yeah. than other things from the same era. Um which were, as you said, maybe a lot more flowery. His stuff is a lot more, it's evocative, but yeah. it's still really like straightforward. By today's standards, it would be kind of flowery. Sure, but you know. Uh, not what quite as bare bones minimal as what you'd have today. Here, 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 okay, this is really all you need to know. Now, of course, that's... Uh, um, yeah, it's like, um, is it? It's all you need to know. Is it? <laughs> Lovecraft copied Poe. 
Well, and he was open about that Openly. too. He's like, that's, you know, Openly. that's who I'm okay. wanting to be. That's right. when I write down, sit down to write a story. That's what I'm trying right. to do. I'm trying to write something like right. Edgar Allan Poe wrote. Lovecraft fucking looked at Poe and said like, yeah, that that's it. But I, I, I'm going to do my own magic. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm going to add to this. Gods, gods that watch you and gods that hate you. You know what I mean? And that's a, that was a fucking mind blowing concept back in the day of Lovecraft. But there would have never been a Lovecraft without Poe. Nope. And uh, without a fucking Lovecraft, there would have never been a modern horror as you know it. Nope, not at all. So that was the... I mean, he was pretty much a pioneer yeah. in every single regard. Yeah. Gramther's Hammer said, would Edgar Allan Poe be considered a pre-Goth? Yes. Oh, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Right up there with... Um, the poet girl, um, Emily Dickinson, would have been a fucking proto god. Mary Shelley. Mary all Shelley. Like Even Lord before Byron, Emily all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Lord Byron and Shelley, they'd write fucking poetry and then just... Romanticism. That's romanticism what it is. And then Edgar Allan Poe yeah. kind of dabbled in that as well. And then they'd wife swap. And then well, they'd do I, shit. I mean, they did weird shit like that. The modern and, goth movement. Yeah. And they'd do um, fucking drugs and shit. If you know that much about it. Yeah. When, like I said, we'll probably do a show about it like the week yeah. I'm on vacation. Because that's something that I can do a show about without having to do any research. Because I lived through that shit. And, you know, that's something I've studied a lot. But, I mean, it's essentially a modern day version of romanticism. Yeah. Why do you think so many goths are into literature from that era why do you think so many of them are into like uh, you know pre-raphaelite art uh you know poetry from that period art from that period Th that's why like the yeah. victorian period the romanticism all that stuff anything that's kind of like this decadent past like goths are into that yeah you know what i mean and then there's even things that were kind of like about lovecraft who was like the generation after poe there were things about him that I really didn't want to face, but I guess it's true. There was kind of some things that were kind of fucking repulsive about him. Like he was kind, he was racist. Not kind of racist. Yeah, he was very racist. racist. But there was. Have you ever read his yeah. story, The Horror yeah. at Red Hook? Yeah. You should read that. If you weren't an Anglo, <laughs> if you weren't an Anglo American, then goddamn, you weren't a goddamn human being. You were like an animal. You were like an animal because, from his point of view, an a Anglo Americans were humans. Everybody else were yeah, copies of Yeah, it was like a civilized... Humans. Yeah, know. right. But you know what? That shit worked in his writing because that added to the fucking weird horror of it. Well, You're his xenophobia the really kind of yeah. like informed... You're looking through the eyes of a very xenophobic fucking person. Yeah. And um, I kind of thought it was just part of his writing style to write it that way. No, that's the way he was. But they did say that as he got older, he kind of opened up. He, he chilled out a little bit when he well yeah if you ever read like it, you know racism is threaded through pretty much all his shit like i read some of his stories for my uh witching hour show and like some of it i had to kind of be like yeah i'm not saying that but um so i didn't like cut it out but if you ever read the probably his most infamous one is called the horror at red hook and that was when he moved to new york with his wife and they moved to this one area that was all immigrants and he was uh, not happy about it. No, Italian. And he put it as, and pretty much, he he makes like uh, foreigners like yeah n inhuman. Yeah, and we're not talking about him talking bad about black people. No, he's talking bad about like Italians. Yeah, that's what anybody that wasn't anybody that was from not New an Anglo, like he, and Irish people. Oh my God, those living monkeys. You know, I mean, he was fucking, yeah, it was all that kind of stuff. He was well, like much. I said, he had a cat called uh, N word yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and that was in one of his stories. Too. Somebody of, had a cat named that. Once I kind of fucking got deeper into fucking some of the shit I learned from Jenny and hearing her talk about some of his upbringing, I was able to imagine what was going on. He would live <clears throat> a very sheltered life. We're talking about, we're not talking about Poe. We're talking about Lovecraft. Lovecraft. Lovecraft we did a, a show about Lovecraft. He, yeah, actually. Lovecraft lived a very sheltered life. He was very solitary and shy he yeah would, he was pretty weird he was the kind of guy that would have a hard time getting along with his own family members seeing people that had accents that were of a different ethnic group or even race to him that would have been like seeing somebody from another planet yeah they were like martians and like uh that that was kind of like oh my god i'm not safe around these people 
And then you, that's that's reflected in his writing. Zach said, "I like to think Lovecraft was autistic. I yeah, suspected yeah. much. I think he was. He did have a lot of yeah. um, symptoms of that. Right? Because people, even in Lovecraft's day, were like, dude, you need to chill out.' Yeah. About that. and that's pretty bad. Like back in right. the fucking nineteen twenties, being like, like, can you like chill out on the yeah, races?' They're like, thanks. they're like, <laughs> you know, it's bad. They're just from other places. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? like calm down. Yeah." And and evidently he did he did kind of open up to He people. chilled out later. Like right. well, I mean, his wife was Jewish and then yeah. like, you know, he didn't like New York City because he's like, Oh, it was too many immigrants. But the more he kind of got out in life, I think she helped a lot, kind of opening him up. He was a very sheltered person. He was. Um and, Ed, interestingly, Edgar Allan Poe was not really like that. I, I right. think that he had you know, he comes across always this brooding uh you know solitary genius they said not really um right. they said in his life he was actually raised to be very social very outgoing yeah. he was a funny guy um you know he liked to go out and have parties and he was yeah. you know he would make jokes and shit like that he wasn't like this right. kind of brooding melancholy i said on another show that i actually knew people that were in the <clears throat> clan these are people in my in mississippi that were in my dad's generation and when you actually know who those dudes were they weren't real threatening evil people. They were fearful people. Very well, sheltered. Yeah. They were afraid that they were going to be hurt by outsiders. It's not what people in the media... Yeah, they had violence, clan violence and shit like that. But not the ones I knew. The ones that I knew that were like that were basically very sheltered and fearful people. And they were afraid of, of, of black people hurting them. That's what they were afraid of. Well, I think a lot yeah. of... Um... And they were not really a, a lot of like people that have real hateful views. Yeah. It's not because I mean, they're because they're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid. Yeah. That's all. And they have no experience. Really. Yeah. That's another thing. They have too. No experience. I mean, you know, like, I, I've met people that are like, yeah. you know, they back in the 80s and stuff like that. They, they were like, scared yeah. of gay people and stuff. Like that. Well, they didn't know anybody that was like that. I'm You're like, right. everybody's just regular ass people. No positive experiences with the. People. Yeah. And they're hearing this from other people. You yeah, I mean, they're so, hearing, yeah, because they don't have any personal. They don't have any personal experience with it. They don't have any personal experience. And there, was, there was a black dude that fucking started hanging out with the Klan, in in I think it might have been either Mississippi or, or Alabama, and most of those dudes ended up leaving the Klan, because this black dude was cool to them, and how he got through to them was hot rods. They were like, "You like cars?" And they go, "Yeah." And they got into cars and wow, like wow, you're you a like person. Cars? Yeah, yeah, you like car? You like fucking hot rods? And he just was going to Klan meetings. He ended up, they. what was funny is they made dude an honorary Klan member. He kept showing up. His mission was is to get these dudes not to fear black people. Over half of them left. Because they're like, yeah, this like is, not, said, that's this is not really about Well, he anything. understood the place where it was coming right. from. You can't use hate to diffuse hate. That's not how it's done. I mean, some people are just assholes and you're never going to yeah. get through to them. Yeah, yeah. But so largely, most of them are just people fearful. that have those kind of hateful views. It's yeah. because they're scared. That's yeah. why they're just scared. Yeah. Granther says, "Wasn't The Shining filmed at Timberland Lodge on Mount Hood in Oregon?" Um, the <clears throat> interiors of The Shining were a set that was built by uh, Kubrick's crew. The outside was filmed uh, at a hotel in Colorado somewhere because I saw it. My sister drove me uh, past it when I was visiting her. Um, but I do think that Stephen King was staying at that uh, lodge in Oregon when he got the idea. But they did film, they filmed it, I'm pretty sure, in uh, Colorado. Just not the same. T's Hub, he says, History of Goth would be a cool show. It <clears throat> would very much be a cool show. We could do that. Well, I think, yeah, we'll do that. That's on like, the list, isn't it? Well, we'll we're going to do that. You, you see, he's he wasn't listening. Yeah. We're going to do that the week of my vacation okay. because that's a topic that I don't have to research. Okay. Yeah. So I won't have to spend my whole vacation week, like researching the right. topic yeah, like yeah. for Friday. Cause I'll be back for yeah. like Friday. I should be back like around like noon or one yeah. or something. Cause you got to check out by like 10 or whatever. Um, so, you know, and it only likes, it's only like an hour and a half away. So I'll be back and I'll, and then I can just, you know, so we can do that. Just no one can vote on it, but we'll just do that. Like the, so that'll be June yeah. 11th. We'll do that. Right. Um, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. So where were we? Let's talk a little bit we were about. We're talking about Lovecraft, but I think we wrapped up on Lovecraft. Without well, yeah, without we... Poe, there never would have been a Lovecraft, and Lovecraft was key to a lot of the horror that you people enjoy. 
Zach says, where are you going for your vacation? I'm just going to go to uh, St. Augustine. Yeah. That's good because it's close by. So I don't have to fly. Um, everything I want to see. I've, I've been there before and I really, really like it there. But there's a lot of stuff that I have never got to go to. Um, I like it because everything you want to see pretty much is within walking distance. So I don't have to drive, which is another plus. Yeah. Um, you know, and like I said, I'm, I won't be that far from home. Like in case I'm she's happens. been working for fucking five years in this damn office. She's got to get the hell out of here. I do. Yeah. Yeah. You need, you, <laughs> go find yourself, Jenny. Get the fuck out of here. I'm right here. I I'm got right you. Here. <laughs> right here with these boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just never realized yeah. I went like that. And I was just kind of like, yeah. okay. Now we'll uh, just record some shows to keep people happy for five, six days. Yeah, that, I mean that should be easy to like. I already did like a little calendar, and I yeah. said, okay, well we can do because we have yeah. like a bunch of DVDs and Blu-rays that people have sent us that we haven't got around to reviewing yet. So I'm like, well, why don't we just like record reviews for those, and yeah. then so I'll have something every day to put up. And she's gonna come back energized, so it's gonna be good. And I'll have all kind of like fun. I'll take yeah. pictures and everything like that. Because like yeah. I said, I'm doing all the keep shit on your social media and shit. I already got like playing because I already I reserved yeah. the Airbnb. Yeah. But um, I already kind of, I don't have an itinerary, but I wrote down all the places that I wanted to go. Some places yeah. I've been to before, but a lot of them I haven't been. Yeah. Because I used to go to St. Augustine all the time, but I used to go with other people. And like, so you always have to be like, oh, they don't want to do that. Or they don't want to, you know. Mm. Sometimes it's better to go place by yourself so you can just do what the fuck you want to do instead yeah. of like worrying about what other people want to do. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I have been to the alligator farm before and it's rad. So I definitely want to go back and do that again. Um. But yeah, and I, de- I, I want to go to the Pirate Museum. They have a wax museum there. I've never been there. Take pictures of that shit. Yeah, so I definitely want to go to those. And I might do a ghost tour. I haven't decided yet. Because some of the ghosts, there's a million zillion ghost tours. I went on TripAdvisor, and they were like, oh, things to do in St. Augustine. And they were like, you know, they have all kind of different tours you can do. And that's cool. I might do one of those, like, the trolley kind of things. Because um, you go over and they tell you all the history and shit. And that might be kind of neat. But, um... You look at ghost tours, it's almost like pretty much all of the shit to do in St. Augustine, like half of it is ghost tours, seriously. Everybody does a ghost tour in fucking yeah. St. Augustine. Because <laughs> the place is so fucking haunted, I guess. I mean, you will fill your drink? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, they have the fort and everything. I might not do, I might, I'll probably go around the outside of the fort, Castillo de San Marcos, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I've been to the fort so many times because that's always where we ended up uh when i went there as a kid so i might just kind of walk around the outside and i want to do shit i haven't done before you know what i mean i feel like whenever we went there as a kid it's like oh we're gonna go to the fort and then we're gonna go to the bakery and we get you know bread and whatever and then we just kind of walk around saint george street which is like the main like little shopping street and then that was mostly what we did i think we went to uh the fountain of youth one time which was kind of cool but i don't know if i'd go back again but there's a couple, there's several museums there that I have been wanting to go to that I've never been to. Because, you know, sometimes I go with other people and they're like, I don't want to go to a museum. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tila's hubby said, is that the New Orleans of Florida? Kind of. I think Key West is probably more the New Orleans of Florida. But St. Augustine is a little bit like that too. St. Augustine is kind of like, I mean... You know, probably everybody knows this, but it's the oldest continually op- uh, continually occupied settlement city in the U.S. Uh, and founded by the Spanish back in the 1500s. And it's been there since then. Like, people have lived there since then. So it's very, very Spanish, but there's, like, a lot of pirate shit and a lot of Native American shit. And it's pretty cool. It's not big, but there's a massive uh, Spanish fort there. There's a big, huge lighthouse. There's all kind of cool shit. Like the fort, they even like still do the cannons still work. So they still do the cannons every day at like three o'clock or whatever it is. I don't remember what time it is. Um, but yeah, there's still, you can go and like see all the cannonball. You can see all the prisons and shit like that. It's pretty cool. Also, they have like the the oldest schoolhouse in the U.S., oldest jailhouse in the U.S., all that kind of stuff. It's neat. It's a neat place. And like I said, that's pretty much everything is within walking distance of each other. So it's a really cool, like, easy place to just park. And then you can just walk around all day and be entertained. And there's all kind of, like, little museums. There's all kind of, like, fun shit to do. And like I said, there's an alligator farm. And it's not just alligators. It's pretty much a whole... They have, like, all kind of... They have birds and all kind of different animals. So it's almost kind of like a zoo, really. And I love... I love that kind of shit. <laughs> so... 
I've, I haven't been there. I've been there before, but I haven't been in like a zillion years. So I'm excited to go back and see all the scary alligators and crocodiles and all the owls. They have all kind of like cool reptiles, like all the snakes and turtles and stuff. And so I'm kind of excited about that. I'm kind of excited about that. Isn't Robert the doll there? Robert the doll, I think, is in... I want to say Robert the doll is in Key West, which is South Florida. So maybe... Isn't Robert the doll in Key West? The, sca what? the scary doll that's supposed to be... We did a show about oh, it I don't not know. long ago. I don't know. It's been I'm pretty time. sure that's Key West. I don't think that's St. Augustine. But, uh, yeah. But St. Augustine, they have a Ripley's Museum. And, like I said, all kind of pirate shit. So, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. I got a whole itinerary. I got, like, I wrote down all these restaurants I wanted to go to. <laughs> shit like that. So, you know what I mean. All right. So let's talk about Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to talk about Edgar Allan Poe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I designed a whole game about Edgar Allan Poe. Actually, you should probably get it. Where is it? It is... Oh, it's back there. It's right there on top of all those magazines. This big box right here, right? That box right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an Edgar Allan Poe game that I did. Because I am like... He's easily one of my literary heroes. I wrote a novel too called red menace see that's a game that i did it's, so this is basically an edgar Allan poe trivia game jenny made that i made it yeah and it's you just you well it's it's based on mask of the red death kind of so you just basically see there's prince prospero's mansion is the board there and then you have to ooh, you have to um answer edgar Allan poe trivia questions to get out of the mansion <laughs> That's how you do it. What are you laughing at? You got to answer Edgar Allan Poe trivia questions to get out of that match. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you don't know shit, you don't get out. You don't get out, right? You die. That's what happens. You got to be dumb. a Poe fan to understand this. Well, yeah, you. that's yeah. what that. Well, that's what I, you know, because yeah. I've made it that kind of shit. Yeah. So it's like that's why I like made that. I don't care if other people. Captain's like that. very impressive, Jenny. Wow, handsome design. The fucking team. Thank you. Yeah, no, fucking look, look, dudes. She's a real thing. She can make that kind of shit. She's a real thing. It's one of my, you know what? Yeah. I was thinking about this. I don't know. Like yeah, yeah. It, it changes from day to day, but sometimes I think to myself, if I could only do one thing, like if I wasn't allowed to do the podcast and I wasn't allowed, I don't know who would not allow me, but I'm just saying like, if I could only do one thing, it would probably be designing board games because designing board games, it incorporates storytelling and writing and also graphic design. And it's all kind of like one it's like a whole thing that you can make. You just make this entire, yeah. and I love that. It's not just empty boobs. <laughs> <laughs> very competent. Very competent. Uh, gee, yeah. thank you. Very Am competent. I really? Remember when I was talking about empty I boobs? Love how, I love how he always like kind of. Empty boobs? He's, he sounds like he's being complimentary, but he's also kind of like minimizing <laughs> no, you at the same I'm time. I'm fucking with her. I'm fucking with her. It's like, I'm fucking with her. <laughs> like, gee, thanks. <thing. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm making actually the game crafter who I make my games with. They're having a contest. Did I talk about this? I told you about this, but I don't think mm -hmm. I said it on the show. They're having a contest where um, they want you to design a game that fits into their small stout box, which is yeah, you're not, but it's only like that big. We were talking about that shit. And yeah. it has to be, it has to be under thirty five dollars, but they um would rather it be under twenty five dollars, which is really hard to do because the box itself is like seven dollars. So um, and you have to have the box, and you have to have a booklet that's a particular size. Other than that, you can put anything you want, and you can have any kind of game you want. But it has to be under a certain price point and it has to fit all fit into that one box. Yeah. So I've been working on one. It's almost done, actually. It's I actually did. I'm actually going to do a slightly a variation of a game that I did before, which is like an art theft game called Boosting Botticelli. But I'm doing one. I think it's going to I think I'm going to call it Raid the Renaissance. But it's going to be like a similar mechanism, but different. Like it's going to be simplified because that one's kind of like complicated because it has like auction kind of stuff. And I don't want to do all that because you have to have extra shit in the box. Tila's hubby said, what would you do without Tom's validation? I know, right? It's like, <laughs> most of the time I just like roll my eyes like, thanks, hon. <laughs> it's all fun and game. It's all fun and game. Camp Guy says, I like chess. I did too, actually. My grandpa taught me when I was a kid. 
I wasn't great at it, but I was okay at it. I wasn't like one of those. Yeah. Tom, uh, how does one score such a catch as Jenny? Uh, you, you have to be fucking hot. You have to know how to dance. Oh, this is, this is, this is Jenny, this is Jenny. You have to have a fucking cool wardrobe. You gotta have a fucking. It, 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 you gotta have a fucking cool background in history. You gotta be funny. Yeah, funny uh, is good. Yeah, you gotta have big dick. You have to have. Well, fucking, I don't, you don't have to. You don't have to have big dick, but it helps. I mean, <laughs> it helps. <laughs> um. You have to have a bunch of other women that are interested in you. If a woman sees no, you, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it not. does. It does. Good. Don't listen to her. If fucking don't listen to me. I don't, I don't know. To her. I don't know anything. I'm just a girl. Yeah. <laughs> if women aren't interested in you, it's like a fucking endless cycle of that they won't be interested in you. If a woman sees other women like you, then that, then all then the women will like you. So you have to have female friends. Well, that might you just be because, well, if other women are hanging right. out with you, right. then you're obviously then you're not all right. a predator. Right. Right. You, That's and, all that right. is. <laughs> and, you, and, and when you have female friends, there, there's a bunch of rules with that. First of all, you have to really like the girls. You can't be pretending that you like them. Yeah, that sucks. Okay. And we can see through it. They see right through that. Okay. <laughs> you can't be hanging out with girls... Because you're trying to fucking get some ass off of them. That's not that's not how the shit goes. All right, they see through that too. Um, you have to be just kind of genuine with with women. You have to understand that women are people, and well, you have just to hang out with them like you'd people. hang out with like a, just, a regular person. Yeah, it's just a regular right, person. Right, right. So that's really the acid test. Really, is if you, is if you're friends with women. But then there's another thing. You can't be a kiss ass. You have to be who you are. Women can see through it if you're kissing ass on some girl because you're trying to get up in the fucking skirt. All right. That's a sign of a predator. If a woman, if some of these girls fucking treat you bad or or, or they say something sideways, you got you you can't stand for that either. You can't be a pushover. You, it, women are just people. You yeah. Know what I mean? They're just people. If you can't hold your own against them, then, you know what I mean? Like They got some dudes that'll simp the fuck. You know what I mean? They want it so bad, they'll put up with anything. Women see through that shit. You well, know. it's kind of like you don't want somebody... It, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Yeah. You don't want somebody that treats you like shit, but, but you don't want somebody that puts you on a pedestal either. And you don't want a person that will put up with bullshit. You, you have to have self-respect. There's a lot of dudes that are fucking simping. They're simps. You know, women don't like simps. And then just be a normal fucking yeah, person. Yeah, be a normal fucking person. And he, and 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 then there's a lot of weird shit going on. I had some, I, I I mentioned this before on another show, and Jenny was got like, yeah, whatever. But I noticed in the comment section, the dudes are like, yeah, yeah, that's right. He's absolutely right. A lot of women out there nowadays are feminist. There's no problem with that if it's true feminism. Okay. They got men who are fucking predators or boys who are predators. Who try to be male feminists, not because they believe in that shit, it's because they're trying to get the pussy. They see right through that shit. They don't respect that. All right. A lot of these feminist women go out with dudes that fucking ride motorcycles and fucking, uh, what, what was the word, Tim that said? That? They ride motorcycles and have eye patches and fucking drink and spit. <laughs> they ten, women Please are, don't spit. That's they, so they, yeah, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> women have a tendency to fucking be attracted to things that are kind of the opposite of them in a weird way. Not totally opposite, but yeah, women, I don't women, know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say totally opposite. I I don't like. I, I don't. They don't like, like kiss asses. I don't like anybody yeah. that one is trying to get something like very right. obviously trying to get trying something to get something out, out of, of you, right? Um, you know, nobody likes that. No, women, men, nobody likes that. Yeah. Um, and I, I just like people that are just they're that they're not pretending to be anything that they're not for a specific purpose. Yeah. And like I right. said, that seems like it's universal across sexes. It's yeah. like pretty much. Yeah. Just be. A norm, just be normal. Just be I, like a normal person. I said some shit on another show. Fucking, I was saying whenever I hear some dude fucking spout, I get I laugh because I got so many people on my fucking friend Facebook. I look in my my data my my fucking stream my data stream and fucking Facebook, and it's like looking into the mouth of hell for me. 
all these fucking comments because I know who these people are for years. Same fucking club. And you have dudes fucking going on about women's rights and this and that. And I go, dude, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, you're a fucking rapist. Okay. Everybody fucking knows who you are. Shut the fuck up. You know. Well, yeah, if everybody knows you're I, a rapist, you're then a fucking probably rapist, you should just right? keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and every time I see these dudes with these fucking platitudes, men need to respect and win. And dude, you're a fucking it's like rapist. You don't. <laughs> fucking, you know. Don't believe what people say. I mean, I don't mind if people say that if they're cool people. But, if I know them and they're cool people and I know that they actually believe that. Yeah, but most, but, of, most of the time a person who's actually a cool person that's saying that, in my experience, is it's a woman that's saying that. When you got dudes that are saying that, red flags start going up. Because Jenny's seen it through the eyes of a woman. These dudes will say that shit. And fucking other dudes that I know start commenting behind the dude's back. Like, yeah, remember that time he did this? Remember the time he said this? Oh, you know what fucking what's-her-name said about that, motherfucker? Shut your fucking mouth. You're a rapist. Okay? You're a fucking creep. Yeah. All right. And there's a bunch of you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, yeah. It's and a creep that's fucking doing that. And Serpent Surfer makes the point, too. It's yeah. because you just know they're hiding something. Yes. It's like people that are hardcore anti-gay are usually gay. They're gay. Themselves. Or are worried yes. about... Yeah. Or maybe exactly. had a gay feeling exactly. one time, and then they're they like all par feelings. fucking paranoid. Exactly. It's exactly and they can't right. just fucking deal with it like a normal person. Exactly. Exactly. It It, it is kind of yeah. like, yeah. you know, it, it's kind the, of one of those things. The biggest gay bashers in the world are fucking gays. Yeah. You know? Or, that, or like I said, even they're if gay. they're not straight gay, they, they have thought about it before, so they're, they're kind of like, thinking about oh, it because they're gay. Yeah. They're like in American of, Beauty. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're thinking about it because they're gay. I mean, that's pretty, it's, I mean, that's right. a, that's a cliche for a reason. Yeah. I do kind of feel like, well, it's just kind of like, I remember back in the eighties, remember like when all those yeah. fucking preachers came out and they were just like anti-porn and this and that and the other. And I was like, you got a big, the world's biggest porn yeah. stash. Shut the fuck up. Why is yeah. like, why do you care about it so much? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, there's a reason why you care so much that you're like out on TV, like just railing about this, that and the yeah. other every day. Yeah. They got gay fever. So yeah. serving the right. Brittany's going in about secure men and secure women and how they yeah exactly. And then just be cool, in, oh, like wrong. I said, right, right. just be cool. The more a motherfucker grandstands about women's rights, the more suspect that motherfucker is. Okay, you don't see me doing that. You know what I mean? It's it's dudes that have done some shit. It's just like if you understand the church scene. The woman that's standing up, screaming about sin and pointing her finger about you sinful motherfuckers is the one that's blowing the preacher. Yeah. Behind her husband's back. Yeah. It's called projection. Well, because like I said, they you wouldn't worry project. about it otherwise. They're worried about it because she's blowing the preacher. Yeah. Okay. And people have this weird and she's thing. Afraid her husband's gonna find out. Yeah, people have this weird thing where they right. think by overcompensating that no one's right. gonna notice. That's not how it goes when you gotta that... fucking you, no no no. Yes. Well, because like I said, yes. most normal people right. don't worry about what other people are doing. A perceptive evil motherfucker like myself, fucking as soon as you stand up and start signaling, I'm going, I know what you are. I know what you are. And I do, that was back in the fucking church days. Thank you, David. Church just, will, just be cool, not a creep. Exactly. Church will Life teach Life advice. You. Church will teach you. <laughs> Church will show you all about Well, yeah, it. it's just like hypocritical. They're hypocrite motherfuckers. Well, the thing about it, look, everybody, and obviously yeah. there's a spectrum here because some yeah. people are just like fucking sociopaths. Mm -hmm. You know, they're serial killers and stuff. But most people in the middle, the majority of people are fine. Most people yeah. just, they wouldn't do anything bad or anything like that. So I do kind of feel like, but on the other hand, like everybody fucks up. Everybody. Yeah. Um, Everybody's done bad things, uh, you know, to a greater or lesser extent. And I feel like, you know, should you feel guilt or shame for those things, depending on what it was? Yeah, you probably should feel a little bit, but don't feel so much guilt and shame that you feel the need to stand up and call attention to yourself yeah. by saying that other people who do that exactly. same exact Art thing sinful motherfuckers. are yeah. the worst yeah, because yeah. you have also done it. Right. So chill out. Well, that's because in my personal experience, the first one that stands up and starts doing that is that's it. That's it. And That's to be it, honest, I don't know. I never understood. Like I said, to an extent, if you're doing something really bad, yes, people should yeah. absolutely call you out on that shit. Yeah. But up to a point, everybody does kind of bad shit. And I, I feel like I don't really think that I have the authority to 
tell other people what they should do well, in the sense well, when they're doing something that is not affecting me. That's because you're not. I mean, if it's affecting me, then yeah, I'm going to say something about it. But if it's not affecting me, I don't care. What that's you because you're not in the cathedral. Yeah. There are many people that are in the cathedral or want to be in the cathedral. Okay. Or have told other people that they're in the cathedral, so they must cast blame. And it goes back to religion, and now it's social media. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Stop signaling. I mean, an intelligent person can see right through it. You know? Well, like I said, there, you know, dumb. there's a line. Yeah. Like, when you were talking about, you know, people in, you know, that we uh, know or that we yeah. know of that are sexual predators say. Yeah. Um, I do think that it's good to call those people out just so people know what kind of person they're dealing with, yeah. okay? So I think that's a public service, okay? But if people are doing shit that doesn't affect anyone else, then... No. Right. Leave them alone. No. Does it affect you? No. No, if you're going to be a fucking perv, be a fucking perv. Just shut the fuck up. As long as everybody is up. consenting... Everybody knows you're a perv. It's just ridiculous when everybody knows you're a fucking pervert and you're standing up calling other people perverts, basically. Like I said. You know I mean? It's fucking ridiculous. Everyone's a pervert. In, so, in, social in media has ways. figured all you bitches out. As long out. as everyone consents, I don't have a problem with any kind of perversion. You can do whatever you want. I don't care. As long as it's adults. That's what I mean. As long as it's adults, consenting adults and everybody's fucking care. going along with it, that's fine. It's just, you know. Either tell me about it or don't. But, right. I, I mean, depending on what it is, like I yeah. said. Some stuff I'd be like, oh, I want to hear about that. But some stuff I'd be like, I'd rather not hear about that. <laughs> I'm going to take another drink here in a minute. All right. We fucking got sidetracked on fucking Po. Imagine how long, that. How long we've been fucking streaming this? Two week? hours and fifty-one minutes. It's still, it's still, it's okay. Yeah, we've had shows okay. go five hours. Well, yes, we our got, side tracks went five and, hours, and and, and, and our last show yeah. and our last Friday show also went five hours. It's a variety show. Some of y'all are fucking working. We're trying to get you through time. Uh, and fucking everybody in the comment section is having a good time. Let me go get a fucking uh, a refill on this drink. Okay. And then I'll be back in a second. Go ahead, Jenny. Go talk about both. Camp guy said, we used to have an old microbiologist that pinched the girl's fannies at the hospital I worked at. Oh, my God. If I worked with some dude that, like, pinched my ass, oh, he would, like, get punched in the throat. Seriously, I don't care if I get fired or not. I, I would have put up with that when I was younger because I was just kind of like, oh, I need this job and stuff. Nowadays, now. I mean, the last job I had, like, the boss that I had was such a fucking chode. And finally, he like had some fucking ten temper tantrum one day. He just he owned this shop or managed the shop because his parents were wealthy and they had a larger company and they bought it for him to manage. And he was a complete and total fuck up. He would like leave in the middle of the day. He's like, hey, I'm going to the bar. Bye. Blah. He would like steal money out of the fucking register and nobody did anything. And it's like he had some fucking screaming ass tantrum one day yelling at the poor little old lady that worked the front desk. And I was just kind of like, I just got up in his face. I'm like, you are a fucking douchebag. <laughs> he didn't fire me or nothing. I mean, the sh shop's closed now. Well, I mean, I'm gonna obviously. Come to bus. I'm, I'm going to come to, uh, I don't know when this happened. I'm going to come to microbiologist's defense. Fucking in old school times. Nobody liked it back then either. In old school We didn't times, like it, but it I guess just, our, our feelings don't it, matter. I we're talking it. about fucking even pre-baby boomer. Uh, pissing somebody on the ass was a term of endearment. It was supposed to. It was not for me. It ain't. <laughs> it was another generation. It was another generation. Probably not for them. It wasn't either. But you weren't really allowed to say anything. That's what I mean. It's well, like you no, weren't there. Nobody really asked it. Nobody asked it. But that's the thing. Nobody really asked their opinion if they liked it or not. I'm just telling you the way it was. I know the way it was. Yeah. I'm the same age as you. It was before our you time. Always, well, I know, but you before. always act like you know, like you were there and no, I wasn't. No. I remember that old people were like that. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. old people do. Old people were like that. I know. It's still I not, don't think they, it it's still not cool, though. I don't think it was sexual, though. Of course it was. It was, it was just. Of course it was. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to understand. It was just. It was just like something you got to watch did. fucking old dudes do. It was just something that old they did. Old dudes are creepy. Old dudes were creepy back then. They well, could women get a, did it too. They could get away with a lot of stuff back then, but, but, but the they thing, would not be allowed to get away with it. But nowadays. women did it too. Women. I never it. had a woman punch, yeah. punch me on the butt. Well, never. that's because you're not a man. Well, I, I know that, woman, but I'm I had all women didn't shit do that to me. Like they'd pinch your cheeks and stuff. Like, look yeah. how cute you are. No, they did your butt too. 
I, I remember well, it. I don't know. Okay, I never saw that. I remember it. Yeah. It. Well, you weren't because I'm a girl. So you weren't a know. cute guy. But no, I had old women do that. They're like, "Hey, look at me! It's so cute!" You know, and they fucking pinch your button. You know, it was it, they they that particular thing. And it's not like they were grabbing ass. That would be weird. It was not like they were grabbing. <laughs> ass. It was just something that they that they kind of. It was one of their little mannerisms. You know, it was just it was like a little cute thing, kind of like doing somebody's dimple or something. But they did that. Well, I mean, if you were little and they were just old ladies, that's not that weird. Well, is what, 15, 16 little? Okay, now that's weird. Okay. That's weird. Well, you're reading into it. You know no, I'm not. That's weird. If you old were a lady, got to get some dick, too. Well, get it, okay. from, get it from someone it that's was age appropriate. It was, just, it was just the way they were. <laughs> old you know? ladies. You know, I was not a fragile 15 or 16-year-old. You know, I just, I just laughed. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't feel like I was being raped or anything. Well, no, no just, one said that. I'm just saying it's, it just, it's weird. You know, it's weird. Yeah. I'm just saying it's weird. I would I, I, like I'm if not, I was an old lady. I'm not going around like touching 15 year old boys' butts. That's super weird. You'd never make it in Brazil. Well, I don't live in Brazil, yeah. so that's fine. Just, but I'm just saying it's like I. That's just something I wouldn't do because yeah. it's weird. You're you're projecting. You're projecting a modern sensibilities on people that were not sensible and they weren't modern either. He argues with every single thing I say. I do because it's it it's because I'm always wrong. It's uptight. It's it's. Church, I'm not uptight. It's church lady like. I'm just saying they it's didn't weird. mean anything. They didn't mean anything bad about it. It wasn't it wasn't bad. They were. Camp they, guy said I had a man ask me to go back into the showers once when I was a kid at a motel pool. Yeah. I've heard a lot of that. Like uh, that's a pretty common. Yeah. There's a that's what I mean. It's like I feel like people think oh it's just like creeps nowadays. No, there's always been creeps. It was always yeah. It was always fucking creeps. I just, I just feel like people didn't weren't as aware of it back then you know what i'm saying it's like some old guy would be like hey come back to i have some something i want to show you back here in the like little pool little boy you know what i mean like nowadays it'd be like run away screaming but back then people were like what i don't get it weirdest creepiest thing i ever saw was in detroit right outside of detroit it was a ham tramic was driving fucking stopped off at a fucking mcdonald's sitting down fucking eating a fucking mcdonald meal at fucking three o'clock in the morning coming out coming off of a fucking shift as spring engineering fucking making car door parts. This is before I went into the army. And a dude walked in to fucking McDonald's. Next door to that McDonald's was a hotel. He walked in from that hotel in his underwear fucking beaten off and the girls started fucking screaming. Well, yeah. No and one wants to see that. And then fucking dude Look, jumped. I'm just trying to eat some nugs. Yeah. Okay, just fuck it was off like with two, that. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. Maybe not that late. Maybe I meant on about 11. I don't know what time they closed, but it was late. The manager jumped over there and grabbed him. Come on, man. Come on, man. And fucking turned him around and walked him out the door and fucking sent him towards the hotel. And I was like, what the fuck was that? And he goes, his family abandoned him and they fucking keep him at that hotel. He's crazy. They just pay a monthly Obviously. fee to keep him over there. Do you, know, do you know, pretty much every woman I know, including me, has a story about riding on public transportation yeah. and having some dude next to you jerking off. Yeah. It's very, very common. Yeah. Wow. I don't get it, but they, and they'll they look right look. at you. They look right at you while they, they want do you it. look at it. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Nobody wants to you see gotta that. Gotta get shit. up and leave. Yeah, you do. And punch them on your way fucking out. Teach them not to do that anymore. <laughs> really? really trip his ass out spit in your hand reached over there and fucking help him out. Not touching that you don't know where it's been <laughs> why would i touch some fucking stranger's ass fucking and they're usually like stinky homeless stinky guys homeless motherfuckers. <laughs> <Funny. laughs> why well, like oh i'm supposed to like just touch random <laughs> dude's dick just because <laughs> you fucking funny i'll pour some fucking acid on it is what i'll do <laughs> i'll be doing that yeah dick punch that's what britney says exactly just Yo, pow Y'all are a bunch of church ladies. What? That's not church lady. It's a, that's dudes like imposing their shit on you. You're just trying to like have a regular day. And all of a sudden he's like, hey, here's my day. Look at it. No, thanks. No, thanks. I'd rather not. It's just kind of like those dudes that like send you fucking dick pics and on Facebook and Instagram and shit. It's like, no one asked for that shit. Did I ask you to send me a dick pic? No. Yeah. Quit doing shit I didn't ask for and knock it off. No one wants to look at your stupid ass dick. It's ugly. <laughs> I don't know you. He doesn't know you think it's ugly, though. Look, man, get back to fucking Poe. Oh, yeah. Get back to fucking Poe. You're going to keep me going down this fucking direction. 
fucking all night and shit about fucking yeah Brittany says shit. church ladies because we don't want to see peen exactly <laughs> Well, see, dudes like Tom think they can just like strut around the earth, <laughs> waving their penis at whoever, wait a minute, wait a minute. and then minute. and we're just supposed to be okay with it. You're we're supposed to be okay me? with it. Wait a minute, you're equating me with the dude. Well, you're that trying to justify up. it. No, I didn't try to justify it. <laughs> and you're telling me to beat the dude off, some rando on the bus. That's what to, you said, I right? I didn't try to justify it. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, That's you true. did. No, I'm just joking yeah, about did. it. I'm just joking at it. I'm just saying. It's fucking funny. <laughs> I just, I don't know where their head's at. They must be mentally ill. Nobody <laughs> wants to see that shit. Well, to us. Like, I dude, I'm like, nobody wants to see your dick. Dicks are ugly. The only reason we like dicks is because we like the person it's attached to. We don't like the yeah, dick know, itself. I'm, it's I'm, ugly. I'm, but I guess, like, dudes think that, oh, well, boobs are pretty and they don't care about the person that's attached to them. So they just like looking at boobs and they don't care about the person. So. They assume that women also want to see like a disembodied dick, <laughs> and we don't like even know the person it's attached to. And I'm just be like, "Ooh, yay!" That's that's not how that works. I'm sorry to like inform you. No one wants to see your dick, seriously. Unless I, I, unless unless they're going unless they're going out with you and they like you as a person, they don't want to yeah. see your dick randomly. Okay. Because every now and then, you get it every now and then. Even now, I'm old, but it's like every now and then you open your fucking Facebook message or your Instagram and you're like, oh, all righty, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Hey, That's dude. your fans. <laughs> I've not one in a while, but I used to get them a couple times a week. Weren't they coming from India, though, most of them? <laughs> um, sometimes, but <laughs> sometimes not. Sometimes not. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's yeah, nice. camp guy said my wife's been says she's been flashed once or twice. I think probably yeah. pretty much every woman has at some point. Have you been out to men? It doesn't it doesn't fucking really matter because nobody ever flashes us and fucking we. Well, go, yeah, I wonder why that we, could we be. come to these fucking we, can, we fucking I love it to have some fucking chick flash her. Well, see, every happen. dude says that, it but happen. it's just kind of like well, to us, it's not <laughs> it's then, not sexy. It's threatening. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I, it's I can threatening. I can understand it, and then like. Uh, and the, it's, it's somebody imposing it's... their will on you and you don't know them. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, so it's really not the same. Yeah. We're just kind of used to fucking seeing other nude men. I guess it depends on how you grow up, but you're like in the army or you're in the fucking gym. You see naked motherfuckers all the time. It doesn't really matter. I don't give a shit. It doesn't, it doesn't have any, there's no reaction. You know. Well, like I said, the reason that dudes, Some dudes do don't it, grow up like me, well, you know. the reason that dudes do it to women is to it's like sexual intimidate event. them. It's sexual aggression. Yeah. Um, and well, I can't put myself in their position. I don't have that fucking and, mentality. I mean, and like it, I said, if I'm just on the bus going to work or something, I don't need some like dude fucking fogging on it's me. It's probably like something more like exhibitionism where they think that you like it. You know, look at this bitch. You know, that's probably what they're thinking in their mind. You love that. Wow, that, that looks projected. like a that looks like a dick, but smaller. Yeah, that'd be a great fucking answer. That'd be wow, it looks like a dick, but it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. Wait, that'd is be, that a dick? Good. That'd be funny. Could be a Vienna sausage, <laughs> but I don't even think it's big enough for that. All right. What is that? <laughs> I don't like dudes. Just don't. They don't understand. They really don't. No, they understand. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, I know that, but I'm just saying, like dudes that do that kind of shit. It's just they, they the dudes that do it are fucking dumb. I just would think I would just laugh. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker! Put that shit back in your pants. <laughs> you know, it would be but, the best if, like, some dude I guess did if, that. I guess if he's much bigger than you, though, you know, what I mean, you that's can't what I mean. Really it, well, that, him, so. well, that's the thing. It's kind of like you're not coming at it from the same. Like most no, women, no, generally, no. women are yeah. smaller, and yes. we don't have. Sometimes you know, really see that that we way. can't like beat a dude up. Sometimes right. they're like bigger, so it's like, and sometimes they're sitting on the outside of the bus seat, and you can't get out, and they're not going to let you out. Yeah. So then you're kind of like, well, shit. Now what is it? now? If I get off the bus, is he gonna follow me? Like, what's he gonna? So you have like all these concerns that another man would. Tila jumped down and says, "Pardon me, is that a clit? That's a good one, fucking Tila. Yeah, that is That's a good, a good one, one Tila. Yeah, you know what would be good too? Like it's like if some dude did that. If you just like barfed in his lap. Yeah. <laughs> that would also be good. But yeah. uh, yeah. So can we talk about Edgar Allan Poe now? Go ahead. I mean, you're the one that's talking about dicks. See, well, but then what are you always playing on me for? No, I'm just sitting here laughing at what you're talking Brittany about. Brittany says, need to hit him in their exposed Vienna sausage. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, you just like snip it off. There you go. We won't be needing that anymore. I'm going to take it yeah. with me. We picked you up can throw more, it out we, the bus window. We picked up more in the stream, though. You talking about dicks has attracted them all. <laughs> 
Send your dick pics to 13... No, no, no. Oh my god, now someone's they gonna go do get... it. Man, fuck off. <laughs> They'll all be from India. <laughs> Please don't. I don't need a I don't need a <laughs> dick <laughs> parade. No, put them bitches on the show and fucking critique it. Like I said, time. dicks are not they're not like attractive organs generally. So they're not aesthetically pleasing. We're gonna ask Zach. Where's where are you, Zach? Nobody needs it. Like other parts of dudes are aesthetically pr- pleasing, yeah. but dicks are just kind of they just kind of hang the, like an extra appendage. Like it was just like slapped on there. So it's like not. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like spoken like a true heterosexual woman. Well, We're gonna ask Zach. We're gonna see what Zach says. Like I said, you this. like them if they're attached to somebody that you like. I see. Okay. But if it's just like some strangers, it's like I don't want to okay. fucking see that. Put right. Fuck away. You don't know. Right. 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 I don't need to see that. <laughs> Jerking off on the bus next to me. I'll puke in your lap, motherfucker. Okay. Or, <laughs> or punch it or whatever. Offer to finish him with tweezers. Yeah. Who said that? T say this yet? Dermot said that. <laughs> What's got two thumbs and likes to bang his cousin? Your man, Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, he did uh, He did marry his cousin, and she was uh, not quite 13. That wasn't time. that unusual in his time. Yeah, though. well, I knew that you were going to say that. Right. However, on the marriage certificate, which yeah. still survives to this day, they lied and said she was 21. So really. obviously... Somebody was upset about somebody it. Somebody had some problems with it, and you had to be 21 before you could enter into a marriage contract. So... Really? Where? They lied in about Boston? her age. In, in Boston, maybe. Um, I don't know if it was Boston or when did they get, where did they get married? I don't know. I'll get to that in my notes. Okay. But I, I did see like the, the thing. I think it's in the, uh, used the to be, Museum. Used to be, even in their, even in the fucking middle part of the 20th century, Germans uh, had a, a propensity to marry cousins. That was considered to be. I mean, it's like, not that weird. Yeah. I mean, first cousins, that's a little close. Sure. Um, but they but would... second cousins, I don't know. Well, that's really... not really related to That's you. what I mean. They're not really even but, related to But you. Um, Germans had a propensity to marry first cousins up you know, up until recently. Um, I, you know, after World War II, no. But before they were doing it. And uh, also marrying young was not a problem. It wasn't even considered to be too sideways. But we're talking more about like 16, 17. Yeah, she was... Not yeah. quite thirteen. She was actually twelve. Oh uh, yeah, that's pretty fucking young. Yeah. Even in those days, how old was he? Twenty six, I think, when they got married. Yeah. Something like that. Granther's hammer. Going back to what we said, as a father of a daughter, I would like to show any rando dick displayer my nine millimeter. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how yeah. I feel about it. There's yeah. a lot of that in big cities, though. Well, yeah, like I said, I mean, everybody it... I know, and it, I didn't even grow up in a big city, but yeah. you'd get. You're on the bus yeah. and you put your purse there, but it's like the bus would fill up and then like the creepy dude yeah. and you'd be like, oh, fuck me. And then like he'd sit there and then you'd be like, try to pay, not pay attention. And then you look over and he's like, oh, he's jerking it anyhow. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> even on the red line God in Boston. Damn it. Even in the red line, which is like the good part of the fucking subway of Boston, that was going on. I'd hear goth chicks from fucking Man Ray complaining about it every now and then. I mean, it's very it widespread. Was, it, it, but, it is. But it was always homeless dudes out coming out of shelters or fucking guys on the very margins of society um it, the, you know of course this isn't normal dudes doing this you know this fucking scum yeah but it's still not something you people have that to, are mental it's not really something you want to have to deal with on a daily basis you then, know what i mean yeah then you don't want to live in a big city yeah, Brittany says women need to try and sit next to each other other women on buses to avoid that yeah that's what i usually yeah. had to try to do or I would just like stack all my shit. Or it wasn't something. buses. It was happening in the subway. In well, same kind of it's public transportation. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Well, that's why they invented cars. Is to get your ass out of that public transportation. Well, I know. But for a long time, I couldn't <laughs> afford a car. Yeah, right. Okay, because we're but, all not yeah. you. So that's I had, I had to out. ride a bus for a long time and that's, it sucked. Yeah. And I didn't even grow up in like a big city. But the same people that you're going to see in that public transportation in the United States, this is maybe the people in Europe, are the same people you're going to meet in jail. Well, the these people. are people <laughs> that, that can't drive for whatever reason. Right. Either they've had a DUI, right, or they have some kind of disability. Um, you know, right. we had like we had normal people or too. They just have no income, or you know, yeah. it was poor people. Like a lot of um, when I rode the bus, a lot it was probably like half um, women that were just going to their jobs. Like they worked as they you know were uh, yeah. hotel maids and things like that. So they were just like poor and they couldn't afford a car. 
Um, you had people with Down syndrome from yeah. the, um, we had like a Down syndrome like center and uh, they would go to their jobs or they'd go to the mall or whatever. So we had that and you had people with DUIs that had had their license taken away. Mm. Uh, you had that and you had homeless people. Yeah. And also you had this one dude whose name was Jerry. Yeah. And he, I don't know, I don't think he was homeless, but I'm not sure what his deal was, but his entire head, he made a, like a turban for himself out of towels, sheets, something. So he had like this big, huge towel thing like that. And then like all around his waist and everything he had made kind of like, it wasn't a skirt, but it was kind of like a belt and it was made out of, you know, those plastic visors, you know what I mean? Like that you put on like sun visors. He had like a shit ton of those and he had like a skirty type type of thing, like a belt type of thing, like made out of that. Um, and he would ride the bus every day. He was normal. Like he didn't jerk off in front of anybody, but like other than how he looked, obviously, which was not normal, but he didn't act weird, which was one of the weirdest things about him. Because you would think that somebody that had like a towel turban and a, and a skirt made out of like plastic sun visors would be a lunatic, but he acted like pretty normal. Yeah. Which was very, very strange. To I'm going to have grafters in the comment section. I went to school with 26 year veteran fucking police department up there in Michigan. Back me up on this. Same demographic that rides public transportation is basically the same demographic that, that goes through central processing, central lockup at jail. It's the same. Oh, and we did get some people it's the that same were people. jail. We were getting some people that yeah. were going to visit people in jail. Yeah, shit. Because the the bus that I rode also went to Deland, which is where the county jail right. was. This ain't Europe. So okay. you get like the you'd get like the yeah. moms of yeah. people that were in jail, right. and they were going for their weekly. Visit this ain't there. Europe. Okay, this is America. Public transportation. Well, Florida, jail. Florida okay. in particular, jail. Florida, the way that the cities are laid out. Yeah. Um, you really, really need a car. Yeah. Because it's not it's not like there's a contained downtown area where everybody lives and it's shops and it's easy to get mm -hmm. around. Uh it's really not. It's it's all sprawled out all over. Everything's 20, 30 fucking miles apart. So you kind of need a car. But for a long time I was like broke dick and I didn't have one. Uh, so I had to ride the bus and it really, really sucked. Yeah. Because it took like an hour to get anywhere. It was never exactly where you needed to go, so you had to like get off and like walk half a mile. You know what I mean? It was kind of a pain. Public so public transport in Florida is not good. No, we do have SunRail, which is good, but that's um, better than jail. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just kind of probably a little bit better, but yeah, still that well, SunRail is that seems like it's just mostly uh, business people. Yeah. They don't get a ton of people riding it. That that's our like a like little train, but that goes like from here. There's a Sunrail station, probably like a mile or two from here, and then it, that goes to downtown, like right by downtown, by the like right around the corner from I Bar. There's a stop there. Okay, so what's next on? Um, We're talking oh. about Edgar Allan Poe still. Yeah. We're gonna go a little bit into his history, and then I want to go into the mysterious way that he died. So, but yeah. but I want to talk about his life a little bit. All right. Before we talk about. Go ahead. The mystery shit about how he died. Okay. So, all right. Born 1809. He was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, as I said, probably uh, nowadays most famous for his horror stories, also for being essentially the creator of the detective story, which murders in the Rue Morgue from 1841. Probably the world's first detective story. So, you know, there's that. Uh, the Raven being one of the most recognized poems at least in american literature and probably in european literature as well because he was actually very well known in europe particularly in france uh so his parents were elizabeth arnold poe who was an actress and david poe jr who was an actor they were both from baltimore now his mom died in richmond virginia of consumption nowadays known as tuberculosis now tuberculosis would be kind of a big thing in Edgar Allan Poe's life because several of his loved ones ended up dying of it back then. And I think, I suspect, that his story, particularly Mask of the Red Death, um, was about that. You know what I'm saying? I think the Red Death was tuberculosis because he experienced 
so many of his loved ones dying of that. You coughing up in those damn coughing up rags the blood. And the blood and your yep. red death. Yeah. Yep. So I definitely do think that. So he lost his mom quite early. Uh, so then he was adopted. Well, he wasn't legally adopted, but he was taken in by uh, a dude, John Allen and his wife. Uh, they were, I guess his godparents, or they were like friends of uh, his mom. Now, Elizabeth Poe, interestingly, his biological mother, was an actress and she was actually quite, I don't know if I'd say famous, but she was kind of like well known. And she was actually really uh, well regarded. Like everybody that knew her was like, she was the most lovely person and she was just this awesome person. So when she died, it was kind of a big deal. It was like in all the papers and everything like that. Um, so these, so John Allen and his wife, they were friends of hers. And so they offered to take Edgar in. Now he had some siblings as well, but they kind of went out to other families. So, so he's in this family, the Allen family. Like I said, they never formally adopted him, but he did take the name anyway. Now, John Allen, I think he was a tobacco merchant or something like that. He was kind of, um, him and Edgar didn't super get along. I think they were kind of like different, just different types of people and they didn't really gel. But Edgar was given, he did have a good childhood. I mean, despite all the death and stuff. But he did have a really good upbringing. He had a really good education. They sent him to uh, England. They sent him to Scotland. He got like all the kind of the the education that like a really kind of upper class dude would get back then, even though he wasn't wealthy, really, like the family wasn't wealthy. But, you know, he did get education and all the classics as you would at that time period you know if you were kind of in the upper echelons or whatever yeah a lot of people had were able to do that actually. yeah 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 you um, could get it a good education back then yeah without without having to have that a lot of money i think that'll be the future too now that the internet's out there they're gonna be a lot of educated people that didn't even go to college to, well, like I said, it's, out there. it's nice because you can kind yeah. of, like I said, I like the way everything, it's democratized everything. Yeah. So you can, for not really that much money, you can just take classes in what you want to take and you can learn all the shit you want to see. Even if yeah. it's, even if people would say, oh, it's useless or why are you learning that? It's like, you're interested in it. So you want to learn it. You and, spend it's much like, money. and it's like, yeah, I can pay a couple hundred dollars yeah. and get a fucking class. Just right. And a lot of the people that are teaching... Uh, the classes online, yeah. some of them are free, actually, yeah. um, are also taught at like universities and stuff. So yeah. you're getting pretty much the same. As long as you're not experience. trying to get in some hoity toity fucking corporation, you don't need really all this fucking piece of paper. You can fucking take that education and make make a living for yourself online. Well, Danny hopefully. Does. I mean, you know. Danny's doing well. You don't have college debt. So. Well, yeah, because I got uh, Pell Grants. Right. Because I was poor <laughs> but you know what i mean fucking you're not you don't have these college debts so you can do all this i specifically debt. did not want to take out loans right. now i will say my grandfather who has passed away since my mom's uh father he paid for my first semester i just yeah. went to like a technical school for yeah. graphic design um he paid for the first semester he wasn't excited that I was taking graphic design. He thought that I should take something more quote unquote practical. Yeah, that was some cheesy shit back then. Like in those accounting days. or whatever. Yeah, right. Like and I was like, I'm not really it. interested in that though, because that's what my mom did. Is uh she worked for an accountant for a long time. I went to college for that too. And I was kinda like yeah. well, I was kinda like, Yeah, but I don't really want to do that. Um yeah, terrible. So he paid for one uh semester and then after that he's like, Yeah, I don't really want to pay for any more. Yeah. So after that, I applied for a grant and I actually, like I said, you know, I was pretty broke. So I got one. So, um, so actually my grant like paid for everything. I didn't have any money left over, but I had enough to pay the tuition and books and that's it. I didn't have any money for food or lodging or anything. I didn't live with my grandma. I'm glad I dropped out of fucking accounting. I would be the least, least likely dude to ever succeed in fucking accounting. Yeah. I you're you're not an shit. accountant. Fuck no. Not only that, it's just fucking... And then I fucking dropped out of that shit, fucking quit college, and went right into the corporate sales world and fucking made a good fucking living just by talking. I I love sales, direct sales. And, well, that uh, fits with your personality. That's more of my personality, yeah. You don't like really I said, the, the one that. time that I had to work in like yeah. retail where I had to do like sales like that, I yeah. fucking hated it. I love sales. I'm really not. 
I'm really not that good. I love Because I hate people and I don't no, really like to talk to people. Not me. I like <laughs> I like interaction. See, I don't. I like interaction. I'm it, I'm more of like I'm gonna go in here and like work on my own. Interaction type of interaction and selling a tangible item. I'm big but I gotta believe in it. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? I I'm not a bullshitter. It's gotta be good. I only work for companies that sold really good shit. I fucking loved it. I mean, you guys know, like I showed you yeah. this board game. I have like three or I have three yeah. over there. And then I have like a whole bunch back yeah. there. Like I said, if I could live my whole life just waking up every day and being like, ooh, I have an idea for a game and just like writing it all down yeah. and doing it and stuff, I would do that. Yeah. And not having to like worry about anybody else whining about it. Then that would be fucking awesome. The money comes from the show, though. Most, well, and books and most audio books. Well, yeah. and the books, too. Yeah um yeah but the games is where jenny really likes she she actually likes that well that's like you know what's weird it's like as much as i work you would think yeah. that i wouldn't want to work like in my off time but that's what i do for entertainment make make games yeah, yeah because that's fun for me it's fun for me to like yeah. think of like a concept and it's like how's it gonna work and like what's that's it gonna what I'm look trying like to get her out of here she needs to and get shit it, like that she needs to get out of here she needs to get away from me she needs to get away from this house she needs to go out and fucking go do her shit for a fucking week I was thinking two weeks, but no, go ahead for a week. Well, I was thinking about it, but I was like, I can't really afford two weeks. it for yeah. a few weeks. Just go out for a week, um, see how you feel, and if not, you can do it again. I mean, I can do else. it again later, it again later like yeah. somewhere else. Because yeah. like I said, I wanted to do, Yeah. because I specifically wanted to go to St. Augustine, because like I said, that was like, because I had planned to do like two or three days there like last October, because I was yeah. going to go up to Atlanta and see my sister, and I was going to do that on the way. Um, so I was like, oh, I was, it was all this shit I wanted to do. And that's like close by and it's not that expensive. And I found an Airbnb, like a room. Like I said, the dude has a house that's like two blocks from downtown. And it's like an old, like fucking Victorian era, or like early 20th century house. And he converted it into like eight little apartments and he does Airbnb. So he rents them out. And, um, the smallest one, which is the one I got, because I was like, I don't care. I'm not going to be there most of the time, so it can be fucking tiny. I don't care. I'm just going to sit in there and read, probably, anyway. Um, but that was, it was $403 for five nights. And I was like, that's a really good, and that was cheaper than any hotel in the area. And you can walk to downtown. And I'm like, yeah. yep. Every, and all of his reviews were good. Yeah. Yeah, Brittany fucking accounting fucking sucks. It is like I said, my mom it's did just it for a dry, long time. dry fucking work. I'm glad I had nothing to do with that. You'd be some old dude, fucking hairless, fucking hunched over a damn ledger, putting things in columns and fucking credit and debit and fucking fuck all that bullshit, man. Fucking and you know what? Ex the Excel spreadsheets made a lot of that shit fucking obsolete. Well, the way. thing, yeah, the yeah. thing about it is that and you can do that. You don't really. The computer can do that shit through scanning. All that shit's kind of obsolete. I mean, shit. I, you know, I'm CPA not. CPA is the only thing that makes money. I'm not anti math or anything like that, but it's like I keep track of. I do all my own taxes and everything like that. And I just have yeah. like an Excel spreadsheet for everything. Technology kind of made that degree obsolete. So ah, fuck all that shit. That's a golden parachute anyway. All those, a lot of most. If it's not a hardcore science degree, it's a golden parachute. Come on. I mean, and like I said, I did graphic design. I already knew, um, you know, I had already done like illustration. I'd already done like, you know, hand art. So doing graphic design, basically, they just taught me how to use Photoshop, Illustrator, shit like that. They taught me how to do this was like a long time ago. So I learned how to do kind of like letterpress and all that kind of stuff, which was, you know, you don't have to do it anymore, but it's still like cool to learn. Um, but I specifically wanted something that wasn't going to take a really long time. I wanted like more of a technical school thing. Cause I already knew how to do a lot of that shit. What's up, Dom the bomb. Good to see you, bro. Yeah. We haven't even started talking about it. Girl, yet, so you're not like really late. You let's, you missed all the Santa Muerte stuff, but. Tammy said you'd have been Scrooge. Yeah. I'd have been Scrooge. Yeah, you would have. <laughs> People talking about Druid Hills and Decatur area. A lot of, a lot of fucking Indian restaurants. Man, I gotta get back into an Indian restaurant. Indian mm, days. Indian food. Yeah. I Memories of India is like... probably open again. Yeah, it's probably open. I wanna go. Maybe we should go get some. You wanna go do today. some Indian Indian food tomorrow? Maybe. Oh yeah, tomorrow's Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, we could do some Indian food. I mean, it will... we go out. We'll, we'll go out. To if, it's, uh, if it's if it's open, we gotta go to mannequins tomorrow. Okay. Laura's fucking wanting to see you. Although, okay. She yeah. said she was going to come in Memento, though, and she didn't come. She wants to see you tomorrow at fucking... She's okay. got, I would like to see you guys tomorrow at Mannequins. I'll be down there. 
Laura's fucking just, she's one of our bet friends. She's fucking, we've known her for fucking five years. That's the one I showed you guys a picture of. She looks kind of, she looks like Wonder Woman. She's she, a she, lovely, lovely yeah. person. She's been over to the house a lot of times. Yeah, good so looking, good, she's good looking. Me girl. and her and uh, and Jen went yeah. down to uh, Sanford yeah. probably like a month or two ago. Yeah. Farted around in the bookstore. We had a good time. Go ahead and fucking do this. I'm going to go to the rest of my <laughs> I was going to check on Pookie because I didn't see Pookie last time I was out there. Oh, you didn't tell me that. You better find Pookie. I was going to say about uh, Path Kitty because I know some of you guys were asking about that. Uh, Mr. McGuire. I'm kind of worried because I bought him some topical spray like for his little wound on the side where his little hair mat came off. And I got it and I put it in my backpack and I went on my hike. I didn't see him yesterday and I didn't see him today either. So, I mean, this isn't the first time that I haven't seen him in a couple of days in a row, but I mean, he could just be like sleeping in the barn or maybe he's not out on the path, but I don't know. I'm kind of worried about it. So hopefully, I don't know. I'm going to go out tomorrow with the spray and the food and the treats and we'll see if he's there, but I'm kind of worried about it. Because I haven't seen him in a couple days. And I don't like that. So, so yeah. So, so he goes to live with, uh, like I said, John Allen. John Allen was kind of, uh, you know, one of those dudes. I don't know. They, they just didn't get along. Not horribly. He wasn't abusive or anything, I don't think. But they just didn't really get along. And I, and I think, too, like when John Allen died later on, he, I think he specifically, well, one... When his wife was dying of tuberculosis, um, he had a whole bunch of mistresses and he basically just like, from what I could determine, uh, would bring him into the house and like, hey, here's a mistress. I'm just going to go in here for a few minutes. We're not doing anything. I promise. It was kind of that kind of situation. And uh, while his wife was dying in the other room. So, you know. I was like, I was watching a documentary earlier. I'm like, oh, keep it classy, John. And uh, Edgar, apparently, he was, you know, still fairly young, but he knew about that at the time. So he was like, oh, man, this dude is like, sucks so much. But um, you know what I mean? So there was kind of like some tension there. I'm just saying. So like I said, Poe got a classical education, basically. Now, in 1826, uh, he actually went to the University of Virginia for almost a year. But... What ended up happening there was that he was got a little too much into uh, gambling. So, and he lost a shit ton of money. Now, I guess that he had, I don't know. I saw one thing that called it a guardian. Maybe it was just kind of like some, I don't know. Somebody just was like, watch out for him or whatever. And uh, they were like, yeah, he's, uh, he's broke now because he lost all his money gambling. So y'all, your parents might want to do something about that. So they wouldn't let him keep going to the school. So Poe left and he went back to Richmond, Virginia. And uh, the girl that he had been wooing before he went to, I said wooing, before he went to uh, college, who was named uh, Elmira Royster, better known as Sarah. Um, by the time he got back, she was engaged to somebody else because she was like, fuck you, I'm not waiting, whatever. So he was just like, okay, well, there's that. So then he moves to Boston. Now... He had always wanted to be, he was actually a very good, a very accomplished artist. And even when he was in college, like people that knew him back then commented that he was equally good at art and at writing and at writing poetry and stuff like that. And they weren't really sure. It's like, well, he could do either thing because he's like brilliant at both things. So for a long time, they were like, well, maybe he'll be this brilliant artist. But he actually kind of wanted to be a poet. So he goes to Boston, 1827. Uh, he published he published a uh, pamphlet of poems, which were kind of inspired by Lord Byron. That was called Tamerlane and other poems, which I think there are only a few uh, copies of that still extant. And did you find her? I let both cats in. Oh, they're both in? They're both in. Okay, that's good. Where was she? Was Front she being... porch. Oh, okay. So they were like Babes pretending the they were there the whole time? Yeah, and then Babes was on the back porch. Oh, okay. I wonder where Pookie was hiding before. Underneath the car, probably. Yeah, she likes to sit under yeah. the car. Or in the bushes. Camp Guy says, I keep cats on my back deck and they climb all the way up to the roof of our house. No rodents. 
I just bought I find I got that um that toy that I that I ordered for Pookie. Yeah, it's fucking funny. This ball and you put batteries in it and it has like this it's purple and then like it has like this yellow like fuzzy tail. And when you put the batteries in it, it like kind of rolls and it like spins the tail around and Pookie I think she was kind of sleepy too. But I showed it home like look Pookie look and it was kind of like spinning around. She was just like looking at like oh my god, what the fuck is that? She was she was terrified. Where are you, Pookie? Camp guy says he doesn't like buffets. He likes his food cooked fresh for him. I'm going to say, yeah, I agree with you, but there are certain buffets that I liked. Our local Indian buffet was really fucking good. And Koi Wan is like the buffets of all buffets. Yeah, I'll make an yeah, exception man. for Koi Wan. Koi Wan, it's... it's it's Chinese. It's a and Japanese. massive place. It's massive. Yeah, it's like going to an amusement park. I think I showed pictures of it before. The way it's all built and everything. It's got a koi pond that's like a river and fucking a it's got a bridge that goes over it. And, and that's inside like, the restaurant. And there's like five party rooms. It's a yeah, massive party rooms place. All over the place. And they have a bar. They got fucking, a big sushi bar. Yeah. They got like what do they call it? Hibachi grill. Yeah. They got they got all um, that shit. Uh, sushi. They're making sushi and and putting it up. Yeah. There. So that's fresh. So you can get that. You can uh, all you can eat Chinese stuff on the other side, and then all you can eat crab legs and boiled shrimp and stuff. Oh no, you got to pay for the crab legs. That's extra. It's well, extra. They, that's only at dinner time. It's only at dinner time, but I sit there and I, like I, after four o'clock. I punish those motherfuckers for serving crab legs. All you can eat sad crab. I'm gonna you. All you can eat crab legs. Well, you you're paying. Yeah, you're I'm gonna, gonna eat regret all that the shit. day that Tom walked. You in. will regret that's the day for sure. that I walked into that motherfucker. You're gonna be owing money to the bank when I'm done with you. I always feel bad when we go there though, because I always feel like, well, if it's all you can eat, I feel like you should probably eat all you can eat, like to make it worthwhile. But I yeah. can't eat all that much. She can't eat much. <laughs> but I can eat a lot of shrimp. I, I eat, eat like one and a half plates, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I have a stomach ache. <laughs> nah. I kind of man up for the shit. I'm gonna eat some sushi. I'm gonna <laughs> eat a whole bunch of boiled shrimp, and if I pay for those crab legs, I'm gonna focus mostly on those crab on crab. I can crab legs are good because they Chinese take waitresses. so long to like eat them because you have to like to crack it, it open and everything that it's almost kind of like you're burning calories as you're eating them. I'll bring a whole bowl of fucking melted butter, a couple of bowls of damn crab legs, a couple of empty bowls to put the fucking hulls on, all the tools I need. I'll sit there and fucking peel and crab legs open. You got to get some lemon wedges so yeah. you can clean all the It'll fish clean smell it all off up, your hands. Clean everything up with lemon, squirting lemon on myself. Chinese waitress looking at me like, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker, you know what you're you doing. Ate so, yeah, all of course of I know food. what I'm doing. You ate all I do this shit food. for a living. Okay, go ahead and bring this. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> yeah, I punish him. I can't. So whenever we go to Koi Wan, we we went to Koi Wan. It's about time ago. to go back to Koi Wan. But the last time, was, I always look at him like, how, like, where are you putting all of it? Yeah. I want to eat more because a lot of the stuff is good. What, what I'll usually do is I'll usually go and I'll just get like a little tiny bit of each thing. Yeah. Just so I feel like I ate. Because I was like, ooh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. But I can't eat like a lot of stuff because I'm I'll a, get a stomach ache. I'm going to show them Koi Wan just so they know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Jenny. All you can eat unless you're Tom. Yeah. yeah. Then they're going to like kick you out. <laughs> All right. So where was I? So, yeah. So, uh, so Poe published his first uh, thing of poems, which was called Tamerlane and other poems. And as I mentioned, there's probably only. There is the Koi Wan from the outside. Okay. There is Koi Wan on the inside. There's a, a that's Jap looking toward the entrance. There's a Japanese and there's a Japanese town inside the restaurant. Okay. I can't imagine what their fucking rent yeah. is. It's a massive place. It's massive. Yeah. Uh, um. And it's always full. Like whenever we go, there's yeah. like a ton of people. Shit. Uh -huh. There we go. There's the bar. It's like you're walking downtown, but it's not. It's inside. And they got Yeah, it looks bar. like a little town. It's kind it's of like cool. A town. But like there's back here, sushi. this is yeah. all like dining rooms. Yeah. It like knows. you can't really see it, but there's like, and there's a bunch of dining rooms back here, too. Yeah. So that's all right. And then. Yeah. Okay. 
Man. That's at the back of it. That's just one of the damn places where all the food is on the buffet. It's a fucking beautiful place. It's like, like I said, when I tell you bitches, and I called y'all bitches, What's when this, I tell you bitches this? that it's like an amusement park, it is like an amusement park. What in is there. that thing? What's that? It, that's my power cord. Oh, okay. It's not attached to anything. That's why I'm no. asking. No. I'm sure it's all crooked. That's the hibachi grill. It's like an amusement park in there of food. Yeah, you walk in huge. there, it's like a downtown. It's like, yeah. It's huge. It's huge. And like I said, they have a full bar too. Yeah. With a TV. And like you... I never got any alcohol in there, but because we always go like in the middle that's of what the it, day. That's what it looks like outside during the day. Yep. All right. So where was I? Koi Wan just needs a roller coaster and a haunted house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like something out of Magic Mountain. Oh, and they have a dessert bar, too. Yeah, they got a dessert they bar. They have an ice cream bar ice cream. with uh, eight different flavors. Yeah. They got sprinkles. They got nuts. They got all that shit. And they have like a little dessert bar that has all cut. They have cream puffs. They have cheesecake. They have little uh, jello shit. They have like ch fucking chocolate cake. They have all different kinds of shit. Okay, we just got a gift from Mexico. Keith Libby just sent this from to us from Mexico. <gasps> wow. Oh, my God. That's Thank awesome. Thank you very much, Keith. Oh my god, that's Thank awesome. Thank you very much, Keith. Thank you so much. That is fucking excellent. That will have a place of honor. Oh my god, I love that shit. I love that kind of shit. You guys know me so well. <laughs> All right, you done? Uh, Go ahead. Okay. All right, so as I said, now, interestingly, I was not aware of this until I watched a couple of different documentaries. However, Edgar Allan Poe was, as far as I'm aware, the first American author to make a living from writing. Although, the caveat being, he was super poor his whole entire life. You know what I mean? But he was kind of like, he had other jobs too, like he was an editor and stuff. But he was kind of like, from what I could determine, he was like the first person to like actually make a living at doing that kind of stuff. Take that as you will. All right, so he publishes his first uh, volume of poems they kind of make a little bit of a splash but not really i think that nowadays only a few copies of tamerlane and other poems survived and as far as i know i think one of the original copies sold at like christie's like auction house or something like that for some like ridiculous amount like half a million dollars or something like that because there were only like 12 copies of them left that they know of so you know it's a very rare if you have a copy of that might want to like look into it so as I said, he's still pretty uh, poor, as he was his entire life. So he joins the army um, under the name Edgar Perry. Now, his foster mother, Elizabeth Allen, uh, died. And at this point, his stepdad, John Allen, actually bought his release out of the army and got him into West Point. So at this stage, though, it's kind of like, okay, so Poe publishes another book, um, which was uh, Other Poems. This was in 1829. Uh, now, he wasn't really uh, into West Point. It's weird because I think people, like I said, I think people have this perception of Poe as this kind of melancholic, weedy, non-athletic uh, person but in his youth, he was actually quite the uh, athlete. You know what I mean? He was kind of a swimmer. He played like a bunch of different sports and what's stuff. The, what that are you was, trying to tell me? What's the matter, baby? She's trying to tell me something. What's, what's the matter? Okay, what? She wants to go back outside. Okay. Okay, but... She saw her friend, I think. Oh. Oh. Okay. You guys, last night, she sat by the sliding glass door for hours and hours because we saw her little doppelganger <laughs> that looks just like her but has a tail that's her little friend 
I don't know whose cat it is. It's belongs to one of our neighbors or something, but it looks just like her. And we saw her for like a second. Like she ran past the thing and it was like, and Tom was like, look, look at your friend. And like Pookie was in the living room. So he goes and gets her and like he brings her, he carries her to like the thing. He's like, look, look, look. And like, she knew what he was talking about. She's like, oh, my friend was out there. And she's like looking and looking and looking. She knew what I was looking and for. And she sat there like half All the night, night. Yeah. waiting for that kitty to come back. She knew exactly what I was talking about. She was like, yeah, she, she was knows. here? She's said, yeah, she was here. Yeah. She was here. She, was she knows. She knows what I was talking about. Well, she knows if you go to the other room and pick her up and bring her to the thing and like sit her in front of the thing, that means that was we, down and I we was saw looking. the kitty. I went down to her level and I was looking. She was here. She was here. And she's like, she was here? And, uh, you know, I could tell by her body yeah. language. She sat there for four hours waiting for that cat to come Yeah, she here. sat there like half the night. I woke up at like yeah. two in the morning and she was still sitting there. Yeah. She's sitting in front of the sliding glass door just like looking. Yeah. Where is that? Where is that kitty? They don't, it's funny because when they hang out, they yeah. just like sit next to each other. Yeah, and or, look at other things. And look at other things. Yeah. That's how cats hang out. Brad Jones says, I like how you guys have open communication and can take a little time to breathe from each other. It's healthy. I think it's awesome, both you and Tom, you, Tom, and Miss Jen. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, like I said, and we've said it many times before, we were friends before we got, before we became a couple. We were dating other people while we were friends. Yeah. So it's not quite the same. We be, we were kind of business partners before. We were starting businesses before we actually became a thing. Yeah. We were thinking about businesses. So it's kind of a different situation. It's not a normal it's not a normal relationship. Well, I mean it yeah. is, but It's a normal relationship, but it's not it's it, the way it started. Yeah, well, you're not really all that normal. Okay, and that's I'm say that I mean that in a good way. Well, that's how I took it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> no. I would kind of yeah, be insulted not, yeah. if you thought I was normal. No, I'm, just, not really. I'm really not no. normal at all. No. I mean, I don't know to what extent I'm not normal because I don't um I'm not concerned with that type most, of uh, designation. <laughs> most women, most women are real superficial. Most women were like the Disney prison princess that oh, I went out with. It. Yeah. Most women are like that. Makes sense now. Well, it's yeah, funny I when I can point out girls that I dated that she knows. Yeah, like yeah, I get yeah. that, but like Most I said, like I don't that. really know a lot about that because like girls that I hung out with were not like that. Because I wouldn't hang out with yeah, girls that were like that. Yeah, but I didn't go out with girls like you hung out with. Right. I know who you yeah, hung out with. I, know. I went out with girls that were kind of like that Disney princess. Yeah. That was more my, what I was looking at. I, it was partly my fault, I guess you could say. I, I was superficial too. I mostly about yeah, how they looked. I know. Yeah. But Thank you, Dom the Bomb. Hot yeah. Tom and Jenny, get yourselves a drink. Okay. Yeah, well, we got one, bro. We will. Yeah. I got one too. It's on no, the I, you know, I'm the first one to say that I'm superficial. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah, and uh, no, I selected women. By I'm not so much, no. and, and well, and that was always like a source of frustration for me because yeah. I'm just kind of like, well, and not just with you, but with yeah. dudes in general. Yeah. I'm just kind of like when because I was kind of one of those girls in school. I had a lot of friends that were dudes, and I had a lot of friends that were girls. And sometimes the dudes would go out with these chicks that were like super hot, and they'd be like, "Man, this bitch is like fucking so annoying." What the yeah, fuck? And then they would like come and cry to me about it. Yeah. And I'm like, "Bitch, why are you crying to me about it? Like, quit going out with these like super hot fucking. Why are you doing that? It's just kind of like, why don't you go out with like a more normal looking girl that actually likes you?" I grew up with Granthers. <laughs> I grew up with Granthers. We went to high school together. We were in trauma program together, and uh, you know, fucking, he'll tell you, we went. Out with fucking women based on how, how they well, look. Well, yeah, a lot of dudes do, and yeah. especially a lot of younger dudes do. Yeah. That. It's very common. But that and now, but the thing is, is that where we lived, women that looked good were also good quality. They had, you know, like Mary Lynn. She ended up being fucking famous. Yeah, and I'm not and saying that those two things good. are mutually exclusive. Right. I'm not just right. saying like, oh, if you're like an awesome person, that you're ugly. Right. Or if you're, or if a, you're hot a hot girl, person, you're bad. Then you don't right. have anything else to offer because right. that's obviously that's not the case. It, it's just like tomorrow we're gonna hang out with Laura. Laura's hot as hell. She's fucking great. She's absolutely and great. she she is Real just good. a beautiful person. Right. Just right. outside, inside, everything. She's just a beautiful, right. beautiful. So girl. it's just Jen is too. That's yeah. what I mean. It's like. So that so that doesn't like stand to reasons like oh you know hot girls right. are always bitches or anything like that no, because that is absolutely not. not the case. Right. I have known many many girls even going back to like high school and stuff like that that were yeah. beautiful yeah hot chicks that got all the dudes and everything like that yeah. and were also fucking awesome people yeah. 
So you can't always judge um, just because a girl's yeah. hot, oh, she's shallow, whatever. That's Laura. Yeah. Yeah, and she's and that's like, not even a good picture. She is like ridiculously, yeah. ridiculously beautiful, ridiculously beautiful. And yeah, she is, more of and like I said, she is an awesome, awesome, and she plays violin. Yeah, that's what she. Looks um, like. <laughs> she's walking. an awesome. She's an awesome person. I love her. And like I said, Jen is the same. Yeah, like I hang out with Jen all the time, and it's just kind of like she's just a gorgeous. She's gorgeous looking, and she's just a gorgeous yeah, person. Here, here's Laura and Jen together. These are Jenny's friends. There you go. There you go. These yeah, those are the two girls I went to downtown Sanford with. Yeah. Couple. What with the hell's them. going yeah. on? I'm getting a reflection from from the light. Yeah. From the light. Yeah. Yeah. That's Laura and Jen. Yeah, and, and actually, Laura, Jen, and Jenny are actually three of the fucking some of the best looking girls in probably in this scene. I would say. But all you guys are well known and good looking. Well, everybody knows who we are. Yeah. Well, and I think everybody knows who, because we're not bitches either. Yeah. Here's a picture of Jen. Of Jen, just no makeup, really. That's Laura. Laura, excuse me. Yeah, Laura, with no makeup. That That's, you know. Yeah. Doesn't quite. She's maybe. slightly, she's slightly younger than us, yeah? A couple years. Probably I mean, Jen, I mean, Jen is, she's younger than me, but not by that much. Probably about about ten years, huh? Laura is, I think, a, she's probably about quite 30, a bit younger. I think she's in her five, thirty-five. She's maybe in her thirties, thirty-five, late thirties, something like that. Yeah. Jen is more closer to my age, but still right. younger than me. But um, yeah, I mean, those those are my girls, man. Those are my girls. So you know, like I said, you, Grandpa you, says Tom and I rocked the heart, the hotties and tread it, yes, <laughs> and then our boy fucking Steve. You know, Steve fucking Rouse. Steve has, uh, he stayed he's, here he's with been us. Here, for, yeah. He's He's been and stayed with us. Steve. One time, me, right? Me and Steve were like brothers. Steve ended up being a biochemist and a scientist. He did a lot of stuff on the Human Genome Project. Fucking, Granthers can fucking tell you, Steve was a fucking genius. He was a an, e, an evil genius, but a genius. And he fucking, he, he was, he, he's fucking, knows everything about biochemistry, genetic science. Fucking, he can... He's really fucking cool. And we were like brothers. And we looked as similar, especially in those days. And uh, we were tagging the same fucking girls. Sometimes, look, you get her Friday, I'm going to get her Saturday. And it's like, yeah, yeah. We, we were like, we were not jealous at all. It's not like we were... If we had a steady girlfriend, of course, we wouldn't step on each other's toes. But it was in, back in those days, and grandparents will tell you, it was open dating. It was, you know, and it was open dating between a bunch of friends. Well, yeah, as so long as no one's made a commitment yeah, to somebody no else, commitment. then you kind of like, you know. So some of these girls, and Granthers knows who the fuck I'm talking about. I don't want to name her, okay? But no, me and Steve were fucking doing that at the same time. And fucking, we were like, we were like proud to fucking have this bitch fucking just floating on air. And it was just a different time. You could do that back then. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we were different dudes, but we had different things to offer. And, it, you know what I mean? It wasn't it wasn't a time of fucking jealousy. It was almost, well, everyone's it, got something to offer. Yeah, and well, it wasn't... not everyone. It I'm wasn't some hippie far. shit. It wasn't some hippie shit or anything like that. It was. No one said it was hippie shit. It, you know what I mean? It's not what it was. <laughs> it was just... It was proto-fucking-gothic metal type... And everybody's cool, and everybody's fucking hanging out together, and hey, man, fucking everybody's friends. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's just it, well, that's, that's the, kind that, of how yeah. I think that's kind of the way the best relationships develop yeah. is you you have like a friend group. Yeah, the whole you know group what I mean? of friends, and fucking everybody was kind of fucking each other. Just you know, that's I mean, kind of, that's kind of like what the goth scene in Orlando. Yeah. Is like. Well, I grew up in that fucking right. Grandthers. We were teenagers in high school, and that's the way it was. Yeah. Some of the shit I'm hearing today, you know what I mean? Fucking the way teenagers are growing up, it's a lot different than what we grew up. You know, we didn't have the technology. Everything was done face to face. Well, it's just, you know? it's not bad. It's just different. It's just, it's just it's very just different. different. Yeah. We didn't really have the option. Right. I mean, if we'd had the option back then to do online shit, yeah, everybody would have been doing that just like nowadays. Yeah. So it's like, you know. I think though, our generation, you had to have good face to face person personal skills because you just could not woo, woo some chick 
with fucking You also instant said mess- woo. I said that earlier. Yeah, you cannot woo some chick with some kind of fucking online instant message. We no, sound no, like no, we're no, all no. like Victorian and no, 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 no. talking about woo. You couldn't people. fucking draw them in that way. You had it had to be face to face. And uh I think I don't know, maybe Grandthus can back me up on that, at least in turn from the male perspective. It caused your balls to grow. Because if you were going to get rejected, it was going to be a face-to-face rejection. So you had to have some guts. Or you had to have some style. Yeah, you couldn't just, like, ghost people. Or, like, you couldn't ghost or anything them. like that. You go, you know, baby, look. There's one. Uh, Grandpa knows who I'm talking about. There's one named Dana. Fucking, I fucking love Dana. I went a couple dates with her. She eventually ghosted me back in the way you ghosted shit people back then, which you turn around and she's walking around with some other dude. You never hear from her again. You know what I mean? That's like ghost. But fucking, I was big into Dana. Um, there was, anyway, it doesn't matter, man. The fucking, I'm talking to Grabbers. I'm not talking to the fucking, um, but no, she was fucking cool too. And just Cheryl Rumelard, which I just fucking reconnected with her. She's now a fucking high end nurse and she's cool. She's with the dude. She's like, oh yeah, man, we had a great time going to the Lazarium, you know, fucking with, me and fucking I you and stu- and fucking Steve and fucking uh, Jason area. Quinlan and shit. And fuck, we used to call him Stud. He was like the he was like our version of Spock. <laughs> he looked like that. He kind of acted like that. <laughs> kind of nerdy though, you know. What I mean, it's fucking funny. It's just a different time. Yeah, it was, but like I said, it's you know, it's, it's just different. different. People grow up different. It's like yeah. it's not bad. It's just different. Yeah. Um, you know, Brad was saying, uh, he likes hearing all the stuff like about the past and that we're kind of like aspirational. So, yeah. All right. That's cool. (laughs) Grandpa says, Steve and I had many lively times. Yeah. He goes, don't worry. I won't name any names. Well, you know, fucking Mary Lynn and shit. You know what I mean? Me and me and Steve were good friends with Mary Lynn. We fucking, she was like one of our crowd. She just happened to be kind of like the female version of one of our fucking team, you know. She was she was in the gang, you know. Uh, she ended up fucking starring on fucking a, a series called Twenty Four. Uh, she still does some comedian comedian stuff and does some. Um, but she's work, learning to work social media on her own without any backers, which I think that's great. Fucking Marilyn Marilyn Rice Cub was fucking has a lot of talent. She's a fucking really good person. Fucking Grampus could fucking back me up on that. We grew up with her. She was fucking just gold. Just golden. She's got kids now and everything. Great. Brittany says, Tom, what if you were born in this time of Tinder? Do you think you would utilize it? Yeah, I would. And also ask me the same question. Yeah. I don't, well, yeah. I probably would, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Probably not extensively. I would use it, but I would, uh, chances are, I wouldn't be as slick as I was when I was a kid using that. Because a lot of the stuff, and Graham backed me up on this, a lot of the stuff that we did, was, like I said, was face-to-face. You had to have skill and style and understand how to read people's emotions and their reactions to you when you're talking to them. You had to have social skill. And I've run into these some young people in these some some of these clubs. A lot of them are females. They don't have the social skills we used to have. They yeah, I can't... think I I do better in writing. I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've had women kind of try to come young. These young women try to come at me sideways. Like last week we were there, a girl I know she was interested in me, but the way she came at me was totally wrong. You know what I mean? It's just like no, that's not how you fucking come at a motherfucker but i'm with somebody remember you get out of here fucking that was you think you came in towards the end of that um angel was there like what the fuck is wrong with you and that, and that girl left i'm I'll having a hard time remembering tell like, you about who, it later like i kind of vaguely remember like who you're talking about i think i remember who you're talking about yeah but i'm not really sure well right. because like i said the thing is it's like i'm drunk and also i can't yeah. hear Right. So it's like if you guys are kind of like talking, I have no idea yeah. what you're talking about. Right. So if there's like some shit going on right here, I can't hear shit. It just sounds like bar 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 bar. That's right. all it sounds like. So I can't hear you. Yeah, uh, Grandpa says kids today don't know the struggle. Nah, they don't really know the struggle. It's it's easier for them. They got it set on easy. You talk for a second. I gotta pee. All right, go ahead. And then we'll come um, back and. Grandpa's also said Mary Lynn was the best. Yeah, she was fucking really cool. And um, little Terry and I'm naming all these names. Fucking um, Heidi. 
Oh shit. Uh, what the hell is going on? So Heidi and uh you know T uh, fucking Tila's probably like, oh man, what are these little fucking white girl names? Yeah, no, no, this is this Michigan back in back in those days of the eighties was kinda like the Siberia or the Sweden of the United States. There were a lot of fucking um, Scandinavian people. They had a, a descendants of Poles, a lot of Polish people, a lot of kind of Scandinavian people. They they kind of and, and Russians. They had that certain kind of look. Like Granthers knows what I'm talking about. You look at Mary Lynn. Mary Lynn's Russian, all right, and or, or descendants of Russians. I see Russian women all the time. It says, man, she got the same chin, the same nose as Mary Lynn. I bet you fucking, I bet you grandpa's will fucking confirm that. But that same chin and that same fucking nose. Look at that little Putins running around like these little Putins. <laughs> yeah, fucking Tina's going, yeah, where's Shanae and Tanisha and Aisha and Dorit? Yeah, they don't, yeah, no. They didn't really have that up there we're talking about like i said we're talking about kind of like the 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 um the only black people we had were up in detroit and they were a lot like something you'd see like out of beverly hills cop they're kind of like that fucking we we loved fucking eddie murphy and beverly hills cop and that shit all just kind of blended in but detroit was pretty much falling apart when we were kids you know a lot of people were moving away it was from the downtown detroit area and then after I fucking graduated from there, fucking I went went to back to Brazil and then I came back. And then um, I moved up into Detroit itself and lived in fucking on uh, fucking uh, Cass uh, and Second West Hancock, right near Cass Corridor. And I ended up end, end, entering into the world of like the Crow. It was the goth scene during the era of the Crow. If you ever seen that movie, it was like that. That was cool too. Did like two years of that. Going to the shelter and fucking a St. Andrews Hall and you know it was fun time. It was fun time. City club. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Iku says, says, sorry if you talked about uh Santa Morte already. Yeah, we did. That was the first half Talk of the show. About it okay. We were yeah. trying to get to Edgar Allan Poe, but you know what I mean? We keep getting distracted. Getting distracted. Is, I don't know if everybody's talking to it. I don't know if you knew here, but <laughs> This is yeah. what happens. Yeah. Don't get too invested in the topic because we'll talk about it, but... It's a show. We're entertaining. We'll you. also go off on yeah. numerous tangents depending yeah. on what people ask us. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Not sure we're currently discussing. I don't even know what we're currently... I just came back from the bathroom. I don't know what's yeah. going on. So... <laughs> like Melissa said, said Mary Lynn is awesome on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Mary Lynn was the shit. She's not acting. That's the way she was. She is that goofy. She's very goofy and very Always Sunny is a good show. You yeah. should, I don't think you've ever seen it, yeah. but it's good. It's a good yeah. show. And you see my boy Skinny Puppy. Sir, yeah, I, I ran into Skinny Puppy several fucking times, and they were just not as cool as me. I was a kid, and I was going, those motherfuckers got it made. They were hanging out with... They were up at the bar after the fucking... Their little show, their set. They're in fucking shorts and boots and fucking... They're, Looking fucking just cool as shit, hanging out with these Detroit hotties, these fucking pro gothic, uh, proto industrial gothic hotties, and I was just impressed as fuck because they were wearing fishnets. Which back in those days, that was just like fishnets. What? Nowadays, that's kind of passing. Nowadays, nowadays like that's everywhere. But I was a going, little bit fishnets. Oh damn! Yeah. <laughs> it was Kevin Key, man. I, was, oh, I saw yeah. Kevin Key. And I'll tell you what, back in those days, Kevin Key was pretty as a motherfucker. The girls just fucking loved him. Loved him. He was, you know, he was like he was like uh, that guy that fucking hangs out here. Oh. That, that doesn't really No, no, no. The musician that. guy, the fucking... Shit. Which one? Where he's a friend of ours, but my head injury is preventing I know, me but to fucking remember. We know him. a lot of musicians. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold Narrow on, it hold down. On, hold on. I, I'm picturing him in my head. I fucking know every. This Narrow is this down. is head injuries, bro. There it down. This is head injuries, bro. Let me fucking. The um, guy with I'm, the arms and the hair. The guy with the arms and the hair, <laughs> and the dude with the black hair. 
Um, also not narrowing it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the dude with the cool clothes, you know. Also not narrowing it down. Um, go ahead, Jenny. Go ahead and go on with the show. I will remember. Well, no, because then in like two will, seconds, you'll be yeah, like, oh, seconds. shit. And then you'll I'm interrupt looking me for. Again. I'm looking for. He's got the little fucking snake bites in his mouth. And fucking we've been to many of his shows. Wait. He, play, uh, he played with Dustin. Uh, Destin. Destin. Yeah, he played with Destin. Um... Tall, skinny, dark-haired dude. Oh, right, right, right. Um, What's his name? Evan? No. No. I'm thinking of somebody else. Uh, no. He will show a picture the moment you start. That we'll see. That's what I mean. I'm trying. Like, I, I, I sent him a message a couple. Days I don't ago. mean to leave like dead time, but it's just yeah. kind of like I know that if I start getting into something, no, go ahead and get into some he'll shit. He'll interrupt. Go ahead. Me. Go ahead and get into some shit. So I'm like. I'm nervous. I'll, about if I find his something. ass, if I, I, I'm gonna find him. I sent. I talked to him last week. I'm looking for the message. Okay. I'm telling you, it's because my head injury. I can't fucking remember his name. Not the one that used to go out with Susan, right? No. Okay. Um. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> You'll find it. Tom needs a drunk wing at this point. I yeah. need a what now? Yeah. See, well, somebody explained to. Uh, Somebody that was talking about Santa Morte earlier. Yeah. Uh, Ikuso is like, yeah, sorry if you talked about it. And then uh, Tila says, yeah, sidetracking. Who says, ah, cool, you guys seem chill. Okay. Yeah, this is a good group. But like I said, don't get too wrapped up in the topics. Like, we do talk about the topics, but it's one of those things where... Shit happens. And... Shit happens. Yeah. We drink a lot. People and ask these questions. People and... ask these questions. And then we end up going off on all these tangents. And before yeah. you know it, five hours have passed. Yeah, and then people in the comment sections <laughs> after the live show is closed down are complaining. <laughs> like, I wanted to know about this and that. And I said, this is, this is an entertainment show. Well, yeah. you know. It's, like I said. Yeah. You either like it or you don't. There's lots of, if you don't like it, there's lots of other things on YouTube that you would probably be happy yeah. with. So please go We're mostly that. just hanging out with friends and shit. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like pretty much everybody in here is yeah. people that... We know these people. ...watch this the show regularly. ...pretty right. much every day. Which really, man, that was always the kind of show I wanted anyway. I don't know if you... Figured. That's what I mean. That's good. Yeah. And it's, I just, I, I enjoy these a lot more because I just feel like... You know, I like hanging out with you guys. Yeah. You know, we can sit in our house, we can drink, we're hanging out with you guys. They're asking us, look, we're talking about some shit. I kind of get stressed out about that because I'm like, oh man, I'm not going to give enough information. People are going to be upset. Like but, you're giving a doctrine. But, you know. Okay. I don't know. I'm not at all excited about it. All right. So, where was I? Okay, so, uh, Edgar was poor, as he was his whole life. I feel kind of bad for him for this because eight like Edgar Allan Poe is just one of those people like it's kind of like H.P. Lovecraft maybe more Poe than Lovecraft because Lovecraft was a little bit of a douche but Poe seemed like an okay dude <sighs> and what you're right he's like he fucking he was like Richie remember Richie Richie who let me show you well who are you talking about you're not narrowing it down. You're not narrowing it down. I was saying that. Hold Tila on. says, one thing is certain, Jenny will always finish the topic. God damn it, I will, yeah, even yeah, if yeah. I have to fucking slur my way to the end of the shit. I will get to the end of my notes, god damn it. Hold on. Because otherwise, I'll wake up at three in the morning, like with a hangover, and be like, fuck, did I finish what I was talking about? And I'll be all upset about it. And then it'll keep me awake, because that's the kind of person I am. But, uh, yeah, so, um, I don't know. I, I just kind of feel like... Where was I going with that? So he, yeah. So Poe was always broke. And I wish more Poe than Lovecraft probably, but I wish for a second that I could go back in a time machine and get Edgar Allan Poe and bring him to the modern day, just like briefly and be like, look at like, you're still remembered. Because I don't know if he realized, like, he kind of got famous in his lifetime. Not that he got any monetary reward for it. But I think that would have, like, really pleased him to know that 
he was so influential in the horror and detective genres and people were still reading his shit this many years later. Like how awesome would that have been? What? This is what I was going to say. Oh, right, right, right. Richie. Yeah. Uh, Richie. Okay. okay. Now she knows what I'm talking about. Well, uh, right. like I said, I yeah. know a couple of people named yeah. that. So. If I can... Ke Kevin Key from Skinny Puppy was a lot like my friend Richie. All right. He's from a band called Misfit Toys. All right. Which is a pretty good industrial band. Yeah, very good band. But when you were seeing... Seeing Kevin Key was like seeing Richie. But it was like back in the day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Bryce Pardo says Lovecraft's fiction is amazing. Haven't read Poe. Oh, you should. Um, everyone has their favorite stories. His horror stories are great. His detective stories are great. He also wrote uh funny shit and parodies, which a lot of people don't know. Probably my favorite. Everybody's got different favorites. My favorites are Mask of the Red Death is my number one favorite. Telltale Heart is close second. But all his shit is good. Pit in the Pendulum is good. Cask of Amontillado is good. And they're all like really short. He was really good. He had a kind of philosophy. He wasn't real like stringent about it. But Poe had a philosophy. He thought that horror suspense fiction was better when it was succinct. As in, um, we're just talking about one event, one day, whatever. It was just like a really short amount. Like he thought it was more impactful when it just, when it was like really short like that. And it just covered a small period of time. It covered one event. And that was kind of his philosophy about it. He wasn't like super strict, like I said, but that was kind of his guideline. You know what I mean? So what are you doing? Nothing. Okay. I don't know. You're just dropping to... glasses. Okay. Um. Yeah. So Poe goes to uh, West Point under a different name. He was not, he had been in the army previously, uh, but he was not super happy about being at West Point. And so he uh, apparently deliberately decided that he was going to get uh, kicked out. So he kind of tried to do that and was successful by all accounts. Uh, didn't show up for his stuff and whatever he was supposed to show up for. So he got kicked out. Uh, he got expelled. So uh, at that point, he moves to New York City. And then he published another volume of poems and, um, which was actually like, you know, some other, it wasn't just his shit. It was like other people's shit too. So then he goes back to Baltimore and then he started writing his short stories. Now, 1833, he writes manuscript found in a bottle and this story, which is actually quite good. Um, he actually won 50 bucks for that, which back in 1833, that's a good amount of money, $50, um, you know. So then he goes back to uh, Richmond and he gets a job as an editor of the Southern Literary Messenger. This was in 1835. And at this point, he becomes a literary reviewer. Now, as I said, at the time, he was probably, he was known for The Raven and stuff like that, but he was probably better known as a literary critic. Now, he was known as being a really, what's the word? Um, he didn't like mince any words. If he didn't like your shit, he was going to say it in no uncertain terms. He kind of got in trouble because uh, he called Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who at the time was like a very famous poet, obviously, in the U.S., uh, calling him outright a plagiarist. So he kind of got a lot of flack for that. Um, but yeah, so he if he didn't like your shit, he was going to say it right out where everyone could read it. Um, so he was kind of called, uh, he got a nickname, the Tomahawk Man, because of the shit that he would say about other writers. <laughs> Which is weird because, like I said, in his personal life, sure, in his personal life, um, he was actually a pretty fun... There is that Damn my door, door the doorknob keeps falling off. <laughs> the doorknob on the outside of the door, it's like it doesn't it doesn't click into the thing. So like every now and then when you go out of the room like you know, then you pull it, it's just like it falls off. I don't know. This house is not that old. I just I don't know what the problem is. But uh yeah, so the doorknob keeps falling off. But yeah, so 
so he was kind of, um, but in his personal life, he was actually kind of like a pretty cool dude. And a lot of people said he was very uh, social. He was very fun. Like when he was, uh, particularly with his uh, wife, who was very young, obviously, but they were apparently uh, very in love and they would do like fun shit. They'd be like out in the yard, like fucking messing around like playing fucking piggyback rides and shit like that like he was like a fun dude you know what i mean he wasn't like this he he wasn't like people perceived him i guess he wasn't like this melancholic type of dude that a lot of people kind of like see him as now he was a fun guy so uh yeah so he um so uh he wins 50 dollars from this magazine then he goes and uh, gets a job as the editor of Southern Literary Messenger. And then, like I said, he ends up marrying uh, his cousin, Virginia Clem. Now, I know this is weird. And like I mentioned earlier, Virginia Clem, when he married her, was either... Sources differ. I kind of feel like like a lot of people said that she was 13. And some sources said, no, she was 12, like going on 13. Because he lived in the house with her because he was friends with her mom um you know because they were kind of related sort of and he had this really kind of i don't know it was this very strange relationship where he saw virginia the you know the 13 year old girl he saw her as kind of like a cousin and a sister but also kind of in a sexual kind of way i don't know it's kind of weird so, um, you know, uh, that is creepy, but by all accounts, he was 26 when he married her. They lied about her age. They said that she was 21 on the marriage certificate. I've seen it. Um, but I will say that as creepy as that is, he did seem to have genuinely cared about her he did seem to have genuinely been in love with her and not just in like a weird creepy i'm an old dude like being into a teenage girl kind of way you know what i mean not justifying it necessarily but it doesn't seem all that creepy to me because he didn't seem to have that creepy of an attitude toward her because to be honest like after she died and even before like he uh met her he did seem to kind of go after like women kind of more of his own age and stuff. So I don't know. It, it, it's just, it's weird, but it's not as weird as some other people <laughs> that I can think of. So, uh, and he was also good friends with, uh, with her mom as well. So he eventually again ends up getting fired from his, uh, job as editor of the Southern literary messenger, most accounts say that it's probably because of his drunkenness. Now, the thing about Edgar Allan Poe was that um, he may or may not allegedly have had a brain lesion that made him not be able to tolerate alcohol because several of his uh, associates at the time mentioned that he only had to drink like a glass of wine and he'd just be like staggeringly drunk. And apparently his sister also had the same thing. So it might've been some kind of genetic uh, predisposition for not being able to handle their alcohol. Um, so Poe might've had that allegedly. I'm not, no one really knows for sure. I'm but just telling that to my buddy Saad who's from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. That Europeans have a fucking very strong resistance to alcohol in general, especially care, especially compared to Pacific Islanders, uh, Native Americans. They just did not evolve for fucking 2000 years in the presence of fucking alcohol. Well, it's a different thing. It's a very different fucking deal. Honestly, I drink a lot. Yeah. But when I was in the UK, I was yeah. floored. Right. Well, by the amount that they could drink and still yeah. be like functional. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then I didn't even notice that they right. were drunk because it's like, I can have maybe two or three right. and then I'm like, oh, ooh, I start getting a little fucking bleh. But over there, they they would drink like all day. They'd be like, yeah. in the afternoon, they'd be sitting in front of the TV, just yeah. beer, like, and big beers, like yeah. not just like a shitty little beer, back, a big one. Back in the day, um, back when the army was fucking rational and credible, fucking 
Pacific Islanders, Micronesians, they were all kind of banned from alcohol, all right, because we saw it ourselves. I mean, I saw it one drink, and they fucking lose it. Well, see, Edgar seemed to have had that, that same thing. Right. I mean, from every, like, they don't know because it was a long right. time ago. But from a, um, mm. what a lot of his friends have said, like, dude, he would drink one glass of wine and he'd be fucked up. Right. Um, which is not normal. Uh, so, you know what I mean? So it that might have been some, like, uh, contributing factor. And like I said, it's by, genetic. by all accounts, like, I think his sister had that as well. So it might have been, yeah. like, a genetic thing. It's genetic. Yeah, I think it might have been. So, uh, yeah, so he got fired from uh, his editor job at the Southern Literary Messenger. Most people think it was probably because of uh, drinking. And then um, he kind of went, he went to uh, New York City for a time. Now, as I said, because he seemed to have a problem holding his alcohol, you know, if you want to put it like that, uh, I guess a lot of uh, rumors arose that he was like a drug addict or something like that. But by all accounts, I mean, even like from autopsy and shit, because they've done like uh, samples of his hair and shit like that, because they still have some of that. Um, it doesn't appear that he was all that much into stuff. Right. And honestly, before he died, he had stopped drinking because yeah. he knew he had a problem with it. Now we got a uh, Bryce Pardo said we Pacific Islanders can't have milk either. Straight to the toilet. Yeah, I saw that with Co Koreans. Lactose well, it, intolerance. It's very common. Or yeah. Lactose intolerance yeah. is actually more prevalent than being able to digest We had it. We had uh, Korean augmentations of the United States Army. Katusas. They were our fucking interpreters. I had one named Kim. Fucking Private Kim was a fucking good friend of mine. He loved fucking milk when I gave it to him in the chow hall. He's like, oh, man, this is great. We walk out of the chow hall. He's, he's fucking like, throwing it oh, up everywhere. No. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. going, dude, what happened? And then my fucking, my, my, my squad leader came in and he goes, wait a minute, he drank milk? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, Koreans can't have milk. They're lactose intolerant. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm sorry, Kim. I didn't know. And he goes, tastes good, though. Tastes good, though. Yeah, it tastes good. And <laughs> <laughs> tastes good though <laughs> i mean a lot like i said i think there's on earth i think there are more people that are lactose intolerant than not yeah well we didn't really you yeah. you didn't evolve didn't you evolve, huh? you evolved to drink milk from your mother's breast for yeah. two years or yeah. whatever but after that he eventually, you're not really supposed to drink milk anymore he eventually able was able to overcome it he drank very small amounts of it over time yeah you but, can and, get over and, it he got over it but no nah, he was chugging big old fucking glasses of milk he loved it. he goes what's it taste like and i said like ice cream but not as sweet he goes like ice cream is that yeah see oh it's good drank a whole fucking big old tall glass like that one oh, dear. and then he's eating and, he's and like, then he goes oh, back and he goes no. and he comes back with another one and he drank another oh, one no. he threw that shit up every fucking where scott ann says but cheese though i know i, yeah, I don't think yeah, i get yeah. up with it without cheese i would hate to be lactose intolerant that would suck so much yeah but like i said i think lactose intolerance is a lot more common than yeah. being able to digest it well because i mean it, it's kind of like like you said it's a european thing because mm -hmm. they started raising cows like uh, you know yeah. other than other parts of the world they didn't really do they that they didn't really do that yeah so they don't we, have we just kind of got for... used to it from like doing it Lactic so acid. much yeah and finally our bodies were like fine we'll digest it it's actually Stop. not it's actually not good for you it's not really. but but we we're tolerant to it um i love milk but i've also gotten a taste for almond milk and the reason why I drink almond milk is it's lower in calorie. Almond That's milk is right. actually quite good. It's it's good once you once you once you get, it's it, better get over than, the expectation of the thick, rich. It's better than soy milk. Oh I yeah, will say that. yeah. It's pretty good in cereal. Um, but like I said, I did it just because it was lower in calorie. Yeah, so it's, it's way calorie. lower. Than, way well, lower. to be honest, I had a problem because when I was growing up, like as a kid, I yeah. loved milk. Yeah, oh my yeah, god. Right. I would drink, like no, I didn't like soda. Yeah. I didn't all I would drink was ice water and iced milk. Zachary's in, bro. Zach. Yeah, he was I, here before. I got a question for you, bro. Is it gay for one man to use another man's flashlight. flashlight after he used it? And I said, 
that you would say I'm, my my prediction was that you would say no that's not well, gay some people that's... said that's a very vague some people said if you well obviously if you're in the same room as the person and you look the person in the eye then yeah that's gay but it's like or if you don't wash it beforehand there's like there's so many factors that aren't if you being have addressed. sex with a woman and then your friend has sex with that same woman does that make him gay i don't think so. well I'm see just that's saying, what i said see yeah I don't think it's because if you're thinking of a woman the same way that you think of a fleshlight, yeah, which yeah. a lot of dudes do, let's be honest, <laughs> then if you don't think of the first situation as gay, like I'm banging this girl, and then the next day that dude banged her. This is what sex is. This is what sex is. And that's not gay. Well, then using the same fleshlight isn't gay either because that's the same. It's, it's just an object. Like this right? is what fucking this is what sex is. It's not gay if you don't know that another man used it beforehand. Okay, okay. all right. See, that's fair enough. Okay, <laughs> if you don't know. Well, but you if you know, if you, you know that he used it, though, is it gay? I mean, even if you washed it out, let's say, dude, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I mean, that's, I know my opinion doesn't really count or anything, but it's just kind of, I'm yeah. going to say no because, well, like, as long as you wash it, but you should do that anyway. Yeah. Just don't like wash things that other people put their dicks in. That's like a good just rule of thumb. Yeah. So, <laughs> or rule of dick or whatever you want to say. What? But uh, yeah, just wash shit that other people have touched. That's always a good rule. Um, and as long as the other dude, like I said, is not looking at you at the time, you, as long as you're on your if own. You're not looking at the man in the eye when you're coming. <laughs> right. It's like, but this is. Because that's, that's a little questionable. The way, you... what I predicted, <laughs> what I predict is. What I predicted fucking Zach was going to say is like a man, one man using another man's fucking flashlight is not gay. That that's it. That that shit is sexy. That's what I thought. That's I thought you were going to say, no, it's not gay. That's sexy. Well, like and I said, send me some pictures. I think that's, I thought that's what he was. There's saying. a lot of caveats yeah. though. It's a, like, yeah. could it be sexy? Sure. But it's yeah. like, there's a lot of like parameters that we have to establish first. Everything well, let, let's say let's say let's say we're getting down in a threesome, right? We got some other girl. Just hy hypothetical, just, hypoth okay. just a hypothetical thing. We're we're getting down in a threesome. Oh, he's like he's telling me what he wants to happen. So I get it. I get it. Maybe this shit already happened. We don't fucking know. It did but already just... happen. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but if you got if you got if you got a fucking like a fucking a big old fucking dildo in one girl and then you're working on her and then you move to the other one is that no lesbian? wash it wash it is that that's not lesbian is that you gotta wash it all i'm saying is wash it oh my god that's so good so, that's so you're in the middle of a fucking threesome and you're gonna pull it out of one girl and wash it and Dude, put it in the get other one two. Oh, okay don't be gross it's gotta be it can't be the same i'm one. just a, like nobody so that nobody means wants... i can't jump from one to the other nobody wants somebody else's okay. cooties okay so that means i can't jump from one to the other I don't want somebody to okay, sell the chick right. cooties. I don't know where she's been. Okay. Holy crap. What if you do know where she's been? Well, that might be a different situation. Wait, if I, I know talking. where she's that's been. A, yeah, that's what I thought. But you just picked this from a rando. Okay. Like no, 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 not random. Not Zach random. says, is it gay if you're in a gangbang and a bunch of dudes are getting in the same cooter? That's what I'm saying. That's what we're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look, look, Zach, you know what? So many germs. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this, dude. I'm so gonna, many germs. I know. This is what I'm gonna say, is that Jack about the uh, Zach about the gangbang thing. I'm gonna say it is kind of gay. Every time I see a fucking video of these gangbang things, it, I see more dudes than women, and it does seem gay to me. It just does. I'm just saying, like... All I can think of is, man, that poor woman. It looks She's probably me. just, like, laying there going, God, I wish I had a book. It looks like whoever... <laughs> it looks like whoever orchestrated this fucking... This this thing. Was a dude? Was, was a dude and maybe, well, like, obviously. was more into the dudes than the woman in a certain way. It just... That looked, too. It, it seems kind of gay to me. Especially if Italians were involved. Okay. Just saying, man. There's a Just fucking randomly. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It's not random <laughs> at all. It's not random at all. If it's an Italian fucking gangbang film, it seems to be a lot gayer than a fucking than an American gangbang film. Just saying. Sorry, I just uh, for I some just reason say, I just randomly this is what I do. I, I ran think that, I randomly think of I mystery think science some, theater sketches. I think there's some more homoeroticism going on. I thought Italian. of this one. I can't remember. They did an Italian movie. It might have been Devil Fish or something yeah. like that. And there was a sketch where Crow decided that he was going to make his own line of men's 
sunglasses, but they were clearly women's sunglasses, but he was trying to make them seem like they were men's sunglasses. And everybody, like Mike and Servo were like, these are so woman-y. <laughs> and like, he was just like, no, they're for men, <laughs> but they were clearly women's sunglasses. So if you've seen it, you'll think it's funny. Straw of knowledge but, um, asks a fucking good question though. Is it gay? If while you're watching Point Break, that's what I was I just think gonna the read. Keanu Reeves is more attractive than Laurie. Uh, Keanu Reeves is more attractive than Laurie <laughs> Petty, so I'm not really sure. Like Laurie Petty is cute too, but I'm just saying, I don't know, man. I don't know. Serpent Service is not gay. It's just with the Italians. It's just a machismo thing. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. I think that is it. That is it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Zach jumps in and says, and says to us. Uh, uh, all I know is that it's impossible to not to, to okay. We got we got our token gay, okay, Zach, <laughs> coming in saying. How do you that, feel about that? All thing? yeah yeah. All I know is is that it's impossible to deny that men give better head. Yeah, but women give better head to women because they yeah. know they know what what, it what feels to like. do yeah, and they know, know what it feels like. Yeah. So it's the same kind of situation. That's all I'm saying. Call me Zach. <laughs> that's how weird it's true i'm a girl i know what thing. another girl like thing. i know that what that feels yeah. like so it's like you know you're better at it's it. just okay people what okay people we gotta get back to fucking po i know it's going down on the fucking side the fucking crowd's loving it all right we're still losing viewers though this shit's getting too sexual for him Forget. Tila says that African American lactose intolerance is a thing for us. Some Asians too. Like I said, lactose intolerance is actually the majority of people in the world yeah. are lactose intolerant. Like, you know, only people that are descended from a specific like yeah. part of like Europe and stuff are can digest that. Back in the back in the honky motherland, we are corn fed, milk raised motherfuckers, big legged motherfuckers, big calves, drinking that fucking drinking that cow milk. Uh, it's part of our fucking genome. I'm talking about. We can do it. It makes you fat, though. It's it got, does. It makes and honestly, fat. to be honest, yeah. like I love milk and I love like dairy yeah. products, but it's, it makes you fat. It still kind of like uh, gives me an upset stomach. Also, it doesn't upset my stomach. It's just that you gain it upsets a lot, my stomach too. You gain a lot of weight on it, but I love fucking cereal. I can still eat it, but yeah. it's just kind of like it. It's always like, ugh. yeah. So I have a little bit of like lactose intolerance. Yeah. Hello, family. I'm home now, says Ken. Ken. Hey, how are you? Zach says, I'm so happy that I have no food aller allergies. I love peanut butter. Yeah, Banana me too. And ice cream. Way I mean, much. honestly, I lucked out because yeah. a couple of like my sister is allergic to everything. Like not food yeah. so much, but like she's allergic to like fucking to be spores yeah. in the air and everything like that. And she's always like stopped up. And I'm just kind of like, I'm pretty much, I don't think I'm allergic to anything. I do have a sensitivity to MSG. Yeah. So if I eat like ramen noodles and shit, like with the packet that has MSG in it, then I will get a blinding headache. I had some leftover spiral cut fucking uh, ham. It was spiced ham. And the fucking ham bone. And I made some fucking... Split pea soup today that was good. Really oh, it's really yummy. It's really I good. might have some more after the show. Actually. Served it with crackers. It's good. I put it in the back refrigerator. I'll bring it back out if you want it. Yeah, we can have some. Well, you know, we can have some more later. Getting kind of I, late. Well, I mean, that's my post shit because you were like talking oh, about shit, this. Oh, shit, shit. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go Holy crap. Go oh, ahead, you, oh, you forgot we had a show that we, we were like show. talking I about? I forgot we had a show, yeah. Oh, my God. You're right. I forgot we had a show. I mean, it's fun and everything. I forgot. Wait. <laughs> he forgot. Yeah. So, like I said, so a lot of people kind of have the perception that Poe was this like crazy drug addict or whatever. Not really. Um, he was kind of like he he did like the drinking, but thank you, Ken. Miss your lives, but I'm loyal to friends and family. Love you. Oh, thank we love you, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you for showing yeah. up. We're still gonna like we haven't even like started talking about Poe yet. So, even though we're like four and a half hours in. So I still haven't even like got to my fucking subject. Tina's laughing at me going, Tom, I don't know what you're talking about, fucking Tina. You could be laughing. Well, at that's me, just like general. Yeah. That's just a general like laughing at you. Yeah. But yeah, so 
So I think there's a perception that he was one of those. Because you know how there was that whole thing about that time period, like, oh, those crazy artists and they went to Paris and they were all in all this absinthe and they were hallucinating and shit. So I kind of feel like, even though Poe didn't do that, I kind of feel like he gets lumped in with that. Um, he did like the drinking, but he didn't, I don't know, like, I guess he was an alcoholic, but like I said, he didn't really have uh, alcohol tolerance. And the thing about it is that he realized it because he knew that he had a genetic uh, predisposition to not be able to hold the liquor. So he did actually quit later. So I don't know. So I feel like there's kind of a lot of like misperception about him. But, and the thing about it is that when he tended to get fucked up and drunk and do some fucked up shit, he was usually in public. So other people saw it. So it was kind of like, I was that, was, no, that kind of like contributed to the public, uh, you know, I was always perception. under the impression that Poe's uh, personality was one of kind of like a regular dude, but he was kind of had a little bit of a darker, depressing attitude towards yeah, yeah. it. He was talented. Um, he... He drank, but he couldn't really hold it that well. Yeah. But he wasn't like a partier, kind of like some of the other ones like Not you're really. talking about. Not really. I think he was just kind of a regular dude in, in a lot of ways. That's Try, kind trying of like, to do shit. Yeah, that was like my that perception was my of perception him also. also. Yeah. That was my perception right. of him also. He was, he was um, I would kind of say he was a normal functioning guy trying to make a, a living but I, there was a lot of regrets in him. He was kind of like not happy with the way life works. Well, and he was writing stories about how you're kind of doomed in life. And I you think that's what he talked. It was that, the time too. Well, Edgar had um his life was kind of like look, his dad took off. I mean, his dad fucked around on his dying mom in the house while she was dying yeah. and edgar saw all that shit um so well he was planting seeds for the future <laughs> okay. but yeah, yeah so there was that, rough, that rough. yeah that's pretty, that's pretty fucked rough. up at least don't do it in the house man i mean don't do it period but at least if you're gonna well, we do don't... it at least don't do it in the house well it's mitigated. she was dying of tuberculosis mitigating circumstances maybe sure. maybe he didn't like her to begin with but maybe like i said were... don't bring it to the house because that's right. just you know yeah. that's like really we tacky. don't know exactly that's what the tacky. deal was it could have been that they were on the outs even before she got sick so we don't know right it could be yeah. but i'm just saying that it's not a good look is no. what i'm saying no there's and a Edgar certain line a, you're not supposed to cross when it comes to respect. Edgar was a kid. Yeah. And he exactly. saw that. And he was kind of like, oh, dudes are the worst. And they'll just like, fuck her. And like, you know, these ladies are dying yeah. or whatever. And it's like, so his mom died of tuberculosis. His stepmom died of tuberculosis. His brother, Henry, also died of tuberculosis. And later, spoiler alert, his wife, Virginia, would also die of tuberculosis. So you can see how... He had, right um, <laughs> yeah, he had like, um, this in a lot of ways, he was a normal dude, but he had like a lot of, like a lot of his loved ones died of yeah. the same fucking thing. And he watched them die, like coughing blood up and shit like that. And his wife, Virginia, it took her five years yeah. to die five years. And he took care of her that whole entire time. Yeah. Well, it was a pandemic based kind of, they didn't, yeah. they didn't have antibiotics then. I mean, that's awful. That was something you can cure easily today, but not back then. I mean, that's awful. So it's kind of like his whole experience with life was people, like women that he loved, people that he loved, dying young yeah. of that. And seeing them laying in bed coughing blood up, and it's just kind of like... So I think that's kind of where a lot of the ideas for his shit came from, because... You know, in a lot of ways, like I said, he was a regular dude. He had a classical education. He was kind of expected to be, and he was, he wasn't like H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, H.P. Lovecraft had um, a lot of issues, a lot of psychological issues. Edgar Allan Poe, I don't feel like he had a lot of those kind of issues. He was pretty much a normal dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, he had some like melancholy. Yes, he had a lot of tragedy in his life. Yes, he had, you know, a wild imagination, obviously. He was a genius in a lot of ways, but 
he was a very social person. Nobody said that he was like socially awkward. Nobody said that. I mean, he didn't have any problem with the ladies. He didn't have anything like that. Yeah. Hold on one second. Tila's in there talking to uh, um, uh, Bryce, and Bryce is mentioning that as a mar as as a as a Maori that um, part of the diet was human flesh. Yeah, um, Tila, it's funny. When I was in the army, the Micronesians and the Samoans were constantly fighting, and uh, the Samoans would threaten the Micronesians, and fucking, we would be like, man, what the fuck? He goes, those motherfuckers are food. And back in the day, Samoans and ate Micronesians. They're, they're cannibals. That's part of their fucking warfare and their heritage. I liked them both, though. Samoans were big, mean motherfuckers. And Samo and, and Micronesians were smaller, fucking tough motherfuckers. They they fought each other for a long time over those islands. It's a forgotten part of fucking world history. A lot of fucking Westerners do not understand the history of those damn islands, and they all end up in the army. A Micronesians would go through like these Olympic events to get into the U.S. Army because they were U.S. protectorates, and then they'd send a lot of their money back home to their families to keep them fucking, you know, keep them fucking. In, in some money. So they were kind of like mercenaries. They were like our version of the Gurkhas. The British would know what I was talking about. But no, big respect. Big respect for the Islanders, man. Fucking got a lot of Islander friends from the service. Still still in contact with them on Facebook. But yeah, yeah, they're cannibals. Or they're ex-cannibals. But you got to understand. Motherfuckers got to eat, you know? Well, if there's nothing eat. to eat and you're standing yeah. in front of me. And you're an enemy... You're not going to waste that meat. Probably I'm just going to eat you. And then you're going <laughs> to brag about it. You know what I mean? When a small one tells a Micronesian, motherfucker, you're just food. You know what I mean? <laughs> I respected that. man. <laughs> uh, they were funny, you know. Ken says, I never yeah. knew that Poe was around so much death. No wonder he wrote what he yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah he did I mean, if, from... When he was a kid. Right. I mean, his biological mom, his stepmom, like yeah. he saw so many people around him die of the same disease. Yeah. Um, so he was kind of used to, and honestly, considering like what he dealt with, uh, mm. he's actually like a lot more normal than, like I said, you know, we're comparing him to H.P. Lovecraft only because H.P. Lovecraft is the other kind of horror titan of the time and who was like massively influenced by Poe. H.P. Lovecraft, uh, by comparison, had a pretty normal upbringing, um, kind of like a little bit of a privileged upbringing, although his family had kind of lost a lot of its wealth by the time he was born. But I don't think Lovecraft put up with all the shit that Poe put up with. And, uh, you know, by that token, Poe was a lot more normal than Lovecraft was. Poe was, by all accounts, like I said... He didn't have a problem with the ladies. He was no. a fun dude. Like yeah. a lot of people said, he was very social. He was very gregarious. He was yeah. very outgoing. Um, he knew how to like charm people. He was very charming. Um, so he he wasn't like H.P. Lovecraft was a little bit of a weirdo. Yeah, Lovecraft. Well, okay, I'm gonna defend both. Poe was a regular guy. Yeah, he was a regular working man who had fucking suffered a lot. He saw the darkness. Okay. He wrote about the darkness. Lovecraft was an insular guy. Yeah. All right. Very much in growing up in his house around his family. The outside world was hostile from his point of view. Other ethnic groups were hostile. He's trying to fucking keep himself within a certain role that he was told to be in. Of an Anglo-American, he in felt Boston. like he should be right. like um, a right. nobility. Exactly. Yeah. His family was telling him that he was an Anglo-American, and this is how you do things. The rest of these people are foreigners, so he was he was on a lot tighter rails, you know. Uh, he was not in. He was not socially uh, adept. This is not the kind of guy that could go into a bar. And talk to ladies and fucking get a girlfriend. Really, he was not the kind of guy to go to a fucking pub and make friends. He probably he, would not have gone into nah, a pub, period. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. That just wasn't his scene. Nah. He was the kind of guy that. Poe would have done it. Yeah, Poe, no problem. But not, not, not Lovecraft. 
And I got to say that that weird ass upbringing of Lovecraft is what helped that writing be so fucking strange. Yeah. A normal person doesn't think like that. Another person doesn't write like that. And 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 really that's where you, you motherfuckers got to suffer to get good art. That's just that's just the universal. Uh, the thing is, is you can't manufacture that suffering. It has to happen by accident. It's fucking it's analog. It's natural. He had a weird upbringing. He produced weird stuff. It stood the test of time. That's, and I mean, the full. thing about it is I think he just lucked out because a lot of people Love crap. Yeah. Uh, had weird upbringings and then they wrote stuff and everyone was like, yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, but Lovecraft but for some talented. Re- for some reason, yeah. Lovecraft, he was really talented yeah. and he hit upon something that was in many ways... Even though it was unique to him, it was universal. Yeah, and every well, and everyone kind of got it. That alienation he was going through, a lot sure. of people feel. That's what I mean. It's so just, he accidentally right. kind of stumbled into yeah. that. Um, some people are talking about the movie uh, The Raven with John Cusack, which actually I want to do that for the week I'm on vacation. I wanted to like do because somebody sent us a a, a Blu-ray or DVD of that, and it's a good movie. I watched it a long time ago. Um, and we need to do a review of that. So yeah. that's one of the ones that I want to do. The some, I um we saw a documentary where it was uh, I think it was some black chick was talking about how much she liked Poe's writings, but that Poe wouldn't like a person like me because of you know my color. And I was thinking Wait, Lovecraft, to my, you mean not Lovecraft, Poe. excuse me, Lovecraft. Yeah, I was like Poe. And I was thinking from. I was thinking to myself, <laughs> no, actually Lovecraft would have liked you. Because what the deal was is that Lovecraft was othering people, all right, and that he was doing it by because of his upbringing. If somebody came into his little sphere as a fan of his writing, no, he would have liked a person. Because I've known people that are like that. It'd be like, oh, oh, you like what I wrote? It, it, they're not. They're not fucking trying to exude hatred on other people. It's fear that they have. Yeah. That's why they're writing that way. Oh, you like what I wrote? And then, and, and, oh, okay. And, and it's the same thing about his girlfriend. His girlfriend was Jewish. She was other as a motherfucker. Yeah. And she actually promoted his career. And, and kind well, of Well, she was the him. big help to him, actually. Yeah. Like, swung, in the sense yeah. of, like, getting him kind of, like, out of his bubble. Yeah, right? yeah. He was a bubble man. He was a little bubble. He, was a, he wasn't even a man. He was a bubble boy. He was young through, through a lot of that. Well, he died young um, also. Yeah, as, he died as young, did Poe. Yeah. Po. yeah. Uh, Honestly, he was a great writer, a very creative, not very experienced in, in personal life. Um, and that actually kind of helps because when he's what he's writing about is a thing of fear and wonder. An experienced person doesn't think like that. They don't write like that. They're not they don't see mystery that way. And they don't worry about angry gods that hate them. You know, they don't worry about that kind of stuff. Although, you're, like you're, what i'm just saying he's putting his fears and neuroses in people's in people's heads and that's what made him so good and he, and and I, I got oh i forgot to, i forgot to mention this i'm not as educated as jenny in these old writers but i did notice that from reading lovecraft lovecraft is the first example of what i would call world building do you notice that? You could probably say that. I mean, it was building a world in the way that fucking fanboys like it Star had been Wars done before that. But I think yeah. Lovecraft was maybe the first modern example of it, if you yeah. want to say that. But I don't know. And then after him, I would say the better version of of a world builder would have been Tolkien. Tolkien well, could yeah. build a fucking world. Well, I mean, everybody. Kind yeah. Of David June says Poe versus Lovecraft in a fist to fist battle. Who wins? Poe does. Poe. Yeah. Po Lovecraft was a, a wisp of a man. I no mean, Poe was kind of small too, but Poe was more. I, I kind of feel like maybe Poe was more of a scrapper. Yeah. Lovecraft had no physical abilities. Yeah. He was just kind of like a pasty yeah. mom's basement kind of motherfucker. Yeah. Poe actually had a life. Yeah. <laughs> Poe walked around. Well, he po did lived shit. in a dream. Poe did shit. He had but several he, like girlfriends. He had yeah. several, like Lovecraft kind of just stayed no. in his house. Yeah, and he, I love H.P. Lovecraft. I yeah. do. I'm just I'm, like I love both of them. 
But in a fight, Poe would win easy. Poe, yeah. In, po in, the, in, the, in the modern world, Lovecraft would have been a pasty motherfucker living in his mom's basement that had never had a job and is posting stuff on in some vlog somewhere that nobody's reading and some just some weird shit. That's what that's what Lovecraft would have been in the modern world. But that's not who he was in his own world. In his own world, he wrote some cool shit that stood the test of time. So and, I give fucking po I give And I like give, I said, it's kind of like but, yeah, you can like pick on him for like the person that he was, yeah. but oh, the fact that world. people still remember shit. Yeah. And honestly, there's like entire fucking movies and video games and like yeah. a whole fucking subgenre based right. on his shit based on Poe's shit yeah i would really like like i said i would love to bring poe lovecraft maybe but not as much because i feel like poe would be chiller about it yeah i would love to bring to the modern era and just show them that's like people remember you yeah like this because i feel like maybe at the time you don't know yeah you can't just dismiss poe because of the weird weirdness that he was he, what, he wasn't he, that weird but really. it wasn't well what i meant weirdness is he would not be politically he would not be socially acceptable today oh i don't, I don't know about that i don't what, know about that well the racism thing would have gotten his ass no canceled. lovecraft you're talking I mean, about. lovecraft excuse me, excuse me, excuse me lovecraft. you're you i'm trying I'm to talk about drunk. poe and you're going drunk. off on yeah, yeah we did a show on lovecraft yeah, 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 already yeah, yeah no. you know that right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm getting fucking confused lovecraft wouldn't have been acceptable today but well, no, that probably motherfucker not. was a, he was a genius. He did he did great. Lovecraft did great shit. And you can't dismiss him just on the foibles of his time. Um he gave us a lot. And he got better. He was just a man of his times and he was very innocent. He was an innocent, inexperienced guy. Poe was a regular man. Poe was. You know what I mean? He was a regular man of yeah. his time. Poe could fucking hang out today. Yeah, you brought yeah, him yeah. to nowadays, he'd yeah. probably like fit right in. Yeah. I think. If you were to tell Lovecraft, him Lovecraft, not so much. If you were to show him US <laughs> history and how things worked out, he'd go, he'd Oh, like, okay, right, yeah, that's I great. Yeah, that's great. That's cool. Well, because he, would... he wasn't just a horror writer, he right. was actually um he was actually pretty ahead of his time in a yeah. lot of ways. Right. A lot of ways. And now, he wrote a lot of shit other than horror. Had you shown Lovecraft American history after his life, he would have been horrified horrified over the world wars immigration and all that kind of shit he'd have been horrified he'd be like, oh no that's not acceptable but that's just who he was you know what i mean he was he was a little uptight yeah he, <laughs> oh you know we didn't rejoin the british empire you know, it'd have been shit like that because i'm kind of thinking that that's what he thought she yeah was. yeah we, oh, why didn't we why you know why didn't we rejoin the british empire you know why are we uh <laughs> why did we let all these irish in here <laughs> it would have been like it would have been that weird shit <laughs> daniel bauer says uh poe is my favorite fiction writer probably uh honestly probably mine as well um his stories i just go back to them over and over like i said i've probably mask of the red death is probably my favorite i wrote a novel red menace which was it wasn't based on that but it was kind of it had that as kind of like a plot element telltale heart and the Telltale Heart is probably yeah. my second favorite. I love that because that's a very early example of the unreliable narrator. Yeah. And I really, really like that. Murders in the Rue Morgue? Murders in the Rue Morgue. Uh, first um, detective story. Yeah. And, spoiler alert, it was an ape. Yeah, an ape did it. An orangutan. It was an orangutan. Did it was an orangutan. Which is the least likely to actually do it. Well, Chef, yeah, but... Maybe, but not an orangutan. But, you know, that's... it was He was a man of his time. They just came up. Yeah, with I kind of feel like a chimp is more a chimp murdery, more, a more murdery than an orangutan. Yeah, but it's not impossible. Yeah. I'm just saying. He was good, man. I'm gonna give Poe. I'm gonna give Poe credit. Although I still love all his stories. Yeah. To be honest with you, he was good. Well, he laid the foundation. He laid a foundation. Well, like I said, detective stories. He was the first dude to fucking do that. Yeah. Well, because he was really into. Not only he was he into, because you know, like I said, I feel like I, people have a perception of him as this melancholic, you know, he's writing these poems about all these women that have died, which was like kind of a big thing in his life. But you have to think, like I said, his mom, his step mom, his brother, his wife died of tuberculosis. They, he saw them die. It was a horrible way to go. And so he had a lot of that. Um, and he also, uh, you know, growing up with his stepdad, who was kind of a taint, um, <laughs> 
he kind of got the impression that it's like women put up with so much from these dudes and it's like these women he he kind of had a perception of women of these as these angelic creatures um that elevated a man because that's certainly how he felt about his wife virginia like i said you know who was very young when he married her but by all accounts he thought of her as someone who elevated him made him better um and they were always together like they hung out together all the time they were always like walking around the yard there was like singing songs having a good time like playing fucking piggyback or whatever in the front yard they were doing shit like that even though it was a, kind of a large age gap but yeah so um so like i said uh, there was a thing where what yeah, everybody hit the like button if you can um yeah, everybody's talking about fucking Poe in the uh, comment section. It's all good. Yeah, uh, Daniel Bauer says the Poe movies of Vincent Price are cool. I agree. Yeah. We just did uh, Mask of the Red Death not too yeah. long ago. It's they're dated, but you have to understand how how they work. They they are fun to watch, um, but they're they're they were important to fucking Eng to american english literature or american literature you know yeah in the american and in the, the way in in the way that uh the way that horror went you you just you had to have poe that was the beginning of it personally i'm going to say lovecraft was better in some ways he was weirder okay um in the Mountains of Madness was fucking... At the Mountains. At the Mountains of Madness. It was one of the greatest... Fucking... We already did a show on Lovecraft. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, I'm going to stop talking about it. Sorry. We already did a show on All Lovecraft. Right, I'm going to stop talking about it. A while it. back. Okay. All right. So, like I said, some people were, you know, there. there's a misperception that he was like a drug addict and all, all these other things. But really, it was just a thing where he didn't really have any uh, alcohol tolerance was his main problem. So, he goes to New York City... And in 1838, he publishes uh, The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, which I believe was the longest thing he ever wrote. It was like novel length. Generally, like I said, he kind of had a loose philosophy that he thought horror, suspense, stuff like that was better when it was short uh, because he thought it should just take place over one day or one event or whatever. He thought it was more impactful that way. But he did actually write a, a sort of novel length kind of thing. Um, so with that now, interestingly, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, which, like I said, longest thing he ever wrote might have been allegedly the inspiration for Moby Dick by Herman, Herman Melville. So there you go. Now, at this point, 1839, he becomes co-editor of a uh, gentleman's magazine, Burton's gentleman's magazine. This was in Philadelphia. And then at this point, he gets a, a contract for a monthly thing where he like writes something once every month. So at this point, he writes the very awesome short story, William Wilson, which was actually about a doppelganger and one of his most famous short stories, The Fall of the House of Usher. Uh, so that also came out as well. And so the thing about it, so then in 1839, same year, he publishes uh, Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, probably his best known uh, collection. And this was uh, 1840. It came out. Now, June 1840, he resigned from the magazine he was working at. But then later, 1841, he comes back to edit the magazine that took its place. Because like I said, there was like, newspapers and magazines were kind of coming and going at this point. There was another one called Graham's Ladies and Gentlemen's Magazine. Ladies and Gentlemen, that kind of covers everybody, doesn't it? So at this point, in this particular magazine, he publishes The Murders in the Rue Morgue. Now, this story in 1841 is significant because, as I mentioned... This is essentially the first detective story because Edgar Allan Poe was really, really into logic and reason and all that kind of stuff. Like he, yeah, he was into like supernatural. He was into horror and shit like that, but he was really like fascinated by uh, logic. And so he wanted to write a story where logic kind of solved the problem and it seems like old hat nowadays, but back then it really was not. So he was kind of like the first person to do that. So the murders in the Rue Morgue, as far as I'm aware, is considered the first detective story in at least American literature. Not sure about other 
parts of the world. So this is the first detective story. 1843, he writes another similar story called The Gold Bug, which is also awesome. Had to do with like cryptography, which was another thing that he was super into. Uh, and when he wrote that, he actually ended up winning $100, which like I said, doesn't sound like much nowadays, but it was probably a lot back then, uh, from the Philadelphia Dollar newspaper. And he got kind of a big deal for that. 1844, the following year, he goes, uh-oh, it's wig time. No, didn't stop talking about me. Well, you're distracting. Stop talking about me. You're distracting. Okay, go, 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 I can't, go, 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 like, go. talk. You're, like, doing Because okay. I don't know when you're going to sit down and, like, No, no, yapping, no. I want to so. get another drink. Hold on. So, 1844, the year after the gold bug comes out. Okay. Good. Are you sure? No, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. You're just going to put it on and be No, yeah, 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 put it on. It's have time. you re- have it's you read have you read the gold bug? What's Did that? you read the gold bug? The gold bug. The gold bug. It's uh, a detective story, like a detective story. I put it's a mystery on story. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, it's a good story. I, I saw the I movie did. adaptation. Of I think one. I did. Yeah. So that one hundred dollars, like yeah, like I said, I read all of his shit, but you know, yeah, but I like his horror shit, but he wrote other stuff too. Um. So 1844, he goes back to New York and he writes this story called The Balloon Hoax for the Sun. Like I said, he wrote satire as well, which a lot of people don't really know. Like he wrote like comedy and satire. There was a movie that came out. Thank you, David. Love wig time. You guys are the best. (laughs) That's all you got to do. You got to put your fucking Willy Wonka wig on. Yeah, I can't understand this shit. people. (laughs) That is a Willy Wonka wig. Wig, yeah. It, it used to be. Oh, okay. And not anymore. I'm just I've, like, adopted I've adopted this okay. shit. I've adopted this shit. I've adopted. I've okay. adopted it. It's my own at this point. There's a okay. So there's a movie that's on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it was based on one of Edgar Allan Poe's comedy stories. What the fuck was the name of that movie? Something. What an asylum shit. I'll think of it later. But yeah, so he wrote like funny shit too. Um, yeah, so at this point he becomes sub editor for the New York Mirror. And uh so at this point he publishes probably actually not even probably, definitely his best known work, The Raven, the poem. Now the Raven being published, like he was kind of well known in literary circles prior to that. When the Raven came out, it made him a household name pretty much overnight. But I will say, despite that, didn't really get him anything financial wise. I think differing sources say he either got nine dollars or fourteen dollars for the publication of the Raven, and that was about it. It's like everybody knew of the shit. Honestly, this poem was so famous that Edgar Allan Poe would walk down the fucking street and little kids would come up to him and like make like flap their wings like they were a raven and like hit him with sticks. And he'd be like, "Ooh, never more, never more. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they would. (laughs) that's how like everybody knew this fucking poem, but it didn't make him like a millionaire or nothing. Sadly, it should have because everybody knew that shit. But. And you have to think this is back in like the fucking 1830s, man, 1840s, when nobody like there wasn't he wasn't like on YouTube. No, there was no media. Nobody saw pictures of him or nothing like that. But everybody recognized him anyway, because everybody knew that fucking poem. Can you imagine somebody getting that famous for a poem nowadays? No, never happened. Everybody recognizing you in the street. But that's what happened. Yeah. Everybody recognized him. Everybody knew that fucking poem. Everybody. That's ridiculous. The thing about it. Two, another problem was that copyright laws back then, not so stringent. So what would happen is that he would publish something. Oh, everybody would like exclaim over it. And everyone was like super famous. But then like other places be like, yeah, we're going to publish that too, but we're not going to give you any money for it. So that was another issue. Yeah. Well, well, cause like I said, publish your shit. We're not gonna well, pay yeah, you. like nowadays, like back then, like nobody really thought anything of it. Cause copyright, what's that? It's like, nobody yeah. thought anything about intellectual property. Mm. Um, nowadays you wouldn't be able to get away with it back then. You could though. It wasn't really that big a deal, which might've been a big issue in why he was always fucking broke because 
his shit was super famous, but it was like, yeah, we're just going to like reprint this over here. Bye. We're not going to give you any money for it. That was like, uh, yeah, that was a big thing that happened. So that was another thing that was uh, kind of a problem. So <laughs> basically, huh, okay. So uh, what happened then? Now in 1847, uh, Poe's wife, Virginia, like I said, who he'd, he had married her when she was quite young. She died in 1847. And as I said, she very famously, and this is something that he actually wrote about later. Um, he used to like to uh, sing with her. They would, you know, play the piano or whatever in the, you know, parlor and they would sing together. And like her mom was there sometimes and like everybody would listen to her sing because apparently she had a beautiful singing voice. And... This one particular uh, night, they were playing a song and she was singing and she suddenly started coughing and blood came out of her mouth. And Poe immediately knew what that was. And I can't imagine like how fucking horrible that must have been because he knew what was coming, right? But like I said, she was still pretty young. She was tough. She She hung in there for five fucking years after that incident yeah. five fucking years and um he apparently he just diligently took care of her the whole entire time carrying her from the bed and like wherever she had to go i mean he yeah he married her when she was apparently just a kid but he apparently loved that fucking woman with every fiber of his being which okay i'll give him that I mean, he really did. He took care of her for five years while she was fucking dying. And it was just like really, really sad. And I got, I kind of feel like between his mom and his stepmom and his brother and then his fucking wife um, dying of the same fucking thing, you can see why he was a little bit fucked up and why a lot of his stories are the way they are. So, so she dies in 1847 and he's devastated about it. So the next year, he moves to Providence, Rhode Island, where H.P. Lovecraft was from, just, you know, while we were talking about Lovecraft. So uh, he kind of eventually he starts hooking up with this other woman named Sarah Whitman, who was also a poet. And uh, they briefly got engaged, but I don't think it worked out. Um, he also had some other friendships with like some other poets. He was, you know, he was kind of in the scene and there were a lot of female poets, uh, going around at the time. Now, 1848, he published something called, uh, Eureka, which was kind of like a poem essay sort of thing. And it was kind of like an explanation of the universe. Now, interestingly, there's a lot of shit in there that's like, pseudoscience or like not right but i will say that the shit that he says in there sounds kind of a lot like the big bang and this was like a couple decades before that was like actually discovered so just saying like he might have like figured out the big bang theory before anybody knew what the big bang theory was i'm just mm -hmm. saying um you know you, you could read that either way but and he like he even said he was interested in science but he wasn't real uh, scientifically savvy in the way that a scientist would be. He was kind of like more an intuition guy. But the fact that he came up with something that sounded almost exactly like the Big Bang several years before the Big Bang was invented, that's, or was thought of, that's, that's kind of a big deal. So yeah, there was that. So 1849, uh, he goes, uh, down to Philadelphia. Then he goes back to Richmond and then he gets engaged to this other chick, Elmira Royster, who he had actually, who had, he had actually wanted to marry when he was young before he'd even met Virginia Clem, but she had been engaged to somebody else. So that hadn't worked out. So he tried to like get back with her. That didn't work out. Thank you, David. Give Gary Lennon a good night story as BTK, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to get the BTK thing out. Um, yeah. So he's kind of like wooing some other chicks around this uh, point, hanging out with some other like uh, female poets or whatever. Now, let's talk about Poe's weird death. Because... Even nowadays, 
Nobody mm-hmm. knows what killed him or what the fucking situation was. Because how he died was, like, pretty mysterious, right? So, he leaves Richmond for Baltimore uh, late in September of, I believe it was 1849. Now, he goes to Baltimore. It's October 3rd, 1849. It's raining. Now, Edgar has apparently... No one's heard from him for a few days, for one thing. So there's this dude named Joseph W. Walker, which is weird because we have a friend kind of named something like that. Yeah. Um, He works for the Baltimore Sun, the newspaper there. So he's going to Gunner's Hall, which is a pub. Um, It was election day. This was, like I said, October 3rd, 1849. So election day, so it was kind of like uh, this pub was uh, sort of a, a polling place. So, you know, there was kind of a lot of activity on this particular day. So Walker shows up at this pub and he finds uh, a dude. Spoiler alert, it was Edgar Allan Poe. He's laying in kind of in the gutter. Uh, he doesn't seem to know where he is or what's going on. He's dressed in some clothes that don't really seem to fit right. And they're all dirty and stuff. And he's, you know, he's not super conscious. He can't really move. Um, So Walker comes up to him and he's like, what's the deal, man? And then he's like, hey, you're Edgar Allan Poe. He knew who he was. So uh, he's like, hey, um, do you know anybody around here that I can call? Like to help you or whatever. So Poe says, um, I know this dude named Joseph Snodgrass, who was uh, a magazine editor, but he also had had been to medical school as well. So he's like, call that dude. So because it was 1849 and nobody had cell phones or anything like that, Walker had to write this Snodgrass fellow a letter asking for help. Here is the letter. Baltimore City, October 3rd, 1849. Dear sir... There is a gentleman rather the worse for wear. I love that. Such an understatement. At Ryan's fourth word polls, who goes under the cognomen of Edgar A. Poe and who appears in great distress and says he is acquainted with you. He is in need of immediate assistance. Yours in haste, Joseph W. Walker. And that's uh, the letter that he sent. Now, interestingly, uh, as I mentioned, Poe had actually left Richmond, Virginia a week earlier, September 27th. And he was going to Philadelphia because he had uh, a thing where he had to, (laughs) there was this woman named uh, Mrs. St. Leon Loud who was writing a collection of poems and he was supposed to go there and edit it for her. Um, But he apparently never made it there and nobody really knows what he was doing in the days you know, between when he was supposed to meet this lady and when he turned up in the gutter. Like, so nobody knows where, where he was or what he was doing that time. So, uh, from when he had left, uh, Richmond. So, like I said, he never made it to Philadelphia. So basically, uh, what happens is that, uh, Snodgrass shows up, Walker's there. They find him in this gutter And he goes to like, you know, facility or whatever, like so they can look over him. He's there for four days and he's pretty much semi-conscious the whole entire time. So he's never able to tell anybody what happened, why the clothes he's wearing aren't his because they weren't, um, you know, why he seemed so fucked up, what the fuck was the matter with him, where he had been for the, like the last five or six days. Um, the night before he died, his attending physician, Dr. John Moran said that Edgar Allan Poe repeatedly cried out for a dude or a woman, we don't know, named Reynolds, but nobody knows who that is. He kept saying that name. Uh, they still don't know who he was referring to. So, he died October 7th, 1849. He just been found in a fucking gutter wearing somebody else's clothes and he never regained consciousness enough to tell anybody what the fuck happened to him, right? 
What are you doing? Don't worry about what I'm doing. Why are you distracting me like that? No, I'm just he's like I'm just creeping over. No, I'm just taking it. Oh, he's going to get one of my wigs, no, wait, probably. This he's going to get one of my wigs. That wig is it's saying special me. things. It's time for me. It's time for another. It's time for me. All right. So let's talk about some of the interesting theories. Why you put my purple wig on? Don't worry about the He's putting my purple. He's gonna pretend to be Danzig now. I'm not. I'm never gonna finish this show. No, I'm not. No, I'm not doing either. I'm never gonna. And you fucked up my lighting too because you left okay, that open. Hold on, hold on. Stop I'm, chiding me. Well, I'm supposed to Stop get the light chiding. bouncing off of the white, and you're. No, no, no. I'm finishing the show. No, I'm just trying to get keep your shit together. Keep your shit together. How much is together? Oh my bitch. god. No, it's not. Okay. It's really not. That's like not even straight. The part's like way over there on the side. <laughs> Tila says, uh oh, here we go. Yeah. All right. So, as I said, so Edgar Allan Poe is found in a gutter in Baltimore wearing clothes that aren't his. He's delirious. He just keeps saying the name Reynolds. Nobody knows who that is. He's not a lot. He doesn't like, he, he never like regains consciousness enough to say like what the fuck happened to him or anything like that. So, as you might imagine, like he died afterward. So as you might imagine, uh, a lot of theories have like sprung up over the years up to what the fuck is going on with this shit. So let's see. Theory number one. He was beaten to death. So one of the first uh, theories that comes out, and this was in 1867. Now, is this biographer, E. Oak Smith, she read an article and she speculated that what happened was that um, he had been kind of like, well, because the doctor said it was probably like phrenitis or something like that. Like he had some kind of like kidney ailment or whatever. But no one was happy with that. So everybody had to come up with other theories. Although I don't know, like I, I have some other theories too. But so this article comes out and apparently... This theory was that Edgar um, had what? 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 Nothing. Oh, I just... He I said that me and Jenny got to give you wig and wig fucking instructions. <laughs> well, he I look down and I see this fucking crazy he doesn't shit. Understand. I'm trying to get through the goddamn show. He doesn't understand. You can't just put a wig on and it looks good. You okay, got to put the wig out. You got to clip it. You got to brush it. You got to like spray it. You got to do all kind of shit. Like you would do that's with regular hair. I'm taking hair. that shit off. I'm taking, I'm taking wigs off. I'm taking the hair right now. I'm taking wigs off. Tila, I private, tried. I tried. A private channel for fucking, Tom like Buffalo Bill. Yeah, I fucking tried. Tell. God damn it. You could have left it on. I'm no, just, no. I'm just saying. Y'all want to fuck with me. I'm just saying. Y'all want to fuck with me. Don't get defensive. No, I'm defensive now. He's, he's defensive. I'm defensive. I'm, de I'm upset. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm upset in the face. Are, are you upset? I'm upset in the defense. She got a little upset. Okay. She got a little upset. It's gonna be okay. You're getting a little upset? No, 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 I'm okay. BTK is telling you you're getting upset. They got motherfuckers in the comments. He's gonna section. tie you I'm up looking, and kill I'm you looking in the comment sections and they're fucking with me saying you try to get me to talk like fucking Dennis Raider and shit like that. Fucking the voices come when they come. Dennis hasn't sent me any messages yet. I channel that shit when it happens. You're so drunk though, it should happen. No. All right. I'm mad. Are you? Oh, no, I'm not mad. No, I'm not oh mad. my god, no, I'm not mad. Just I'm pretending like I'm mad. I'm I mad. guess if you're so bad hurt. Why are you so bad hurt? Go ahead and hit that <laughs> like button, people. Go ahead and you hit the like button. Even though Tom's bad hurt, <laughs> Eric might be. <laughs> or fucking Dennis. Right. Dennis is. All right. So first theory that emerged. This was in 1867. Only a few years after he died. So they said, okay, well, apparently, uh, allegedly, Edgar um, got on the bad side of a woman or said he was going to do something and then he didn't do it or something like that. And then, like, associates of this woman, like, beat him up and, like, beat him to death. Well, beat him almost to death and they found him in the gutter. So that was, like, uh, one theory that was kind of going around. So, you know, that that was kind of like, and also there's kind of like a theory too that these people sort of knew him so they knew that he didn't have a high tolerance for alcohol. So they were kind of like, hey, let's go to the bar and they got him drunk and then they beat the shit out of him and then they just like left him there. 
I don't know if that's true or not, but that's like I said. Now, probably the most common theory about how he died was that he was a victim of what they called back then cooping. Now, this is kind of weird, but cooping back then was um, in the 19th century, there were gangs of people that would go around. They were hired by rival politicians to go around and drug people's drinks, put them in different clothing, like put them in different disguises and send them to the polls more than once, like to do voter fraud. Um, so that was kind of like a big widespread thing. And I guess it was like pretty widespread in Baltimore at the time. So that's why a lot of people think that maybe Poe had succumbed to it. And that would explain why he had some motherfuckers clothes on that didn't fit him right because they weren't his clothes. And the thing about it is like a lot of people knew what Poe's clothes looked like because he was broke dick and he basically only had one coat. <laughs> um, and that's cause he was poor. So I, I saw this documentary earlier that said he didn't even have like a good shirt to wear underneath it. So sometimes he'd put the coat on and he just like, he buttoned it all the way up. So people didn't know that he didn't have a shirt underneath because he couldn't afford one. You know what I mean? So it was that kind of situation. So it could be that he got attacked by essentially a cooping gang that I don't know if they knew who he was or not, but they might've been like, Hey, random citizen uh let's go to this bar and we'll get you a shot or whatever and he's just kind of like he was trying at this point in his life he knew that he couldn't hold his alcohol and he'd actually been sober for quite a while um but some people have speculated well if somebody like gave him a persuasion or maybe forced it on him they don't really know um that they could have gotten him drunk enough like they could have just given him one drink and then he'd be all fucked up and they're like, hey, let's go for this person and go for this person again and whatever. And they're, they just like kind of kick their ass and like leave them in the gutter. So I, I feel like that's probably like the most common uh, theory nowadays as to how he got killed. And that would also explain why he had like some randos clothes on, they which, think I'm, which is a little weird. But they think I'm offended. I'm not offended, man. I'm not offended. I'm just fucking loaded. I'm fucking drunk as shit. Uh, no, man. Uh, you want Gary me to put hair it... on? They want me to fucking put hair put on. Put hair on. Damn. Do it. Don't be a girl. Come and on. They want me to fucking sing Danzig songs and shit. Jenny's Gar got to finish the song. Let me go to the restroom. I'm going to go to the restroom and I come back. Maybe I'll... Maybe Gary I'll Lennon says, what time is it over there? It is... It's early. It's a... No, it's not. It's 11.09 p.m. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's what happens when you keep talking and you don't let me fucking finish shit. All right. So, like I said, cooping, maybe. Because um, that was kind of common at the time. It seems weird nowadays, but that's pretty common. Um, third theory, alcohol. Uh, like I said, he didn't really uh, have a good uh, tolerance for alcohol. One cup of wine and he was anybody's, as they say in the UK. Um, but the thing about that is that he knew about his, he had had some problems with the alcohol in the past, but he knew about that he wasn't tolerant of it. So he had actually been, he got like real up in the top, in the, um, you know, uh, what do they call it? The temperance movement. And by all accounts, he had been sober for a while, like before he died. And even when they did like DNA, like they tested his hair and all that kind of shit, they didn't find anything that would suggest that he was like totally fucked up when he died. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. Maybe somebody gave him like one drink and that was like too much and stuff. But I don't think he was like so drunk that he didn't like fucking know what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Because he had actually been trying to like, you know, fuck off of that. Some people, this is a little out there, but some people have also suggested uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, because apparently... I guess uh, the lighting that they used uh, in the 19th century was uh, usually like coal gas. And so maybe that contributed to his death. But you'd think that that would contribute to everyone's death back then because everybody had that. Uh, they did actually like test some of his hair looking for particular heavy metals that would be able to uh, kind of show that. But the results were inconclusive. So, you know. I don't know how much 
uh, credit you want to get that. Uh, some people also said that um, maybe it was some kind of heavy metal poisoning because they didn't really find any evidence that he had been like poisoned by coal gas. However, they did find uh, in his hair samples that he had a bunch of uh, mercury in his system. And this is going back a few months before his death. Now, this may have been because... Um, that there had been a cholera epidemic and he'd been exposed to that. Um, this was uh, a few months before he died. And uh, because he'd been exposed to cholera, his doctor had given him mercury chloride to keep him from getting it. So if he had been taking this, because... They, they had a lot of medications with mercury back then. I don't really think they knew how toxic it was. So if they had been giving him medications with that, then that might have explained why uh, he'd had some kind of like uh, issues with hallucinations and uh, other types of things. But like I said, in his hair samples, they did find a high uh, concentration of mercury, which maybe explained... What might have killed him, like I said, doesn't explain why he had some other motherfucker's clothes on, but you know what I mean. Um, because the okay, the, <laughs> okay, I think somebody rolled him. I kind of feel like that too. It was yeah. either because it seems weird, like he had some problems, like yes, he had a lot of mercury in his hair, but it was not enough <clears throat> to have killed him. I don't think it was enough yeah. to have killed him. And I don't think he was aware of his alcohol problem. So I don't think he would have deliberately on his own volition drunk enough to have killed him. It took four days for him to die after they found him in the gutter. He was just, but he was delirious the whole time. So I kind of feel like he either just got randomly beset by thugs that were trying to like rob him or whatever, or he was a victim of one of these coupon schemes. However, in 1996, one doctor, this is kind of interesting. So apparently something that they do every now and then is they go to a bunch of doctors and they say, Hey, um, we're going to give you a random, uh, list of patients. And these are their symptoms. What, what do they have? What do they die of? So they give people and they don't tell them who they are. And they're usually famous people. So, they give them to, they give them to these doctors. Now this one doctor gets Edgar Allan Poe. He doesn't know it's Edgar Allan Poe. All he knows is the symptoms. And he looks at the symptoms and he immediately says, of all things, rabies. He thinks, and he didn't know it was Edgar Allan Poe at the time. He just said, just going by the symptoms, I would say that he died of rabies. And so he's like, that would explain pretty much uh everything to do with not only like how what he presented with like when he was dying but also kind of the shit that people had said about him like in the days and months before he died um what they would like lethargy confusion um you know delirium visual hallucinations uh rapid shallow breathing uh apparently he had like <clears throat> his pulse rate was kind of all over the place. And the doctor thought it very significant that after the first manifestation of symptoms, four days later, he was dead. And he's like, that's very, very common with people that have rabies. So he thought it was rabies. I don't really know where Edgar Allan Poe would have got rabies from. It's not impossible. It's unlikely. If you ask but me. I'm just saying that a doctor that didn't know that he was diagnosing Edgar Allan Poe thought that it was rabies. But I'm just going to say, honestly, I don't think it was drunkenness. I don't think, I think he got his ass beat by a random ass. It doesn't sound like to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gang of thugs that were trying to rob him. Or it was just that, that cooping thing. I think it was one of those two things. Look, I'm going to say it was something that was just really common. You know, and not anything exotic. Dudes came about, came up on him. He was fucking drunk. They started making fun of him. They beat his ass and took his fucking clothes. All right. And then somebody who was taking his clothes 
threw their clothes down and said, here, you you know, he switched his clothes. They gave him shittier clothes. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Fit. That's what I think happened. I think he gets got rolled. It might have been. I mean, when it you, might have been. When you think. Although the fact that it was election day yeah. and that he was outside of a pub that was very well known for being a spot where those people that would do that cooping thing worked. Yeah. I kind of feel like that's probably what happened. Oh, we, oh, there was an election going on? Yeah, it was election day. That, that Maybe they paid him more. for his vote somehow. And well, no. Uh, remember, I, I just said yeah. earlier yeah. that something that went on a lot back then was called cooping. Yeah. Why not heard that? Well, they were they wouldn't pay you. They wouldn't pay you. What they would do is that they would essentially kidnap you. Yeah. And they would put you. They would kind of drug. They would give you drugged alcohol. Yeah. And they would put you in different outfits, and then take you to different polling places, and then after you'd voted however many times you could vote, they just like leave you in a fucking gutter somewhere. Yeah, but what's in it for for a mother? What what's it? What what what? what they just got hired. They got hired by. Well, he wouldn't have, but he didn't know what was going on. They would drug your drink, so he wouldn't have known what was going on. He'd have been like, what, whatever. You know what I mean? It they they drug impossible. you. It they drug impossible. you. Well, no, that was a thing that was going on at the time, though. That's why most people think that that was probably the most plausible thing that happened to him because that was a pretty common thing that was going on. And the fact that he was found in front of a pub that was well known for that and it was election day, that seems a little coincidental. Like, it's, I'm not saying that that's what happened to him. I'm just saying that seems like the most likely thing. And the fact that he was in like weird ass clothes that weren't his seems a little strange. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Although it could have been that he just, I don't know, went on a bender and was like, I found some clothes somewhere. I don't know. It's a, it just seems like, yeah, you can do some like weird shit when you're drunk, but by all accounts, he seemed like he was trying not to drink anymore because he knew that he didn't have a tolerance for it. So I don't know. Now, some people too, one of the other theories is that he died of a brain tumor and that was also what, uh, influenced his behavior before he died because what happened okay so after he died he gets buried in an unmarked grave in baltimore and what <laughs> fucking eric eric j said it, it was booty warrior cooping <laughs> eric j this they are saying they fucked they fucked for poe after they did the cooping thing <laughs> Booty Warrior Cooper. That's hilarious. Why do we have these motherfuckers in the damn fucking chat? I don't know. I can't understand. Eric J says, what type of clothes are we talking about here? I think we like regular clothes, but I think the thing that was weird about the clothes was that the clothes that they put him in God. were like shabbier than his regular, and they didn't fit him right. Yeah. I think they were like too small. Kind of like it wasn't his clothes. They Well, they, they know they weren't. Well, because yeah. like I said, Edgar Allan Poe, he didn't have a lot of d clothing options because yeah. he was poor. So people knew him and they knew that he always wore that one particular coat. So the one particular coat was not there. He was yeah. wearing some other coat that was too small for him. Yeah. So like I said, so let's talk about, like, okay, so the brain tumor theory. So Poe gets uh, buried in an unmarked grave at first in Baltimore. Now, 26 years after that, apparently everyone was like, oh my God, I can't believe we buried Poe in an unmarked grave. For fuck's sake, what were you even thinking of? So they decided they're going to put up a statue and like put up the do the whole deal. So they exhumed the body, like they dug the coffin up um, to move it to the new area. But, uh, Apparently the coffin and like the hadn't really been all that good at quality. So uh, the body was real decomposed. And so there was one thing that when they were digging up the coffin that they noticed, they said, you know, um, there was like this weird little mass that was rolling around inside of Poe's skull. Now, obviously that wouldn't have been his brain because that would have, uh, deteriorated over the time so some people have speculated you know it might have been a tumor because Damn. that might have still been there after all this time because the brain is just you know it, it just would have rotted away however some tumors are like made of stuff that maybe would have calcified so it's possible that he had a big ass tumor which also might have explained 
uh, why he couldn't handle his alcohol. Because a lot of, uh, you know, physicians later said that he maybe had a lesion on his brain that explained why he couldn't. How old was Poe when he died? Um, not old. Holy shit. Uh, 40? Yeah, I think it was only that old. I mean, it might have, yeah. Remember that girl that we knew that died of the brain damn tumor? She was like, she was young. 20, young cute. She was 28. 28. 28. Yeah. She's... Well, my uncle died of a brain tumor when he was 32. Yeah. It happened. Yeah, that fucking girl was a trip, too. I could tell there was something wrong with her, though. Well, she was um pretty sickly. She said some crazy shit, though, one time, went to me. He's like, so, nah, never mind. <laughs> this is, you know, we were back at, uh, um, what was the, uh, what was the gay club, the fucking transsexual club that fucking that we have that night at? Southern uh, Nights? Southern Nights. We were at Southern Nights. The night was called Escape. Yeah, it was called Escape. It was fucking gothic. It was a gothic fucking weird gothic fucking night that we had going on there with Destin. Destin was putting on a big old show. And she was fucking going out with the little short dude at that time. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. And you were standing next to me one time, and I didn't know she had a brain tumor. She turned around, she looked at me, she says, so when are we going to make this happen? I was like, what? When are we going to make this happen? And, I, and, then, <laughs> and then you were standing right next to me. I don't remember that, though. But, but no, you didn't hear it. Yeah, because and I can't. I like, like I said, what? I'm deaf as shit. If you're, if if, yeah. if there's other noise, yeah. I can't hear a goddamn thing. She asked me when we were gonna make this shit happen, and I was like, "What?" I hear a goddamn thing. And then, but I don't remember you ever again. telling me that actually. No, and then like, um, well, I kind—I guess you could say I kind of covered for, because I thought she was just drunk, so I, I let that shit slide. But she died, like uh, a couple months later. So that was some... Well, it was a while after that, though, because she died... Um... Maybe... She had some problems with her brain. Yeah, I know that. But... but it didn't seem like it at the time. But she... She did some weird shit before she died. Well, yeah, she had a brain tumor. Yeah. I mean, nobody knew I didn't know what it was. I was just we didn't like, know that until a year or two later. Yeah. Well, like I, mean, I said, you were she standing was right young. next. She, she was were, like twenty-eight or twenty-nine. You were standing right next to me, and she asked me when we were going to make this shit happen. I was like, "What? When are we make this happen?" And I was like, "Uh, we're not." <laughs> That's funny. I don't think you ever told me that before. No. Well, well like I, I said, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't one hundred percent sure she was. Well, that kind of stuff happens to us a lot. You know, we do that. That kind of shit happens. <laughs> Because, you know, we have a lot of friends that fuck around and joke with us a well, lot. Well, that's what I mean. You know what what I, mean? Like, I feel like if somebody said that, we'd just be like, oh, whatever. Yeah. You're so funny. But what's funny is she died, like, maybe about a year later from that brain tumor. And I thought that maybe that might have had something to do with it. Because it was kind of, like, out of left field. But it, she could have just been fucked with me. Yeah. That, you know what yeah. I mean? It's hard to tell in our scene. It's weird. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And she did. I just kind of that, blew it off. I didn't think about up? it. She was like, she was so fucking young. Oh my God. And she was fucking with that little dude. That was some weird shit. I'm not it? even going to say what his name is. No, we're not saying that. He might appear like Candyman. I hate that dude. He was up there. He, motherfucker was up there with down. Mini me. He was a mini me level motherfucker. It was a different thing. Di different kind but... of thing, but fucking just as and bad. It, it, well, no worse. In a lot of ways, worse. Yeah. Man, I can't it's like mini me mixed mixed with a know it all. I can't stand that fucking dude. Yeah, <laughs> I really get him. I'm not gonna say his name, but I'm gonna get. They're in there fucking laughing. He's probably him. like watching this shit. No, he's not watching that bitch. Fucking, fucking worries about himself. They're laughing at me. Dude, I hate that dude. Stop laughing at me, God damn it. Well, stop doing stuff that's like laugh worthy. No. Yeah. So okay. So was it a brain tumor? Who knows. There, there was something rattling around his brain, according to the people that dug him up. Maybe it was a brain tumor. Who knows? Some people thought maybe he uh, just died of a uh, flu because he did. He was actually a little bit sick before he went to um, where he was supposed to go, like uh, before he was going to Philadelphia. And apparently, allegedly, his doctor told him, hey, you're too sick. You probably shouldn't travel anywhere. You should probably just rest or whatever. And he just went anyway. So it might have been that he had a flu 
turned into pneumonia and that's what killed him. Like I said, again, doesn't explain why he had some other motherfuckers clothes on. To me, that seems like the main issue. Why was he wearing some other motherfuckers clothes? So I kind of feel like that was probably what happened. Like you said, I think he got rolled or he got fucking cooped or whatever they call it back then. I feel like it was that kind of shit. I just got a feeling he got rolled. Yeah. I got a feeling he got rolled and they took I his don't... clothes. And like and, I, you know, I. Instead of leaving him naked like they would do in Brazil. In Brazil, they fucking roll you. They take all your shit. It, they leave you naked. That way you can't run to the cops. You look fucking incredible. You know what I mean? You look like an incredulous motherfucker. They're like, dude, you're naked. What are you complaining about? They're like, oh, you're lying. You're a crazy motherfucker running around well, that That's the thing. On. It's like, so they, instead just of doing that, it they, for any criminals, it's yeah. like, you leave somebody Strip naked. Strip a motherfucker naked. Because and then you they go don't up to a you. You, naked motherfucker goes up to a cop, they're immediately going to think you're They're going to arrest mess. you. And that's what they used to do in Brazil. They rob they you and they mess. take all your fucking clothes from you and leave you naked. And they tell you to fucking walk your ass home. And fucking everybody's running from you. Yeah. <laughs> You go up well, to a cop, like, the cop's everybody's laughing like, oh, at naked you. Guy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the cop's laughing at you and they arrest you. So I, that it, so it might have been a situation like that. They took his clothes because they wanted him, his clothes, and did put his clothes on and threw his old clothes down and fucking Poe didn't want to be naked, so he put dude's clothes on. And he's like, these don't fit me. These don't fit me, right. <laughs> I kind of feel like he got cooped, though. I think he got cooped. Yeah, so you flip flopping. No, I don't. So I'm just well. No, I'm saying it could be either of the things. Yeah. But I kind of feel like because it was election day, because he was found in front of a pub where that shit was known to go on, and that was a polling place. I kind of feel like that's what happened. And I feel like the people that did it to him didn't even know who the did, they no, didn't know who he was. Did. They didn't know who he was. They didn't. They, 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 didn't they care thought it was a random dude, and they're just yeah. like, "Hey, I'm gonna grab this motherfucker and fucking give him some yeah. drug deaths." It was he got fucking random. roofied. It was something random. He got some. Fu- he got fucking roofied. But like, you know, it's really sad because he was young. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he had fucking problems. Yeah, this and that. But I kind of feel like, oh, he was. You know, people feel like. Um, you know, it was just a drunk and this is to happen. There's like, I, that's not really all that accurate. One, he wasn't a drug addict. That's the first thing. Two, he had been kind of a drunk. He couldn't hold his liquor, like I said, but in the last portion of his life, he was aware of this problem and was trying not to drink. And from everything that they did, thank you, Victor. I'm late. Start over. Oh, we had to start all the way. Holy shit! We've been going for like hours. five and a half, five and a half hours. Five and a half. This, this, this. But you know what's funny is we got more people watching now than we did. Well, this is like yeah, this is the longest show ever. There's people showing. That's up. all right. I'm all right. Bitches just want to show up on a random motherfucking. Man, I can talk about and start giving phone money. Night. Fun. Just want to show I up at a random shit. time and give money. I love okay. this shit. All right, but dude. yeah, that's what I mean. Thank you very I, much, Victor. Thank you, Victor. I'm going to sing later on. I'm late starting, but that's so funny. All right. Um, But I kind of feel like because people have this misperception of him him as this crazy, insane, because of the shit that he wrote, um, you know, this alcoholic, drug addict or whatever, but he wasn't really like that. Like I said, yes, he had some problems with alcohol, but he was aware of it and he was trying not to do that anymore. And... So, and I kind of feel like he was largely successful. They said, you know, when they did DNA, like on his hair and shit like that, they said it didn't seem like he had more than normal alcohol in his system. It's like, it wasn't like he was like super fucking fucked up or anything. So I do kind of feel like, I don't know, man. I think the more I look into it, I've looked at all the kind of theories and I'm just kind of like, I, th- I kind of feel like... Victor sent us another $10. Thank you, Victor. What did Jenny you say? summarized Santa Muerte for me in one sentence then. Okay. Santa Muerte is a female skeletal goddess, essentially. She's a deity. And she is one of the... Uh, let's see, this is one sentence still. She is uh, the most popular, largest growing religion in the Americas. At this point, 10 to 20 million followers, uh, as many as 5 million in Mexico. Basically, she is a patron saint of the downtrodden criminal underworld, working class. Yeah. They just petition her for favors. Uh, They give her things, cigarettes, flowers, candy, whatever, uh, tequila. 
and she grants their wishes. Yeah. And it's a whole thing. It's a whole folk religion, and it's grown out of Catholicism. Catho uh, Catholic Church doesn't like it. You know, what do they like? Nothing. Little boys. That's it's also like. part Mesoamerican. It's within the Mesoamerican Yeah, it goes tradition. back. And like I said, I think I kind of mentioned that, but it does kind of go back a little yeah. bit to Aztec shit. Aztec and times and gods of the underworld. Yeah. And it's a little bit linked yeah. with Day of the Dead, but it's not exactly the same yeah. thing. But it's no. but it's kind of all of a piece. If you're just showing up now, Victor, if we can go back later and listen to the beginning. I put, we laid it out. She laid it out. I went and, hit, went and gave my fucking opinions of it and everything. It was as, it was Mexican as hell. You'll you'll love it. Listen to it later. I laid it out. It's a I, fascinating. Yeah. Because I kind of the first time I heard of it, and I mentioned this earlier in the show. The first time I heard of it was on a fucking, I think it was a Paranormal Witness episode. It was Paranormal Witness, right? Yeah. There was one about like a Santa Muerte, like a cult and like some yeah. weird shit started happening. And I was like, that was the first thing. So I feel like there's a perception that it's kind of like, oh, the patron saint of like criminals or whatever, which in a way it is kind of. Kind of. Um, because, but it's because she's perceived as being non-judgmental. Even if you're a criminal, you're a drug dealer, you're in prison, whatever, she'll still protect you. She'll still do things to uh, help you if you give her offerings. So she's kind of like the everyman yeah. deity, yeah. I guess. Yeah, if you go back... It's a fascinating. It's fascinating yeah. because it's, it's almost like we're seeing, uh, and I think I mentioned this earlier, it's, we're almost seeing like a religion starting yeah that's how they kind of start anyway yeah you that's can, what i mean you, you and, you, and you're kind of seeing it start when you go back in real time and see how other ones started they're like that and uh if you go back and listen i gave my approval i mean it is an authentic mexican concept all right it's it's, it's an authentic mexican religious phenomenon so it's not like it's something that has to be stopped or stamped out it's just it's just something oh no way it has to be something that's understood and appreciated for the cultural artifact that it is. It's a cultural artifact. And like I said, I can totally understand how it yeah. happened. If yeah. you if you look into the cultural context of what it's coming out of, yeah, um, you can totally understand why it happened. I also understand why Catholics in Mexico and certain people might be upset by it. But you have sure. to understand that something like Santa Muerte would be a, a, a very natural result of Mexican culture under the situation. That's what that I'm had. saying. It's like, it's, I, it's, I, I totally it, it, see how that, I see how, how that, that came about. Right. I totally and see and I'm impartial. About. We're not in Mexican culture, but I know Mesoamerican history and the, the history of Mexico. Uh, me and me and Khan talk about it all the time. Mexico was almost part of the union too. That's another thing that a lot of people don't know. Um, American Marines in the halls of Montezuma back in the day conquered Mexico city. It, Mexico almost was part of the United States, but they retreated after that. Because there's no reason why the United States wanted Mexico at the time that that happened. We didn't have the strength, really, and the money to make Mexico a state. And then we had all that shit going on with fucking Texas, where it was kind of a joint venture between rich Mexican and rich American families making a new land that we know as Texas. So... No, 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 no. Santa Muerte is a Mexican phenomenon. Yeah, you might get pissed about it, but that's that's authentic, man. That's legitimate. That that's the real thing. Thank you, Brad. What do you say? It was Mexican as hell. You'll love it. I'm it's... not a weirdo. I'm just loaded. Tom has gone crustle, and with Jenny driving the ship like a professional broadcaster. Exactly. Best episode yet. <laughs> oh, oh man, y'all say that shit all the time. <laughs> I'm glad because I do kind of feel like. I, you know, I do a lot of preparation for these shows and I, yeah. then I just feel like what well, 20% of the show is like me talking about the topic and then 80% of it is just us talking about like random shit. Yeah. Well, no, you have to have like the outline Like grits up. and dicks and whatever. Well, you have to have, you have to have. <laughs> grits and dicks. That's what we should call this show. Right. <laughs> well, you have to have the outline in order to anchor the show into reality. Sure. You have to have that. Um, but then we kind of do like professional skateboarding around that bitch and, and. It's sure. about it's about entertaining. I mean, you're either it's about into it or you're not. Our fans, you know? You're either into it or you're not. Yeah, I'm I mean, having a good time. You're fan, having a good time. Our fans are here for the entertainment factor. You know what I mean? We're 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 educating them on some cool shit, but 
this isn't school. This is fucking entertainment. You know what I mean? And it, it works out. They love they, everybody. People, our subscribers love it. Tila says, I have a feeling we will start to hear about more of goddess deity religions again, more female centric religions and spirituality. I kind of feel like probably we will as well. It's a cycle. Yeah. It's a cycle. Yeah. And I really like, I find it informative that the Santa Muerte thing, um, even though it originally started as a marginally male deity, uh, now is pretty much exclusively a female deity. It's seen as like almost like a, I don't know, it's, it's almost kind of seen like a mother figure. I feel like a lot of the people that I saw like talking about it on the documentary that were uh, adherents of it were talking about her like she was like a mother figure that you could just like ask for things and she would give you things. It's weird because like I said, I saw the CNN documentary about it and the guy that was on there that, um, you know, he wasn't from Mexico or he could speak Spanish and stuff, but he wasn't from Mexico. And um, so he wanted to participate and he went and bought the one of the effigies and he's kind of like man i'm kind of like after after he carried her around all day and like everybody sprayed tequila on her or whatever and it's like i'm kind of like attached to her now it's like yeah. kind of a weird thing and it just it's it i don't know it's interesting how you can um kind of trace that to i don't know it, it really does seem like it's going back to a time like she mentioned that it's kind of like this pagan wiccan kind of thing where you're yeah trying to get back more into like female energy type of stuff yeah. which you know marie bland says hi that. there people i'm coming to you from western australia I thank you very it. much marie we Eric have Jason. several australians here we do yeah. yeah i don't know if any of them are here tonight but i'm here tonight but yeah uh eric j says i'd rather worship a woman yeah we're kind of awesome <laughs> Hugo says that fucking in Mexico a lot of people don't like Santa Muerte nor believe in it. It doesn't matter whether or not you believe in it or not. Yeah, it's only it, like it's only like five percent. It's not right, like yeah. a, it's not like the right. majority or anything. Right. Obviously, it's like it's still like a marginal it, cult. It's what we would call here on thirteen o'clock a cultural phenomenon. Sure. All right, and it is a Mexican phenomenon. Is it a legitimate religion? Uh well not yet but it, well it might be it depends going on though, who maybe. you're asking are are religions legitimate that's the real question um yeah, that phenomenon it's not a good question to ask me because yeah because I'm me, gonna give you a different answer than maybe some people would <laughs> Jenny and I are both atheists but there's a difference between Jenny and I I'm an atheist but I'm also a mythicist. I like the stories. I believe the stories have spiritual. Well, power. I'm a mythicist in the sense that yeah. I don't believe Jesus was a real person. Well, I mean, I'm a mythicist in that sense. Well, not... And I'm also a mythicist in the sense that I think I'm interested in um, the stories as stories and where they culturally came from, why they developed the way they did. I'm interested in that kind of stuff, but I don't believe that they're real or that they happen the way people say that they happen. That's I'm... all. I'm a mythicist in the sense of where I would invoke these things knowing they're not true, but I don't care because there's a certain amount of emotional power behind them that they can help you get through things. I, I believe in ritual. I believe in religions in certain senses, but I don't believe in the restrictions of religions. I believe in the power of religion. And what I mean is this. Religions were written by people and groups of people in different times and different places. A lot of them had agendas and needs. Okay, They wanted their own personal power. They're not literally true. Some of the shit's figuratively true in a certain way. Um, what are you looking at? Oh shit, man. I lost my fucking train of thought. Don't worry about it. See what happens every time you move around, like doing like shit, random shit over there. And then you yell at me because like I lost my train. What of I'm what I'm saying is is that um, you can believe in something that you know isn't true, but you still like to believe in it because it strengthens you. Well, we were talking and, about that uh, earlier yeah, in regards to holidays, right? Because I said I know right. that there are some grouchy, grinchy motherfuckers. Right. 
that are like, oh, I don't like holidays because they're all like fucking corporate, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, I, I don't... Mean, I don't like celebrate Valentine's right. Day because it's just a Hallmark holiday. Yeah, I, don't let it, I don't like celebrate Christmas. It's all commercial and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, quit being such a fucker. It's just like, but all of it, like our lives are hard and miserable enough. You're right. It's like, can we please just have something fun that we can look forward to? It doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't no. have to just make it fun. Do what you no. want. We look. You don't need an excuse to do it. Just it's fun. I was raised as a as a Protestant Christian through through like military academies and things that I went through and just through family traditions. Um, we've had Dr. Robert M. Price on the show, who's a fucking motherfucker's a genius mythicist and he was a uh, he he was a uh, Baptist he was a minister, I think he was a Presbyterian minister, I think. And he's fully educated in fucking Old and New Testament scriptures. He reads it in the Greek. Um, understands where all those stories come from. He'll tell you that none of this stuff is actually historically true, but it's just kind of has a spiritual truth to it. He still goes to fucking church, but it's for the experience. Really, when you boil it down, religions are about looking at images and singing songs with groups of people to get a certain emotional fucking vibe. Going. Which honestly, it's like going to see a theater play. Or yeah, or fucking, like going to like a, a goth concert. club and right, like yeah, listening yeah, to like some exactly. cool fucking music right. and watching videos and stuff. And it's you the same, back, you're enjoying it. It's the same kind of thing. Right, and you can go back thousands of years to fucking the city of Rome where they're fucking worshiping Dionysus and fucking... Jupiter, and it was the same thing. It wasn't about scripture or the, whether it was true or not. It was about the songs and the statues and the memes. That's what mattered to these people. It was a. Uh, it was like going to see a concert, and to get a spiritual feeling. The scripture, the scriptures in in these books were for the priests. They weren't for the followers. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's kind of like, to me, coming at it as someone who's an atheist. I don't believe in afterlife or anything like that. But in a way, that makes the the short time that we are here on Earth, yeah. that makes that ever more valuable. Right. So, you because there is no meaning. Yeah. It's actually awesome because you can choose your own meaning. Yeah. So like I said, if you want to celebrate Christmas, even yeah. though you don't believe in any of that Sing shit. Sing Christmas then carols. Fucking do it. Sing Christmas carols. Do whatever the fuck you want. Sing You're Christmas. Free. Sing Christmas carols. Drink hot chocolate. Eat candy canes. Make a turkey. All that shit. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. It do you it, enjoy it? Yeah. Then do it. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't have to mean anything. Right. It means something to you. Well, some that's of the, all that matters. Some of the more modern carols mean a lot more because it's about brotherhood of man and peace. Right, and that's cool. That's what it means. Right, yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not Jesus was an actual person. Yeah, who I don't lived. give a shit about that. No, I don't give a shit about that. Good. That doesn't. Really, and honestly, I you know I wasn't raised religious, so Christmas for us was just kind of like. Man, yeah. like we got to see all our cousins. Like we had yeah. like a cool tree. We had like a bunch of cool presents. We had like all this really cool food. My grandma would make gooey butter cake, which is my favorite. It's like, so we'd have this kind of, it was something you look forward to like all year long. It didn't have anything to do with Jesus or any of that bullshit. I didn't care about that. No, my I, buddy, what? Go ahead. My buddy Louis says that Jesus was a real person, whether or not he was a God or not. I'm not uh, so sure about that. Though. No, he wasn't even a real person. Uh, fucking, um, and, and that, that was shocking to me. That took me a while to realize it. Uh, but Dr. Price ran me through it. There's a lot of reasons why, um, Jesus was not a real, if Jesus was a real historical person, he would have been a street preacher and there were many of them. Okay. Yeah. He might've been a real guy, right, but, right, he, right. but. But the, the real guy and the story have, is not the same thing. The stories right? we have are not that of a street preacher. The stories that we have are a man who walks on water, who's given all these sermons, who performed miracles and did all these things. That man 
Every one of those miracles that he performed, everything that he said came from another Roman religion. Most of them Dionysus. Okay. Well, yeah, they ripped so, off pretty so much all everything of that. came from something else. If there was a historical Jesus, nothing of him remains in the New Testament. So, what that means is, is the Jesus that you believe in did not exist. The real Jesus was not preserved in the New Testament. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing. You know, we're not saying that right. it wasn't, I, you know, I hate to say this. It's like, right. you know, could he have been based on a real person? Maybe. Maybe, but, but none of that guy exists. All the stuff that's in yeah. the, yeah, that was just like based on older right. stories. Every story, everything that Jesus says in the New Testament, everything we have came from another religion. So whoever the historical Jesus was, it's not there in the New Testament it's anymore. It's not the same dude. That's what we yeah, so. It's like saying, so what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a situation where was there a historical Superman? Superman came from Krypton. He fell from Krypton. His father was fucking Jarrell, all right, from Krypton. He could fly. He could do all this other cool shit. All right. Was there a historical Superman? Well, no. But Superman was based on somebody. A Jewish kid who had run from Germany and came to New York for a new life wrote Superman. He was the kid running from a place who was being destroyed. Okay. <laughs> he could blend in because he looked like everybody else. He could do great things. But was he Superman? No, no, he wasn't Superman. He was a Jewish kid. Same kind of thing. Was there a soup? Was there a Jesus? If there was, nothing of him remains. Yeah, it's like even no. the dude that maybe yeah. got crucified back then. It's yeah. like I don't. That's not the same person that we're talking. There about. was no crucifixion because there was so yeah. Like I don't really mm. think that happened no. either. But it just kind of seems like. A lot of stuff has been attributed, but all of that stuff was like, you know, glommed on from other. There's too many problems and... with the crucifixion. Saying Victor this says is... Quetzalcoatl, also born of a virgin. Yeah, yeah there were yeah. there. Were, I have a whole all... list of other uh, gods and yeah. demigods that were also born of virgins. So. There was no crucifixion because what the crucifixion is talking about is the Jewish scapegoat ritual. The Jews would take a perfect lamb and sacrifice it and the blood of that lamb would wash away the sins of the tribe the sins of the tribe were placed on a thing called a scapegoat which is a goat that was chased away and chased over a cliff and killed that's the same story as jesus barabbas was let go jesus the perfect lamb was killed his blood washed away all of your sins so you're dealing with instead of a lamb washing away the tribe's sins you have a demigod his blood can wash away the sins of all of mankind throughout history a person who is half god not a a regular perfect lamb although over and over again christians call jesus the lamb mm -hmm. it's the same scapegoat ritual it's jewish blood magic yeah essentially it's all this it and there's nothing to be ashamed of it's just you have to understand what it is well i'm fascinated by that stuff yeah because it's like i i really yeah. like that's why i was so intrigued why i went down this whole rabbit hole of the santa muerte thing yeah is because i was like we are actually seeing a religion forming in real time you know what I mean? Yeah. Because really, I mean, people have been worshiping her since maybe, you know, the 40s. Or 40s. Like, I know it went back like a long time before that. But it's like it really didn't go mainstream until maybe like the early 2000s. Okay. What? Okay. Hold on. Hernandez is saying, well, the Romans kept good records. They crucified a man named Jesus. No. What you're talking about, there was no records of that. What you're talking about is that in the antiquities of the Jews which was a history book written by a man named Josephus. In there, there's a small paragraph saying that 
it's called the Josephan fuck what's it called the Josephan paragraph i think is what most myth mythists call it that describes that in this time a man if you should call him a man named Jesus was crucified and blah 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 blah, blah. it's a little paragraph okay that's the only time Jesus is mentioned in a roman book okay the Jose it, it's a Josephan book antiquities of the jews the problem is, is that that paragraph is only in the later editions of that book. The earlier editions of that book do not have it, which means that it was insert, inserted later. It, not because they're trying to trick you. What it was is that some, some Christians later on went through that old history book. It's an old Roman history book written by the Jews. They said, wait a minute, hold on. Jesus should be about here, right around this area of the book. So they put a little paragraph from the from the Catholic Church into there. There is no records of any kind of crucifixion. Of I Jesus. mean, they did crucify people. They crucified people. But there's a lot of problems with Pilate. Pilate, would, would, uh, Pilate was a Roman magistrate in, in, in charge of that area. But he was viciously cruel. Had nothing, and whoever wrote that story, and there's four different versions of that story. Whoever wrote that had no understanding of of that of Judea and that place and time. They were written much later, a hundred years later, probably. I've been through all this with Doctor Price. There's nothing there. The only thing about Jesus was after. And really the Christianity that you know was 3rd century. 250, 275 years after Jesus supposedly had lived. Yeah, it's I not think it from was later time, from Belisha. Much later. I mean, and, like I said, it happens. Well, yeah. and that's why I'm kind of interested in... That's why I got so interested in the Santa Muerte thing, because like I said, it's something that you can see, even though it's an offshoot of an already existing religion, Catholicism. Um, it's interesting to see how these things branch off right. and can potentially become kind of their own thing. I mean, yeah. this is a, well on its way to becoming its own thing. All right, And you can totally see why. He's saying he's been Catholic and... For over 20 years or whatever, and he believes that uh, the Romans crucified a man named Jesus. No. That story came much later. I'm going to show you. Hernandez, you better fucking, you've been a subscriber for a long time. I will show you the videos later where Dr. Price and a bunch of other people will tell you where those stories came from. They're much later. And uh, they're all copies of the stories of Dionysus, a lot of them. Mixed in with Socrates, every story about Jesus, everything Jesus said, was borrowed from another Roman religion. It's Roman. The Romans copied religions from other people, they including were too in, lazy to think. Yeah, of their own well, shit. it was immigration. It <laughs> was know, immigration. I'm just Persians were coming in, and Jews were coming into the Roman Empire, bringing their ideas. They were kind of crossbred with Roman ideas and new religions formed another one was um um what was the one from persia uh shit what was his name mithraism mithraism yeah and most of the oldest christian temples that still exist in europe were built on top of mithraic temples mithras and there's a lot of mithraism in christianity uh no 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 these, these are white boy religions they don't have anything to do with the Middle East either. They're they're Roman. Very Roman. Very Roman. The whole Last Supper thing. That's Dionysus. He also had a Last Supper. Everything's rebooted. It's like comic book characters. Yeah, there's nothing really original to the no. to the Jesus story. No. That's you know, and like I said, I'm not denigrating. I'm just we're not, saying, yeah, we're not we're not fucking with it. It's just that's just the way things evolve. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah. people will just adapt other stories. Yeah. Like I said, people feel like, oh, Noah's Ark and everything. I'm like, man, that was like two thousand years older than that at least. Yeah. Uh you know, that was from like the fucking uh Jewish stories come from Yonimash. Maccabee Maccabees and the Mac and uh, Maccabean stories. 
uh actually the 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 tightest story modern story of fucking noah was um the darren aronofsky movie noah that's it that's that was pretty much the original story like i said i like that he just yeah. kind of adapted yeah. the way that's like this is the way he bitches wrote it yeah because there's a bunch of other books outside <laughs> yeah, weird. The old, there's a bunch there was a bunch of other books outside the old testament uh uh what was it? jubilees and jubilees was one of well the apocrypha one. the apoc kind of like, yeah, yeah the yeah, apocrypha yeah. i mean that's kind of what they call that collectively yeah. the apocrypha things outside the normal and that includes jubilees and and i think maccabees and i think maccabees might have fucking talked about the flood but they kind of extrapolated from the apocrypha the whole story and they put it in the darren Ar aronofsky movie uh noah and the Darren out the Darren Aronofsky movie actually the story makes a whole lot more sense when you see it that way. Same thing with fucking um, Beowulf. Beowulf doesn't make any sense. All right, there's some shit missing there because the church cut it out because it involved a man having sex with a dragon. <laughs> you know, as one does. <laughs> yeah. Man's got a fucking dragon, you know. <laughs> it happens. But sometimes it happens. But they kind of revived and restored probably what the original story was in a movie called Beowulf that had uh what was her name? Fucking old hot chick. Fucking Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie and all the, the other ones. And it was it was animated by fucking computer animation, but the story is fucking tight. I I read Beowulf in uh, high school. Yeah, and you read the high school version version of Beowulf, and it doesn't really make sense. It kind of yeah. did. But the thing is, is like, what's up with this dragon? How's the what does the dragon have to do with Grendel and Grendel's mother? Grendel's it's the oldest English writing. It's back when England in, the English language was closer to Icelandic, and. The English translations of what we have just don't make fucking sense. Although the uh, the translation uh, a few years it came back, I think it was Seamus Heaney did it. Yeah, and that was actually a really good translation. Yeah, although that came out after I was in high school, but the translation I read in high school was actually pretty decent. Yeah, I actually really liked Beowulf when I read it in high school. I because I read that in my uh, English literature class. Yeah, but you know I. I'm, you know, you have to understand that it's like it's super old and it's like yeah. it's been through so many iterations yeah. that there's going to be shit added and yeah. subtracted from it. It's like not going to make a lot of sense. It's like the cultural context is lost. All kinds of things going Hernandez on. Hernandez says, I'm, Tom, I might be wrong, but I, but most historians universally agree that the Romans crucified a man named Jesus in Judea in 30. I thought the same thing, but no. They're repeating what other people said. You have to fucking go back to the source material. I'm going to fucking show you, bro. your hair. My hair is fucking with me. I'm too pretty for fucking glasses. No, I thought that too. But it, when, that, when actually you get down, when you actually do the research and you get down to it, historians are repeating what the, something that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No. I'll show you. Just fucking P private message me. I'll show you a whole class on it of why it didn't happen. The Romans had no knowledge of that, of that occurrence. That was something that was written into history about 200 years later, probably. Okay, so... The restroom. We'll, we've been going like... More than six hours. Six hours. Shit, man. Shut this shit down. Six man. hours and six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. That was fucking six hours. I believe it. Man. You see, you bitches, I put the fucking long hair on and all of a sudden it makes sense. Like, makes what kind of sense? It makes all kinds of fucking vision. It makes all kinds of sense. They said Conan just showed up. Let me take my head. Let me take and, he's, and he's dropping everything all over. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Who's gonna take this off? No. See, it's hot, right? Yeah, it's kind of hot. And yet, I wear that for hours and hours at a time. 
It's prettier on you, though. Well, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Serpent Surfer says I came in two hours. I came in two hours in thinking I was late. Yeah, this no, is probably the longest, the longest dream we've show ever done. Of all times. Well, and you honestly, had two subjects, Jenny. Yeah, but I've had two subjects. But shit, I've had like five subjects before and it didn't go on this long. Yeah. All right. And you know what? I'm kind of impressed because not only do we get mostly through all the shit I wanted to talk about. Not all of it, but okay. We got through most of it. Yeah. I also had... How many drinks did I have? I don't know. A bunch. A bunch. A bunch. Four or five? F yeah. Four or five of this size, which is like double. And am I still coherent? Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, but I'm just telling Hernandez, man, I know where you're coming from, bro. I sat about, she was with me. This was about five or six, seven, eight years ago. I was going through that course, going, wait a minute, hold on. If this happened, this happened, this happened, no, it had to happen. I went, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The order of fucking, the order of occurrences, the history, it just, no, nah, no, nah, it didn't happen. Scott didn't says, happen. what is the riddle of hair? The riddle of hair. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta get out of here, man. You bitches. I gotta get out of here. Man, I want some soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Louis says, you're good, Jenny. Yeah, I kind of feel, I feel okay. Yeah. I'm having a good time. But, uh, you know, I'm, it is like over six hours. Where is Pookie in? She's outside. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I thought she was like, get your ass in here. Man, she was probably, she was outside so long, she was just kind of like, oh my god, I don't like the outside anymore. Please let me in. Where are you guys? Get back. Oh, okay, whatever. All right, so I guess he uh, abandoned me. So that's cool. All right, so I can't believe you guys have hung around for more than six hours. I can't believe we've been on for more than six hours. It didn't seem like that long. I don't know, but whatever. I had a good time. I hope you guys did too. So what's today? It's Friday. All right. So we're not going to stream tomorrow, but we will be back on Sunday afternoon, probably talking about a movie and we will see you guys then. So thank you everybody for hanging out with us. Thank you for your super chats. Thank you for all your cool conversation. We will see you guys on Sunday afternoon and bye.